stop talking about comic books or I'll kill you. I don't care if the Hulk could defeat the Man of Steel. I'm gonna rearrange your face if you continue to debate whether Logan's claws could pierce Steve Rogers' shield. I just couldn't care less if they bring back Craven. Is he a genius? Is he a, a savant? Is he like what's up? Like this book, nobody else makes stuff like this. I've never read a comic like this ever. I read it and I got done, and I was like, oh man, that went by quick. It's really immersive. It really pulls you into the world. Totally forgot how many pages it is. I think it's like 136. I read this in one sitting. This book should be so critically acclaimed. It's really that good. 20 years ago. This would have come out from one of the big publishers and it would have been celebrated everywhere as this groundbreaking achievement in comic book storytelling. They called me a groundbreaking achievement at Hugo Boss, by the way. Very oh, nice. These bastards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Did I miss a story about you going to Hugo Boss? To me, this is uh, yes, you did. the discovery of crowdfunding. It's it's at forty two thousand and it continues to kind of just creep up. It's almost going up, almost a thousand a day. Still, it's two weeks in. Nice. Still kind of creeping up. Um. Yeah. So it's awesome. It's got a little bit of legs and really excited. Thanks for promoting it, E two. You got to send this book to the Eisners. You oh go yeah. Book to Don't the tell them your comics gate. Just say, uh, you know, this. Uh, Don't say anything. Hey, you know, I'm here. Read this a book. Small publisher. I'll yeah. tell him I'm a trans woman in a wheelchair. So that was uh, dedicated to our recent uh, guest, Narwhal. Uh, it's great to hear that his campaign is doing so well. And um, he's got so many supporters like uh, Billy Tucci on this, uh, on EVS's panel, uh, encouraging that he join the Eisners. So congratulations to Narwhal. Uh, really happy that things are going as well as they are. Um, but uh, tonight, that was just a bit of a catch-up from the last review that we did. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about Vestry. And um, first we're going to jump into the chat and see how everybody is doing. Hopefully everybody is really well. So first I'd like to say hi to James Hayes. He's apologizing to Booster, who I think was somebody who was in here earlier asking for, uh, or hoping for, I guess is the correct correct way to uh, state that is that uh, there wouldn't be such a negative response to Jacob's review of this, uh, Jacob's work on this book during the review. And uh, James Hayes responds saying, sorry, Booster, you better have an ambulance ready. He might be left with enough asshole burn to think he has cancer causing SCD or who knows, maybe they will love it. So we'll see. I mean, there's, there's no there's no foreknowledge of what the reviews, re reviewers will say. Uh, everything just kind of comes out during the live show, and uh, that's how we do these reviews. Christopher John is here. He says, hello, F off well read. Uh, hello back, Christopher John. Great to have you here. 
And uh, Velnet says, do you dare review the first half of Wonder Island available to read on Medibang sometime in the next week or so? We shall see, Velnet. We shall see. Uh, Stupendous is here. He has both great value for the cost of the campaign. Yes, well, if you're available, um, we'd be more than happy to hear from from you about these books. Um, you know, outside opinions are always welcome, and we like knowing what people think of the reviews. So please join us and uh, have your say. Um, Yucky Gum is screaming he's alone. Well, uh, now you have us for company, so hopefully you feel just a little bit less lonely now that we've joined you. Earthmind, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, Lorenzo, Lorenzo saying hello to everyone in the chat. So it's great to have you with us. Robert Shepard, hail chat, hail crack pack, bow. Yes, we're all bowing to crack, apparently. That's the new thing. So everybody get down with crack, uh, according to Robert Shepard. Uh, Richard Cahill is here. One more week without a 499 review. I know it's brutal. Um, I mean, I would tell you about how to make how the sausages are made in the sausage factory, but then you wouldn't want to eat them. So uh, just look forward to the sausage coming soon, uh, and I'll spare you the gory details of how we're putting it together. And then uh, Jack Stafford is here. Ahoy, amigos. Ahoy back, Jack Stafford. It's great to have you here. So your comments are always welcome uh, after the streams as well. You leave uh, great statements, and we're always happy to receive your feedback. So thank you. And uh, Christopher Blaylock, Fine Art. Hail chat, hail well read. Welcome, sir. Great to have you here. Thank you for being with us. Uh, well, with that, I think uh, I jumped in, said hello to everybody in the chat. So I'll bring on tonight's reviewers. Smikakus Maximus. Hail, brother. Hail and well met. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reviewing Vestige 1 and 2. Hail. I think you're on the wrong review show, but uh, we'll make do. When and, I'm reviewing Vestige? Uh, no, I think that was done maybe a few months ago. Uh-oh. Yes. <laughs> Change of plans. Quick. Uh, and our second reviewer is Moonshine. Now we're going to be putting out our vestments, right? That That's what we said we were going to do? I thought we were going without undergarments. Vestments but why are, are we before. going to the vestry? To put on our vestments, right? Oh, we're reviewing Vestry 1 and 2. Oh, oh it's this a review? Is, this is awkward. Oh. Yes. Way to, way to ruin the show, Smiga Cost Maximus. Thank you. I Hail. think we already reviewed Vestige. Didn't we do that already? Yeah, we did. I was just... I'm, I'm just being a, a dick. <laughs> well, that suits you. So, Lorenzo says... Hey, Ethereal Dragon. I don't see an Ethereal Dragon. Oh, welcome. Somebody new in the chat. It's great to have new faces always. So thank you. For uh, yucky help. Gum, it's a place we the priests put on their vestments. I think, right? Yeah, of course. I don't know. But uh, yeah, hail, Brother Dragon. He's, uh, he's from my Discord, so welcome. Oh, okay. Uh, Matthew Fowler is here. He says, this is already boring. I'm going back to Liam's treehouse party. Yeah, I'm going to mute this stream and watch Liam's stream as well. This is pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be struggling tonight because uh, I think all eyes are on Liam and his Wonder Island launch party. I think he's going to be doing a 24-hour stream. I think really? Clint Stoker is doing a closeout stream tonight as well. So you might want to watch that instead of us too. And there's always the Jack show. Oh, yeah, I forgot about them. You've got plenty I mean, of with, options, folks. With Liam launching, I forgot all about the Jack show. But yeah, that too. Yeah, with all those options and you still being here, you have to wonder, what exactly is wrong with you? Hail Ninja Dragon. Yes. We may get drunk people on our stream later, though, so you can look forward to that. There is hope. Great. <laughs> the drunks return. We'll see. I haven't seen them in the chat, so uh, maybe they'll... they'll I mean, Risey isn't even really drunk at this time of day, so it's not really drunks. It's more of a drunk. He's getting started. Yeah, but he's not drunk. He's maybe a little tipsy, a little buzzed. He's not drunk, though. 
It's more like blood alcohol content is already at 50% just uh, throughout the entire day at this point. So congratulations, guys, on your It Came From The Newsstands episode the other day. I was enthralled in the chat. Um, well, I mean, that, that comment is seeping with sarcasm, but uh, I thought it went no, okay. No, I'm being genuine. I really, really loved it. I love hearing about books I've never read and don't give a fuck about. Please, tell me more! You don't care about SJW woke comics being turned down and trashed on YouTube? Have you ever heard of CG? I think the highlight was looking at uh, Christopher paint that cloud. That was actually very interesting. Didn't that you care about Scareglow? What the fuck is Scareglow? Ah, Philistine. Everyone else oh. knew who Scareglow was. Yeah, from the He-Man comic, right. I remember now. I've never watched He-Man or had the toys or had any interest in it. There's no movies. reason you'd ever want to watch the, the cartoon now. It's, it, it's very, very bad. It was made specifically for children. The toys are nice, though. And the artwork they used uh, was, was pretty good. That TV show is not worth watching if you've never watched it. Well, I personally liked uh, Alazmat's review. I thought it was the highlight of the episode. He qu uh, really despised Captain America 30. So, I, I don't think anyone liked that. I, I think Ty Nahuzi Coates hated it when he finished. <laughs> That's why he didn't make it better. He just hated it so much. It's like, here it is. I'm not doing it more. I hate it too much. Yeah. If only it convinced him to not write comics anymore. But... If only... But Elasmat had la passion throughout his review. So, um, speaking of passion, let's uh, maybe jump into tonight's review. So we are going to be looking at Vestry one and two. I will bring up the campaigns. I hate that Indiegogo does this now. They like put ads on top of the campaigns. Like, what? And then you just have to scroll down. But I want to hear more about how talent is timeless, building the platform. FP Fest 20... You got to scroll down a little bit. I'm trying to tell you how to do this without telling you how to do this. Okay. A little bit more. There it is. See, good job. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Uh, also, Nurkish is apparently streaming, so there's another <laughs> option for you. <laughs> They're all far more competent than, than we are, so... Jesus, the, the, the competition tonight is fucking brutal. We've got <laughs> Liam, the Jack Show, Nurkish. Holy shit. What are yeah, you they, people doing here? Apparently they dug Oz out of his grave that he's been sleeping in every night to come on stream as well. Why are you so mad at Oz, Well Red? I'm not mad at Oz, but Oz came out uh, different from how we remember him tonight. And oh. I feel like that's been the Oz uh, that's been hiding all along. Well, we can talk about that later. We, we should focus on Vestry now. Yes. Yeah, Lord Finatra says, just fucking do it. <laughs> we're trying. We're, we're trying really hard. All right. So uh, Vestry are the books that we're reviewing tonight. Um, it was a moderately successful campaign. Uh, it did fulfill uh, and it did fund. It had 106 backers when it was on um, Indiegogo. Um, very, very well priced as well. I mean, you can see there, there's like digitals for $3, $4 if you wanted the ash can. I think the physicals were really, really cheap as well. So very, very well priced. Yeah. Especially if you just wanted to get the digital, you got two, I mean, it's a book and a, a little, and I mean, it's fine, a little thing for four bucks. You can't really beat that. And then uh, it also had a run on Kickstarter, which um, also fared decently. So uh, I'll just quickly bring that up here. It had a new cover from Does, Matthew Did he Logan. start on Kickstarter or did he start on Indiegogo? Uh, the Indiegogo was first, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I didn't even know it was on Kickstarter. Yep. And it was uh, published by Gravestone Press, who some of you people might know is, I think that's Doug Garrett's imprint. So they've put out uh, Lone Wolf and I think a couple of others 
Napalm Brothers number one, maybe Skinny's book as well. I can't remember. That's probably a reference we don't want to make. Yeah, that's Matthew Weldon. So yeah, of course it's good looking artwork. Yeah. Who uh, draws uh, Doug Ernst uh, Soul Finder books? Right. So um, the first two books uh, were fair successes. The second book, I think, had a bit of a downturn um, in terms of the number of backers. So I can quickly pop up that. Uh, Why didn't you have these all open in the same window but different tabs well read? <laughs> like my lightning round from the other night. Um, I usually try not to do that because that shows... He's the, on a Mac. Uh, yeah, that, I'm on a Mac. And uh, that also shows the, uh, the uh, HTTP address at the top, which, if you're sharing images off of your desktop, also has your computer name on it. Um, oh. And it's, it's a great way to dox yourself without knowing. So yeah, so I try to be safe and just always click back and forth between sharing just individual screens. Anyway, so uh, Vestry 2, um, 84 backers. Uh, same quality of art, though. Still a um, very nice-looking book. You'll notice that the uh, publisher changed to Anvil Comics as well. So I don't know what happened between Doug Garrett and the Vestry boys, but it looks like they chose to publish themselves on the second issue. Hmm. Which maybe we'll mention. So, and uh, here there's a, clearly a little bit more explicit explicit material uh, it's it's in, not that explicit i think it's it's just the shape of breasts but indiegogo is very weird about that sometimes so the, you're not you're not going to see nipples i mean it's just it's a ghostly figure and there's the image from the thumbnail miss sashi's art yeah so as you can see it's actually not that racy it's just indiegogo being stupid which they did also with john malin's campaign so and they had to, for some reason, edit out the word babies because they were going to show the food that babies eat, which is very sad. I don't think that's babies, well read. Oh, well, I'm, you know, a father, so I always have a clean mind about these things. Well, what's dirty about an extinct bird? I don't understand. Did, does it make you sad when you think about the boobies being dead? I guess... This that's some the censored little... boobies uh, is a crime against nature. Yes, absolutely. The babies are sad. And I think this little censorship of a peen down here makes me even more sad. So I'm not happy about that. I, I don't think she had a peen well read. <laughs> it's oh. just, it's really just Indiegogo. Being, it's just, it's just a formless crotch, but of course it's Indiegogo. So he had to censor it apparently. I mean, the only way that image could get better is if she did have a peen. <laughs> well, I was thinking by the size of this box that uh, it's incredibly well hung, so that's unfortunate. Is that your air conditioner again, Well Red? Uh, it's actually a little rain outside. Oh, okay. Well, you can't do anything about that. Yes. I can try make you happy, uh, Wooster, but I don't think anything I do really would make you happy. That's true. Yeah. So that's... Uh, that's the first two campaigns. There's also a Kickstarter uh, for Vestry 2, which didn't didn't go over as well. So um, let's uh, quickly jump into that, and I'll show everyone how um, Vestry 2 did on Kickstarter. Ooh. So, yeah. Ouch. So. I mean, it's 37 backers, and so it's not... It's not horrible, but yeah, that's yeah, maybe the uh, maybe the goal was set a little too high. I mean, if they had a five hundred dollar goal, obviously they would have met it. Yeah, I mean it's kind of weird that it was so high since it's presumably Vestry two funded. So it, at this point, you're just selling the other books, right? Or is this a separate cover, perhaps? Yeah, it might be for the Matt Weldon cover. That looks like Matt Weldon again. Okay, so they didn't raise enough money to pay Matt, effectively, is what it, this is. Very unfortunate. Well, and then uh, I don't know if we want to jump into this, 
but um, there was even a third issue for this book, which I don't know if we're actually reviewing tonight because the thumb just advertises the first two issues. We're not reviewing it because neither of us have it. Yeah, it, it hasn't fulfilled yet. It's fulfilling in August, and uh, to be quite honest, uh, this was something I was going to bring up during the review. I didn't even know that Vestry 3 existed. I knew it existed, but I had yet to receive Vestry 2. And when I did, and I tried to back 3, it was already closed. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So th this so thing just came and gone. Yeah, I was I was going to bring this like toward, up towards the end of the review. I think there's um, definitely some promotion issues with the Vestry uh, books. Because, yeah, I had no idea this even happened. And I got yeah. the first two. Yeah, I regularly check Indiegogo, so I knew it existed. It just I wasn't going to back back until I got the second book. So, so are these the same boobies that were being censored out in the other I, images? Yes, essentially. I guess maybe in this one they're small enough so they didn't have to. Hmm. That's nothing offensive. How no, I, the, yeah, I mean it's it was silly. It's just a woman's form. That's all it is. It's not actual naked breasts. Right. Oh, there's Castle Grayskull without the skull. So not Castle Grayskull. It's just a castle. Yeah, so we don't know anything about this since neither of us backed it. Okay. Well, so I guess going back to the first book. I, um... I think actually the PDF of that is now available, though. I'm not certain, but I think that's true. So uh, tell me, what happened? Why exactly is there this fall off um, in interest for Vestry? Is it warranted based on what you read from the first issue? I, I, I mean, if I want to start there, I think maybe it's people backed it thinking it was something that it isn't. I, I wouldn't even call this bad, but it's... It's kind of a minimalist storytelling, and I don't know if people like that very much. That that's would be my guess. That just if we're gonna start there, a smug pug might have opinions. Um, well, I, I don't think it's uh, bad, but I, I think it's an issue of promotion because, like, I first heard about Vestry One uh, through uh, Mecha McCheese. I remember he promoted the Vestry guys on his channel. And I thought, oh, you know, that's an interesting looking book. It almost seems like Skyrim or something like that. And uh, you've got a big bulking barbarian uh, going around slaying goblins and going on quests. And I'm, I'm into that sort of fantasy thing. So I was like, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. But uh, and then I just caught Vestry 2 by chance and I uh, just grabbed the PDFs. I, I got the physical of the first one. But uh, the third issue, I didn't even know had launched or even existed. So I'm I'm putting it down to a promotion, I think, why these books have kind of declined so much, just because maybe people aren't aware they even launched to begin with. Yeah, there's another series that's similar in terms that it's like fantasy kind of storytelling. It's called Guardians of Erloth. And it, it seemingly is going up, at least the second campaign. The first campaign, went, I think he failed. And the second campaign made about 1,800, and then the, then the second book made about 8,000. And right now, his third one's a little under 4,000, but still has 10 days left. So it, it's pretty similar to this. The art is different. That might be a reason, too. But that's kind of the same genre of fantasy, kind of medieval-type stuff. And that one's going up, so it may very well just be a promotion issue. That's true. So you don't feel that the quality was declining or um, perhaps you felt very disappointed in the first issue that you didn't want to come back? Well, I mean, I mean, you can see what the art is. I, I, I could see people may not like this art, um, but it this is pretty much what the art stays at that quality level. I think the art style is going for a more realistic look, too. What did you think of the art, uh, Smigicus Maximus? Did, were, you, were you pleased with how it uh, portrayed a lot of the story here, or did you feel like it was lacking and minimalist? Well, I think um, Shabby does a really good job with facial expressions, and he also does a good job with um, backgrounds. I've got a few panels to show later. So, like, the, the expression on Dame's face here is actually pretty... 
uh, pretty good, I thought. I, I wouldn't say the art actually is minimalist. I would say the storytelling structure is what's minimalist. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the art, I've seen better art than this, but I mean, he, there's actually quite a bit of line work, like in the faces and stuff. So, I mean, uh, there, there's effort made into the detail. Yeah, there are some interesting design choices as well. Like, for example, this is one of the first pages and it's it's Dame dreaming about a past experience. And you can see it's got this, uh, oh, let me go back. Wait, where'd that go? Oh, I must have deleted it. But it had a, a sort of like paper quality around it. And then we get to the actual book and you'll see it's uh, got these black borders. So it signifies past events with this almost like paper style around it for flashbacks and stuff. So I, I thought that was a pretty smart choice. I don't think the line work is that similar, but the coloring kind of brings me back, if you remember the Prince Valiant comic strips and newspapers. A lot of this reminded me of that, although that's not quite as high fantasy. The way the story is told kind of reminded me of that, if you remember it. So where I really, like I was saying earlier, where I really think the art excels is like, in these towns and out in the fields, these journeys that Dame takes, like, I really like the look of this town. It does feel very accurate to like a fantasy sort of setting. I don't know if it's generic. It's you're only getting the first two issues in, so I mean, it the setup isn't that special. As you get into the like the second issues, especially, it's not just a barbarian. It's kind of got a a little twist about how he's using his powers. Yeah. Well, I mean, for the price that you paid, um, I would think that you would feel you're getting your money's worth. With the oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. It, this, I think, this is probably the cheapest book I think I've ever backed. I mean, I think it was. I think the physical was around. I think it was eleven dollars for like the ash can and the and the first comic, and then the PDFs were like four bucks, so very affordable. I mean, does the art pick up? Are there any any interesting splash pages here? Um, do I mean, yeah, I think it's all generic. There, there's some decent. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of action even in the first issue, which is kind of. I mean, it's really bloody if you like bloody type action. Um, there's there's good scenery as Smug Pug mentioned. There's one where like he becomes on the kind of the elven castle on his mission. That looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the backgrounds are usually pretty boring, but I mean, you're you're paying four dollars, so I guess you're getting what you pay for. Well, so tell us, uh, tell us then a bit about the story. Um, this is about a barbarian, and you said there's an interesting twist about how he gains his powers. Well, that well, we don't know. He, he, yeah, so he's a bar. At first, he's just a barbarian, but. Oh, that's Smug Pug. Carry on. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a barbarian, but he's also, I guess, like a type of mercenary or bounty hunter. So the story starts with the flashback giving a bit of backstory into Dame's past, which I won't really go into that much. And then he gets a letter uh, from this guy who's basically hiring him for a quest. Uh, 5,000 gold to go clear out some ruins. So it does have a very sort of, I don't know if a lot of people here have played Skyrim, but it does have a very Skyrim sort of vibe to it. And I'll be bringing up other points later on why I think that. But he's basically hired as an adventurer to go out and clear out these ruins and the story develops more. Just to interrupt your, it, it's a very much a role-playing premise, like any role-playing game you would play, like pen and paper even. Okay, continue. Well, that's... I think I summed it up. He basically, he's, he's, a, he's an adventurer and he goes out on a quest for gold and, and fortune and, and yeah, and shenanigans happen, I guess. So, I don't know how so deep into the, the story you want to get. The, the slight premise is he's going back to a city that he and others like defeated and like destroyed themselves. And not, now he's being told to go back there. So that's what the intro starts with him killing pretty much everyone in this city. Once again, like, I love this. I love this panel. I think it's beautiful. I think they really did a good job on the trees, the town in the background. Like, you can see the little farmhouses down here in the fields, and then you get this sort of. Uh, it's a map 
and you can see it where he's traveling as his adventure goes. And, and they use this like fairly repetitively throughout the book. And I think it, it gives you a good idea like where he's currently at in the world. So he stops off here in the woods and then he heads to the port and then we get images of him on the boat heading to this island where he's been hired to uh, search these ruins. I just thought it was a good way of like showing that he's journeyed pretty far and pretty quickly without dedicating too much time and yeah. panels to it. Uh, I will say the interior cover has the full world map of it. So it's really nice. It's a decent looking map of the entire world. So it's nice. And it's crystal. Yeah, that's pretty much the correct way to describe the art. It's hit or miss. Too many uniform tick marks, he says. Uh, well, I mean, he's an artist, so he can probably uh, give us more detailed critique. Mm -hmm. I agree that the design is nice. That's a nice looking castle, for example. Yeah, there's definitely oh, things that look nice. And the monsters are kind of fun to look at. They're not that generic. There's like kind of makes makes them look kind of disgusting and gross as they should. Like a goblin's not like your generic kind of green thing with kind of a silly face. They're actually kind of like disgusting gremlin type creatures. Well, I guess we should also mention that the creators are fairly young uh, for this book. I think they're both in their early 20s. Yeah, I think they're both 23. And uh, it's written by uh, Dylan Clark and uh, Jacob Sebesta. And uh, basically, they're known as Pickles and Shabby. I think I've spoken to Pickles before. He's a, he's a nice guy. And the letters yeah. were by Cassidy Blonde, who sounds familiar, but I don't know what else he's worked on. But I do feel like I've heard that name before. So the story is a fetch quest. Um, Adventure ensues. There's yeah, interesting. So the the intro is very simplistic. I will say that, but that this is just the first issue. Yeah. yeah so there's some goblins, I think, or hobgoblins. He calls them. I don't remember. Goblin. Yeah, they're just goblins. But they, I'd, like I mean, to know you... why, I'd like to know why they went with like red for the goblins instead of like the traditional green. I think it was just to make it, you know. It's like make them more disgusting looking. I think that was the idea. It blends into the blood though a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would have been better if they went with the traditional green because everyone knows goblins are green and then the blood and gore would have stood out more. I think this comment is directed towards Smugpug. Uh, Jabba says your mum is a fetch quest. <laughs> Fuck you, Jabba. <laughs> <laughs> a, a big fetch quest. I mean, your mom is a dog, so. <laughs> yes. Are. I was a, I was one of a litter of thirteen pups, <laughs> and you all had to play fetch with your mom. So there you are. Um, well, and uh, what what exactly happens while he's on his journey? Does he meet any interesting characters? Yes. Is there, okay. So he he finds a prism, and then as he touches it, there's a big explosion, and then this the elfin creature that we've seen with the boobies appears. And that's the end of the first issue. Mm. So it's left one, on that cliffhanger. One thing I do like with what they've done with the character of uh, Dame, uh, I think it's like a point in their favor. Like looking at this, you'd probably just think, oh, he's a big hulking barbarian. It's, it's almost like the role playing game. Like he, he has high strength, so he must have low intelligence. He's just a, a big dumb brute. But I like that he's not always just swinging his ax to defeat his opponents. He's actually like uses his situational awareness to fight them. So one of the goblins is on his back here, biting into his shoulder and he, he can't reach it or do anything about it because it's latched on. So he basically runs up and slams it into the wall. And then uh, when he's getting mobbed by like too many of them, he notices an oil lamp above him and he drinks a, uh, a flame resistance potion. This is where I said earlier, it starts to remind me a little bit of Skyrim or any RPG game. There's like potions that do yeah. certain things. And uh, then he uh, basically knocks down the oil lamp and creates a fire and burns the goblins alive I while mean, it's protected. It's definitely better than, oh, I'm just so badass, I don't care about the fire. But he kills all these creatures. He actually, you know, has to drink a potion to make himself flame resistant. Yeah. And then later on when he's fighting the uh, the goblin mother, she's got him on the back foot and he's, he loses his axe and he finds a, a piece of, like I guess, rubble from the castle and caves its head in. So I do like that uh, 
it's not just him swinging his axe for 24 pages that they actually put some thought into the character and you know give him other ways of defeating his opponents and, and he doesn't feel invincible he gets the shit beat out of him in this fight with just goblins which i use presume aren't like the biggest threat in the world but just like a major threat perhaps because there's a swarm of them he doesn't just immediately kill them all you can see he's really bloody and beat up and i think at the end he has to like drink a potion because he's so beat up so he can keep going and like yeah. it, it points out that this potion costs him a lot of money, so it's not like just he has hundreds of these. He can just keep downing. So Jabba's the typical person who walks in late on a class and starts asking stupid questions. Um, he's wondering who did this book. Uh, it's written and created by Dylan Clark and Jacob Sebastia. They're also known as Pickles and Shabby. Uh, 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 Sebastia also did the uh, art and letters are by Cassidy Blonde. Yes, we've we've so mentioned is, that Jabba. Yeah, so it's a three man team. It's it's there. Are sm it's a small little indie group. I think they're just called the Vestry Boys. Most people just refer to them as that. And uh, this comment is definitely directed towards Moonshine. He says, "Your mum reminds me of Skyrim, big open world." Exploring oh, I am the I am the sun. And caves. There you are, Jabba. Fuck Moonshine is part Jabba. of a, not part of a big open world. Oh, Jabba then follows up with, I don't care, you lose us. <laughs> I think oh, you were you. to that question. Fuck you, Jabba. We Jabba is you. extra angsty tonight. What, what have we done? I mean, Jabba had to watch the Liam stream. That might have done it. Jabba saturates my Twitter with fuck you comments to every single thing I post. So <laughs> maybe it's something to do with that. Well, that's a point in his favor. Okay. That's true. So I, I can see what you mean about the minimalist writing approach here. Yes. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I, it's not for everyone. Now, I know uh, you mentioned that you think promotion is, is responsible for why there was um, uh, a downslide in terms of support for this book. But what is the cliffhanger like in this first issue? Is it, uh, is it enthralling? Uh, do you want to read the next one or does it feel a little flat? Well, I backed the next one, so I guess it did. I mean, it's probably kind of just sudden. Sudden. It's she grabs a crystal and this ghost lady appears. Like, at, at, if you didn't read the second issue, you might be kind of confused at this point. It's like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was interested enough to back the second one. I, I backed the first, like physicals, but. Uh, just because of the like, the book is reasonably priced, but international postage is a killer. So on the second campaign, I just grabbed the PDFs because I figured, hey, I can save myself, you know, around twenty twenty dollars by just grabbing the digitals for a twenty four. I have book. to say, the price is probably the strongest selling point because it's like, well, it's just you know ten bucks, so I, I guess so. Why not try get the next? It's there's there's a, it has things going for it. It has the maps. It has a character that's not just a dumb barbarian. There's like some twists and details put into him. And the story seems mildly interesting. He's not just looting a castle. There seems to be something going around in the background. Yeah, there is a bit of intrigue. Well, and uh, Christopher offers some encouraging words. He says, my first comic was a terrible outing for me. I looked back at the pages and just groaned in agony. So... I think for a first outing, this is fairly decent. Yeah, if they're just kids in their early 20s, this is definitely a, a very good uh, first attempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at no point did I hate reading it. So yeah, it's a quick I, read. You, you yeah. won't hate it. I mean, if you're asking me to compare this to Ballad of No or Pandemic, there, there's no question of which one I'd prefer to read. <laughs> mm. Interesting. So where does the second issue pick up after... Uh, um, well, before, pink before, we, uh, before we get into the second issue, I did want to just quickly talk about the ash can that came with number one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a sh it's a short read. It's only like 10 pages. It's uh, Vestry Vodnik. Um, I actually liked this more than the main book. I thought this is probably like one of the best stories that I've, like, I've seen like in this Vestry universe. It, it, if you've read any of the Witcher short stories, it reads like a comic version of that. So yeah, it is very well done. Yeah, so it's in black and white. It's just 10 pages. Uh, again, uh, Dame is hired by 
the group because there's this monster that's stalking the lake and it eats children and it ducks women. And so they hire him to go off and kill the monster in the lake. And then we get um, a pretty decently paced short story. Like he engages with the monster. Uh, you can actually feel a little bit of tension throughout it all because the monster's like an aquatic monster and Dame's getting pulled under. So and the fight it looks just, really interesting. Just like each panel of like, you feel that battle going on. Yeah. And you, you can tell that he's kind of out of his element because, you know, this monster's basically trying to drown him and attack him. And you can see like the skull and bones on the bottom of the lake bed. Oh, everything about this story is like fantastic. I, I don't know about you, Smug Pug, but I, I almost think the coloring kind of detracts from the art after reading this is like, this looks good. Yeah, I think so. I love I, this I think, too. I think he should have. I think they should do Vestry in black and white. I think this black and white stuff looks better. Yeah, I, lo I love it too. Where it's like it's taunting him as it's coming out of the water, and you get it just coming closer and closer. There's and actually like, more dialogue too in in, in this Ash can, can. Strangely enough, yeah, this is probably my favorite page of the digital. The only thing I don't like is where it says here i will consume their souls which which sounds a little bit of a little bit cliche i'd rather if it had just stuck with it, like i will consume i will just consume them because this monster is basically eating people the whole i'll consume your souls thing sounds a bit a bit tired and, and old but otherwise like very good dialogue and like a great atmosphere of tension from this monster and, this and then the if the goblins were in black and white you wouldn't be asking why they're red yeah, and this I like that one. image too. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the, the interesting thing about it is uh, basically the, the barbarian defeats the monster in the lake, uh, drags him out to a desert, and like nails him to a tree pretty brutally for him to dry out and die. But the monster claims that he's a god and he can't be defeated. And then after the last page, we get this tramp, I guess, sitting on a, a tree bar, like a tree branch over the swamp, and we're led to believe. But like assume that this is the monster because he's a shapeshifter and he's taken this form before earlier in the story so despite beating it it's left ambiguous whether he actually did so yeah it, it's a great little short story i loved it i loved this actually yeah part i mean this short story is part of the reason i kept backing it's like well there's clearly talent and ideas that these guys have yeah Tinfoil L says Smug Pug doesn't like souls, so you must be a ninja. I think I he means what... ginger. Yeah. yeah. Gingers have no soul. That's true. I don't know what he means by that. But so... fuck you, Tinfoil L. <laughs> was it the same creators for the Ashcan? Yes. Yeah, it was yeah, it was exactly the same group. So I'm gonna say something, I guess, uh not widely agreed with in um these indie crowdfunds, but I think indie comics should be black and white. I don't know why they all have to be in color, frankly. Yeah, I'll have something else to say about black and white, but that'll be for other projects. So, what can you... So, Vestry 2, unfortunately, doesn't quite pick up where the last book ended. It starts with a flashback, so that, I think, was a little confusing. I was like, wait, what's going on here? Oh, if and you... they got, got rid of her peen. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, just talking about this uh, cover briefly, actually, I liked the cover for Vestry 1. I'm not the biggest fan of this cover. I feel like... I think it's too crowded. There's too yeah. much going on. Too if crowded, anything, too if you took, trouble. you could take the girl out and maybe it'd be okay because... But yeah, there's, yeah, there's three elements that are unrelated, so it's it's too crowded. I mean, I think it would be cool just to have the guy fighting the monster. But... Well, the landscapes seem to be fairly consistent. Pick up from where they left off on the last issue. Yep. Yeah, well, like Moonshine was saying, uh, we start off with a flashback scene. And, and uh, this is what I was uh, showing like in the first book. Whenever it's a flashback, you almost get like this. It's almost like a page, I guess. Like the, the book turns into a page. Like it looks like it's an image on like a an old book or whatever. So it's just another interesting design choice and experimental yeah and I, I think i think it works pretty well yeah i mean i think if this is the way they're going to start every book with a flashback then you'd get used to it i just it's like wait what, what what's what's 
the deal with the lady? Why are we in this flashback? I mean, it gets explained once you go through it, but if if you read this back to back, you might find it a little jarring. Well, I don't think a flashback is necessarily that strong of an interruption, particularly if they're picking up on a new chapter. Is it made clear that they're in a flashback and they're going to get back to the regular story? By the page design. And yeah, I mean, right at that first page, it says 500 years ago. So, sure. Yeah, I mean, so you know, you know, it's a flashback. But. Yeah. In the second issue, you get a bit more history of the world. It basically in this flashback tells the story of like the history of humans and elves and how they used to work together. But then the elves found something of power some power which i guess is these the shard that's a cliffhanger at the end and yeah. it kind of tells about a war that occurs between the two of them which then you can piece together that the flashback scene from the first book was dame fighting in that war against the elves so it, it, it's it's they're giving you good uh pieces of history without i guess dumping it on you all at once they're they're leaking it out yeah I mean, I, I think the flashback is good. It's an interesting enough story. It's like elves and humans working together, but then this element's introduced, and it it warps the elves. Uh, Boostu Kiwi says, I can confirm Dame is based off the real Shabby. So he just draws his own body just like uh, Odie does? <laughs> Let's uh, not I, go there. Yeah, uh, Christopher... Blaylock says uh, he certainly can draw buildings, so maybe he has a drafting background. Yeah. Could be. Mm -hmm. So you have a little bit more background in this world, and then it gets back to the story where the last issue left off with this woman. Yeah. So it's pretty much picks up right where they meet, and the monster attacks them, so they like have it any time to interact. So he's fighting the monster and it kind of beats the shit out of him. It's kind of almost similar to uh, Tomahawk Angel in terms of like he has no chance against it. So the only thing he can do is run and find a way to escape. Mm -hmm. And is that yeah, how... I Sorry? I, I, I liked the fight with the monster because, you know, You'd expect, oh, you know, if he's the big barbarian, he's going to beat this monster just like he beat the goblins. But uh, it, you, you learn pretty quick that this creature has really tough skin and his axe breaks in his hands. So at this point, he's he's disarmed, his arm is damaged, he's he's bleeding. So yeah, yeah and, it, and even even this ghost elf says, "Oh, you're really strong for a human." So like, even having a chance against him is like impressive. But he, he essentially can only like hold ground and slowly get beaten down. So his only option here is like to jump off a balcony and escape. Booster Kiwi says, L is based on me. I have a suspicion of who Booster Kiwi might be. Uh, Booster Kiwi is a YouTuber. I'm familiar with his channel. Oh, I see. Yeah, he, he would draw things for Mike's drawn and quartered stuff, I, I remember, right? Uh, Booster, we normally drop the StreamYard link after the review, so if you want to come on and talk about what you thought of Vestry, uh, feel free. Yep, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, Jabba wants to know how much I pay you guys to be on this show. Not enough. <laughs> he pays us in clout. <laughs> I have no clout to pay you with, so clearly you guys are underpaid. Um, should probably file for unemployment. So is this pretty much where this issue leaves off? Or? All right. No, but so essentially the elf tells him, I, this ghost elf tells him, I need your body because you can't win by yourself. And they argue about it and he finally agrees because he has no choice. And so this is him powering up. And so now that he has the power of the elf and her magic, then he easily destroys this monster. So it's kind of showing you that He's now upped his power by this possession by the elf. So it's, it's contrast how strong he is for before, and we know he's pretty strong because he beat up those goblins, but he still can't beat this monster. But now with this possession, so it's good storytelling. It's less, it doesn't tell us, oh look how strong he is. He's really strong now. It it shows us, but well, through example, how much stronger he is with this possession. I feel like this panel too is very like Dragon Ball Z inspired. Yeah. 
like he's got the electricity cracking around him. This is almost like a stance that Goku would take. And I, I don't have the next panel, but he kind of like leaps up above the tree line and like punches the monster, which feels very Dragon Ball esque. So I wonder if they're drawing a bit of inspiration from that. Well, and I believe that this character was uh, based off of Shabby because we actually have him modeling for the character right here. So that's the I real think, Shabby. I think I have that same Batman shirt. He does have a similar haircut and beard, so I guess maybe it is based off him. He's clearly very strong, and he obviously lives in a barbarian's uh, hut. Yeah, I guess uh, Booster was not lying. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think he's from the Czech Republic. So yeah, it did seem almost Slavic the name, but I, I guess Czech Republic would make sense too. Booster says, Shabby is my friend, so my opinion is heavily biased. That's why I need you to bully him for me. Uh, well, if he looks like that, I'm not bullying him. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. What is happening here? It's 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 the end of the possession. She's leaving his body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's her coming out of his body. He's slain the beast. He's got the shard, which I guess ties her. I, I just thought this is interesting because... She kind of says, like, I'm bound to you and the Shard, but she doesn't want to be, and Dame doesn't want her to be either. So he says, I guess you're stuck with me, Elf, until I find a way to get rid of you. And she says, I can't wait for that day. So it's almost like, it kind of reminded me of Bigfoot Bill, how the Kraken and Bill mm, are forced yeah. to be together. That This is a relationship that neither neither wants. Uh, the motivation, though, well, Ed, since I know you're wondering, is he's a mercenary and he needs money, and he has a wife or live-in girlfriend it's probably his wife so it's important for him does exactly. that make sense to you no oh of course no. god damn well, it what's like why you need a job <laughs> to pay to help support your family support my family yeah gold buys pretty things keep woman happy you get it well read <laughs> oh woman yes i understand that. yeah okay no He's nipple, doing it for the boobie. love of a woman, not pink booby woman. Pink uh, boob booby woman just wants a real body back. Woman without peen, not woman. Okay, so now you've spoiled this. So this is the guy that hired him to go there, and you see he's actually working with somebody. Yeah, but I, but I don't have I, I don't have the panel of who it is. Okay, so, I'm not gonna so, spoil so it. apparently the guy that hired him had a reason to send Dame out to do this, and he's working for someone who is. Not revealed, because we don't want to spoil the story for anyone who's interested. But he's been a good servant. I will so, say, though, I, I knew who this was immediately. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. I mean, if you read the story, it should be pretty obvious. Correct. But we don't have to say. So if it piques your interest, spend 15 bucks and get both issues. Yeah. Well, it seems like a fun little story. Yeah, I would definitely say it's fun. There's a lot of flaws, but you, you'll never hate it. And then we get my second favorite Vestry story, which is, again, the ash can oh. in another black and white uh, short story. Yeah, this, so felt, this felt very much like, oh, what was that video game called? Where you, Shadows of the Colossus, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, where you you got to fight the really big monsters. Yeah, yeah, like you have to climb on them to fight them. So the ash cans are where the true value for these campaigns are. Yeah, if I had to pay $11 for each of these ash cans, I'd, I'd be satisfied enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the short stories in the ash cans are actually like, I don't know, I'm more interested in reading those than actually the main story. There's nothing inherently wrong with the main story. It's just these little short stories of Dame are really interesting so and the black and white i just think is better yeah so in this one uh there's a giant i guess cyclops in the in the seas and he's attacking uh coastal villages and eating all their fish and killing their fishermen and uh he's hired they hired dame to go kill it and he responds with hmm which is a sort of reoccurring thing whenever he's hired for a job he just says hmm, like and grunts but again the way he deals with the monster is pretty clever he uh he has a ship catapult. Uh, he loads himself into a ship's catapult, launches himself onto the Cyclops, and then stabs it in the eye. So again, it just shows like 
he does think about things when he's facing his opponents that he's written rather well. Uh, I don't know if you have a picture of this, but the Cyclops isn't just a giant man. He has like a tree growing off him. He has like corals and shit on him. So this is like attention to detail in, put into these creatures. They're not just big giant Cyclops. If I didn't uh, grab him. You can, yeah, they, so you can kind of see the tree on him in that one. Yeah, it's a very interesting monster design. I think all the monsters are really good except for the goblins. That's my only complaint so far. And are the ash cans connected uh, to each other at all, or they're just completely tangential to everything else? They're just little short stories. They're almost like, I guess, side quests. That's why I say it does feel a lot like an RPG video game. You've got the the main quest, which is the main books, and then the ash cans are just these little short 10 or 12 page side quests of other adventures he's gone on. Uh, James Hayes has a question for you, smug fuck. Is that a statement on your attention spans or a constructive criticism on the ability of the writer to put together a tight story? Um, I just feel like the ash cans are just more interesting. Like I, I do, like I said, I have no complaints with the main story. Like it's it's serviceable and fine enough. I just feel like these ash cans is when like they really hit the ball out of the park. Like the, the art looks better in black and white. Um. And this little, these little side missions, they're very interesting. It's almost like the actual Witcher books, which I think are a collection of like yep. short stories. And of yeah, the original world. Witcher, yeah, it's just short stories. There's a overarching story that he wrote later, which in, in that case, again, the short stories of the Witcher are much more interesting than the overarching story. It's, it gets too wordy and meandering, I think. The, the Witcher epic, I guess, is what you'd call it. Yeah, well, that was the same with The Witcher 3 video game. Like, the, the main story in that, I think, is pretty terrible. But it's all the little side missions you go on, like the bounties and monsters you track, that are really the interesting stories. At least for me, in The Witcher 3. So you probably, uh, you probably got a lot of vibes of Witcher reading this and think maybe he drew a lot of inspiration from that material. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if... The artist, at least, is a big fan of The Witcher, given that area of the world. I'm sure he's read them. Yeah, I'd say I definitely got a, a Witcher and a Skyrim vibe for it from it, especially when he's drinking healing potions and flame-resistant potions. I mean, those are pretty standard tropes in your fantasy RPG games. We have a fan of the All-Star Superman review. Tinfoil L says Smugpug prefers individual stories, which is why he liked All-Star Superman so much. Oh, wait. I don't ever want to talk about Superman again. <laughs> I oh, think the will. problem with, if there is a problem with the original in with the main story series, is it it seems drawn out too much, even the battles. Yet, there's not much story being told. Sometimes there's a lot of traveling, and I, for one, I always find traveling very, very boring. So. Yeah, that was the biggest problem with Starblades when we reviewed that. It was just, hey, let's go get the next member of our party, which is kind of boring. Like, I, I would have started Starblades with all five of them. Uh, I, I do together. think the end of the Vestry series is like, okay, now something's happening. So it looks like it, the, the actual story is going to pick up. The, the first two issues are mo mostly just the intro of getting the two protagonists together is effectively how I would describe it. It's okay. Well, first, I want to read Booster Kiwi's comment here. Shabby did the coloring himself. We're still wondering if we should stay black and white. You, I would say, I would suggest you probably should. I mean, there might be some people that just need color, but I, I would consider it. Yeah, Booster, your comments are quite invaluable. Um, even if you're a friend, we'd probably appreciate having you on just to chat with us a little bit about the books. Um, is it supposed to be a three issue story, or um, is it going to be continuing? Uh, the the latest update on the third issue says he's working on the fourth issue. So, I see. Okay. Well, th that's good because, um, yeah, I I'd like to see the Vestry series continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was a little that. sad how poorly the third one did. I mean, it, it funded, but it's like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I was hoping like the funding on the third one wouldn't discourage them from continuing the series. 
and, and that's where I guess like we were mentioning at the start of the thing, I think promotion's a big issue for the Vestry boys. Like other than seeing them once on uh, Mecha McCheese's channel like a year ago, uh, it, it was only by pure luck that I caught Vestry 2. And like I said, I didn't even know Vestry 3 had launched and come and gone. And because they don't stay in demand, there's no way to pick up the books after the campaign. Yeah, I, I think you can, uh, they offer the previous issues on each campaign. So when they do the fourth issue, I presume you'll be able to get the third issue, which I will do if it, if it's offered. But Yeah, I'll, I'll grab issue three and four on the fourth campaign. I just need to know that it's happening <laughs> and that it exists. Yeah. Booster Kiwi says it will be five issues, the last being a double-sized issue. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, I'd be so happy. roughly six issues. That's that's good. That's a good size for a series. Uh, I would suggest after they finish, they might just want to think of a whole bunch of short little stories and make a collection of short stories. That that might be really good. Kind of make it like the collection of Witcher stories, just adventures of uh, Dame. Yeah, I agree. Because so far, like the two Ashcan stories have been like my favorite parts of uh, of Vestry. So maybe offer several lash cans in each campaign. Uh, well, well, I mean, well, it's fine, but I, I think just the, 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 the kind of like um, Matt C is doing with his wild tales of Kyrie. It's like there's a bunch of stories in my universe. Yeah, just like a, a, a tw like two twelve or ten page stories in a comic book, still in black and white. You could probably collect these two ash cans and put them in there as well, or maybe bundle them all up into a forty eight page book where you just get you know four or five tales of dame and the various uh bounties he goes out on because if they if the quality of writing and art on the ash cans is consistent uh with that book i think people would be pretty happy yeah i don't think anyone would call this but this black and white are bad that that that's actually rising to a level of, of quality here that actually looks good whereas the colored it's like hit or miss you say oh this looks decent Whereas here, it's like, well, that's just awesome. Well, if they need some help with promotion, I'd be happy if they reached out to me. And um, we'll talk I about it. I thought they did. We talked a long time ago on a Mecha stream, uh, back before I had a format for my show, so for my channel. And uh, then we came up with this show that all three of us do together. And uh, things just went in a different direction, so... Now I have a kind of a better sense of how to promote artists, um, and I'm in a better position to do that. So, it sounds to me like you're gatekeeping well read. <laughs> uh, Java actually has a serious criticism. I don't like the clouds going across his body. It makes the clouds look too low. Although I will point out, sometimes clouds are pretty low over the ocean. Like waves will hit them. It does look a little, actually, I do know what Jabba's saying. It does look, I think it's this cloud here, because when you look at this, it looks like this cloud is far and on the horizon in the background, but then it kind yeah. of. So if it runs behind it, because otherwise it'd just be as high as the mast of that single mast ship, so. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think they could have gotten away with this one here, maybe, but not so much this one. Right. Oh, Vic points out maybe it's fog, which, you know, could be as well. So um, I think one of you has the physicals. That would be Smigacus Maximus. Uh, yeah, I've got the physical of issue one in the ash can. And uh, what would you describe the production quality as being? I mean, it's pretty standard. I it has a, it has a nice hard card stock for the cover, so it's not Marvel pathetic, but... Yeah, I don't really have an eye for production quality like uh, Mr. Moonshine. <laughs> I think it has a sort of matte finish on the cover. I could be wrong, but it's definitely not glossy. Yeah, it, it was fine. Like it, it arrived uh, internationally safe. There was no damage. It was packed well. Um, yeah, my second book, the package looked like it traveled around the world, but the, the book was itself in fine condition. Yeah, my actually, I know what you mean. My my Carmen in America one, two, and three actually took like over two months to get here. It it traveled all over the place as well. The the address was perfectly fine, so I, I don't know what happened. Mine took a long time to arrive too, so I don't know what happened, but it eventually arrived. 
Well, and uh, would you like to give then overall scores for the two issues? Yeah, well, I'd um, I'd probably give both issues a six. I'd just say they're they're slightly slightly above average, and definitely a recommend. If you're a fan of uh, fantasy worlds, like obviously Skyrim and The Witcher, and you, and you really like that sort of atmosphere, I'd say you'd probably enjoy these uh, books, especially the Ashcans, which I really did. I think the Ashcans, especially the first Ashcan, was really uh, really something special and spectacular. Like it really captured the tone of what they were trying to do very well. The main story, like it, it's nothing against the main story, but I just felt like uh, that first Ashcan and even the second Ashcan were preferable i guess like i just i just preferred those more but none of it was inherently bad obviously we've heard some criticisms of uh shabby's art i would say if you if you agree with those uh criticisms after like looking at it uh maybe it's not for you but the writing is surprisingly strong especially the dialogue that uh the guys are doing like everyone in this world feels like they are living in a fantasy world like they they're using the proper sentence structure and yeah it, it, it's it is quite immersive for a book and it is extremely extremely cheap very very uh competitively priced okay so six for both issues then six overall um uh, moonshine would you like to give closing thoughts um i i think i made it pretty clear that it's, it, it's got some flaws but i i think what the strongest point is it's pretty unique compared to many of compared to other things we've reviewed we haven't seen very many fantasy things and it it definitely has good ideas and character design it, that's interesting enough to me to keep backing i mean obviously i come on a review show and talk about books so i i have further reasons to back things but i mean it's it's so inexpensive that if this was like 20 bucks, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but you can get the digital for $4. I say, why not try it out if it piques your interest at all? Yeah, I will, I will add on to Moonshine by saying it is like, I never hated reading this and I actually enjoyed reading it because I'm just so sick of freaking superheroes. Like I am sick to death of it. So reading a fantasy book was actually a breath of fresh air. Hmm. I wonder who else is launching a fantasy book today. Oh. Mm. I wonder who. <laughs> well, I guess uh, with that, um, we probably won't hear too much more about Vestry tonight. Maybe we can have the creators on uh, some other time, hopefully. Oh, we have uh, Mecca in chat. Mm. Oh. Hi, Mecca. How are you? Yeah, well, Mecca's read Vestry 1 and 2, and it was actually on his stream where, like I said, I discovered the Vestry boys. So I guess if he's got some thoughts, uh, stream I, I, I think it was that stream I first saw, too, and back. So I, I think Mecca made two sales that night. Yeah, at least two. I guess before I bring people on, I, I do want to play uh, a short clip. Uh, I meant to play this at the beginning, uh, but I decided to just focus on some of the praise that Narwhal was getting, but... That's um, what you really mean is you queued the wrong time. Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. But uh, there was also some praise for our show uh, during that, that stream, and uh, I'd just like to share that all with you right now before we invite guests on. So here we are, uh, EVS, uh, mentioning the well read Review episode with Narwhal. And, of course, the sound is too low again. Uh, if you watch well read User Show... Nice. Uh, well read user reviewed Earthbound one and also Foreign Agent uh, two nights ago, and uh, it was largely uh, enjoyed. It was mostly very very positive. I think people see the genius of Narwhal. You have to really read his books to see the genius of Narwhal. Yeah, I mean, some no people offense. say it's their favorite. That's kind of what I, like. Not everyone doesn't connect with everyone but some people they'll say it's like their favorite i'm like that's cool that it can connect with people to that degree i'm really grateful and happy about that yeah. i'm a fan so that was narwhal mentioning specifically um the comments that we had i think two of the reviewers said it was uh their favorite crowdfund books that yes i think that's correct uh sneak peek is a way um yeah i mean i the 
I think also Ethan pointed out you actually have to read it. I think I mean even I said in that review that at first look at the art I was like I don't know if this is going to connect with me but people praise it so I'll give it a chance and I liked it quite a bit so it's it, I think it's still I, now what style is just going to be you either love it or hate it I, I very see very few people they say they kind of like it or they kind of dislike it it's either I really like it it clicks with me or I, I don't understand it it looks like trash it looks like a eight year old drew it well, and uh, Smigakus Maximus, I think, was a converted um, narwhal it, hater. It, it also, Earthbound is weird, so that may turn some people off, too. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like um, I I reserved some of the praise that I, I might have had for it. It, it, was, it was very unique uh, and was very clever, and it was adventurous. I mean... And there's were, very like this fantasy book. There's very little sci-fi in this in the crowdfund sphere. So it's it was especially at the time it was released. It was very refreshing. There's been right. some new sci-fi projects or at least science fantasy have been released in the meantime. But at the time, it was about the only sci-fi book you could get. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I'm glad it's being so well received and that Narwhal's follow-up is doing so well. Uh, Mecca says Vestry books come out fast. Yes, we, we mentioned that, which is good, but the problem is they close their campaigns before you even realize they're, they exist. Right. Well, uh, with that, we could um, bring on a few guests. We have uh, someone who can talk to us a little bit about the art. Please welcome Big Daddy Doc. Welcome back. Ahoy! And uh, Ethereal Dragon. Chat. I think you're new here, Ethereal Dragon. Yes. Well, welcome. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. Hey, Smoke. What's up? Hey, Big Daddy. What's up, Dragon? Not much. Just got home from work. Hey, Stu. Hey. hey. I believe Stu was a backer of the first two books as well. Yes, hello. I backed them as well. Well, tell us, what did you all think of Vestry? I liked it. I didn't love it. It does. It definitely does have potential to be great. Yeah, I agree. It was totally worth the money. I mean, if you want something to read that's cheap and it fulfilled on time, like Mecca said, I mean, you you can't go wrong with it. You just take a chance and and get it. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, and you're not out anything. Well, I think they both deserve like special like praise for being able to ship and fulfill a book for. I think it was 1800 the first vestry, 14 the second, and 700 yeah. for the third. So they're, they're putting out the books and, you know, doing like doing pretty well. Yeah. And like I said, I wanted to like uh, clear up my comment about generic. I, I meant the, the art style was like a generic art style. There was no like detail in the backgrounds, things like that, you know, that people would want to say, oh, these are dynamic pages. You know, there you don't get any of that. It's just a. Uh, a right. simple drawn out story by first timers that are doing their best, you know, and for a, for a first outing, mm -hmm. I think these guys did great. Yeah. I, I find it really strange that the guy does such amazing exterior shots and then his interior shots are just very, uh, almost non-existent. But yeah. I'll, I'll say this, man, the, the artist I haven't read the book, so I can't speak to the writing, but the artist can only go up and he's got a good strong foundation. Oh yeah, book two was way better drawn than book one. I'll tell him that. He, he, you can see a progression. Yeah. The uh ash cans look really good. Yeah, you you wouldn't know that he's self taught of how great the old is. He's self taught? Yeah. Outstanding. Wow. I was wondering if he had a drafting background because he could just Knock it out of the ballpark. Uh, no, he's I'm trying to know what his job is. Now, I would like to know what happened with Graveyard Press because they did the first two books, and then apparently on the third, it was Anvil. So, was that some sort of contention why it didn't get enough promotion for book three? Did you guys know about that? <clears throat> no. Smug, well read. Uh, I didn't know anything about it um smug seemed to be tracking it and right now smug is uh 
tracking his way back to the fridge for another beer. Okay. So maybe yeah, when so, he gets back. Yeah, Graveyard Press did number one and two, and then it switched to Anvil Press. So maybe yeah, that was the reason. I did mention that earlier. Like, um, yeah, Graveyard Press, which is uh, Doug Garrett's imprint, did the first, yeah, first book and second book maybe. Yeah. And then they swapped to uh, Anvil Press. So I, I don't know what happened there. Maybe they just decided to self-publish themselves. Then maybe so, that was a mistake. Uh, Jalapeno Milk is saying Doug Garrett fulfilled issue one. Skinny did two. Okay. They're from Europe or something, so they're pretty smart for that. Yeah. Um, Shabby is from but Jakob because, you know, Slavic Sex used the proper J of the year. It's from the Czech Republic, and the writer is from England. <laughs> and he says Doug G just wanted to focus on his own stuff for a bit. So no big mystery okay. there, I guess just going in different directions for a short while. Either right. way, I, I can't see that as a waste of money if you invested in it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's totally worth your money to buy. I mean, I, I give it a six, a solid six. You know, it's it's a regular fantasy tale that you're not going to get the regular cape stuff. You're gonna, it's, it's a, it, The story is what it is. The art is what it is. But it's worth your $5 shipping for a ten dollar book right i think they would uh probably have benefited from having an editorial oversight to just say hey the foreshortening on this particular panel is crap let's fix that the rest of the page looks good <clears throat> yeah i think i think one of the biggest issues and i kept bringing up is promotion i mean like I, other than first seeing them advertising vestry one on mecca mcgee's channel like a year ago which is where i first heard about it backed it and then I think I just caught the second one day while I was buying something else from Indiegogo. But then the entire month that Vestry 3 was on, I never I never noticed it had even launched. And I guess people could say, well, you know, you could you could follow their Twitters. But I, I never check Twitter for crowdfunding campaigns. I only go on Twitter to basically promote this show. So I'm, I'm very rarely on Twitter. So I don't know, maybe... Maybe they just need to uh, reach out to some people and some shows and let people know that their books are out there. And perhaps keep, start keeping it in demand as well. Yes. Because mm -hmm. By the time I'd heard about Vestry 3, uh, the campaign was already over and it had been over for some time. So it's unfortunate. Yeah. You know, Booster uh, said that he knew the guys and did some light oversight on the script. And I had asked the question, uh, <laughs> did he do this work, the artist, did he do this work traditional uh, Bristol board and pen, or was this computer? I think he does that on a tablet or something. Nope. Well, um, in terms of books uh, getting funded, the chat is screaming over uh, Wonder Island, which started crowdfunding today. Um, <laughs> I know that... <laughs> I know they that they've, they've got one backer in particular. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver apparently jumped into the chat to give a $100 super chat. Uh, and yeah, that's his second YouTube channel. And then commented that he's going to buy seven copies and also retweeted that um, this book is being funded and you get a free issue of Cyberfrog if you back it. Well, what? that was the whole thing. No, no, that was the whole thing. It was every hour. Liam was going to give away a Cyber Frog or a Mike S. Miller book to a backer that was in the chat that commented they wanted it. Well, half of the people that were watching can't comment on his channel because we're all blocked. So we get back to <laughs> yeah. not, not, on, not only am I not blocked, but Liam actually invited me onto his launch stream to talk about Beast Wars. And after this review, I'm regretting not joining him. Oh, like, <laughs> like Mr. Dongs and Smug Pug, I am not blocked either. Uh -huh. Yeah, I well, saw you were getting some heat in the chat, Wooster. Oh, oh that yeah. Campaign. Yeah, they yeah. were upset about something. I don't know what. Yeah, yucky. Yeah, I, I think uh, EVS was uh, experiencing some guilt for kind of ragging on him. <laughs> no, oh, I, he did. Think, I really don't think that was EVS. I that think it him. is. Yeah, it was it's him. him. It's his second. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't his normal. Uh, it don't matter. He already got him blocked. The nor blocked. Yeah, the normal Ethan uh, YouTube is blocked by Liam. So that that yeah. almost certainly was Ethan. And, yeah. and Ethan has Ethan has a backup channel from when he got struck in late 2018 and he couldn't live stream. He created the all caps comics 
uh, channel and he started streaming over there just until the strike was lifted. He used to put drawing videos on that channel, but I think it's really, it's inactive. Yeah, I, I, so. yeah it's inactive. It it's a dead channel, yeah. It didn't seem like his normal uh, typing pattern, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that's how he types, especially when he's trolling. Yeah, and then he, <laughs> and he backed all the digital. He backed like seven digitals. And, and unfortunately, <laughs> Liam perhaps showed his backers, and you could see a lot of Ethan backing. Yeah, oh, and he, Liam oh, accidentally wow. showed his backer list. So. Well, I mean, I was watching this. I was watching it too. So. Yeah, that was him. So is Ethan buying those books to burn them? No, they're digital copies he bought. Oh, I see. Is he buying them to delete them? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Ethan just doesn't want Liam to send stuff to him, so if he backs the digital, he doesn't have to do anything. He's like, you don't have to spend money sending to me, Liam. That's what he said about the Xenotype. <laughs> Hilarious. And it's you like know, he, Ian's got that FU money. He can just, you know. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Ethan's FU money, uh, back Super Asia Fun Toy now available. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. Hey, what's yeah. up, Anthony? I didn't see you come in. Uh, how you doing, Chris? What's going oh, on, good. Stu? Yeah, well, so this is the key question here. Lorenzo's asking: Why is Ethan buying Liam's books? Is he over this uh, the physical threats that Ethan, Liam was making towards him? Oh, did I Liam can't... threaten him? Yeah, he was saying that he's going to come around New Jersey and see some friends, and then he posted some video of some guy getting beat up. Oh, my maybe, God. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Ethan just wants Liam back in the fold. I, I did notice a comment of him saying, NASA came back to me. It's time for you to come back to me too, yeah. Liam. So I think it's I think it's a bit of white hat trolling and, and, <laughs> and trying to build some bridges. Maybe. It's his sense know. of humor. It's totally yeah. his sense of humor. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I, he was saying he was going to get one of the construction shirts that Liam, <laughs> that Liam was wearing. It's like, get that merch. I'll buy one. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. Ethan was just the muse that Liam wasn't going to burn his books. He was just auctioning them off if you back his book. Maybe he appreciated that. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, well, him like... giving away the, the CG books that he backed seemed like a bit of a F you to CG. Right? Like he's washing his hands of it. He doesn't even want the books. He's just using them to get his book funded. No, it's the only thing he's got a value that people want to yes. throw some money at him for. What 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 books was he giving away? Uh, the uh, Chromium Cyber Frog, I guess a Battle Maiden Knuckle Bomb, and a Smiller's Lone Star black yeah. and white cover. Yeah, I can get Miller and EVS's books, but does he have a beef with with uh, Kung Lee? Uh, who knows? I don't know. I know that he was picking out ones that he wanted to keep. He picked out a, a graveyard shift. He's like, oh, I like this one. I'm going to keep this one. And I think, some other just, one I think it's just books he likes versus books he doesn't care about. Yeah. yeah. Is Liam wearing a suit in his live stream? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> his car salesman outfit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. Bless his heart. I did look at his campaign on Indiegogo, and I guess if you like kind of that style of manga it's, it's not a bad looking little project there are definitely some interesting uh, panel designs that were in there it wasn't just you know flat angle shots yeah jalapeno milk says liam being brought back into the fold would be funny it won't last due to his brain damage i think he has brain damage i could be wrong he, he has said something about that that uh, yeah he claims he had an aneurysm Okay, I can believe that. Stan Liam is back. <laughs> well, just like manga saved the comic industry, maybe Liam will save Comicsgate. Well, know? I think <laughs> Smug Pug and I are very excited to back this campaign. He's not yeah. the hero we deserve. He's the hero we have. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. I'll be backing Wonder Island. I mean, uh, Moonshine and I have talked about it before. Like we were both really surprised with uh, Xenotype and. Even if the book's bad, at least we'll have something interesting to talk about. There it is. Oh. I see a future live stream for reviewing. Well, I mean, uh, apparently the first 24 pages will be online in a week or so. So stay tuned. Mm. There you go. I won't even have to spend a dime. One thing, <laughs> I, 
One thing I did notice is like it's a 72 page story, but those 72 pages are only unlocked via stretch goals. Yeah. So the book the book right now is 24 pages, and then I think once it hits uh, 6,000, it becomes 48, and then when it hits 10,000, it becomes 72. Uh, I do hope it hits 10,000 just so we can get the, a full yeah. story. Uh, I mean, it's going to be tricky, but he's what at about 2,000 right now. Yeah. Not it reminds quite 2,000. It reminds me of the Valiant comics. When Valiant first started, they did all the Nintendo books, like the Zelda. They mm -hmm. did the Mario books. Right. And that's what it kind of reminds me of, you know, that old, old school Valiant. Yeah. I mean, if apparently you said m most of this uh, images is, are actually single panels, so it's actually rather detailed. If these are single panels, he's showing and not even full pages. So it, it, there's definitely it? quality put into this. Is he pulling a uh, Adam Post? Uh, no, I think I think he, there's a picture of like a full page. He, he's, it's just uh, it's not colored fully yet. But, like there's a picture of the book, and you can see the panel layout if you scroll down in the campaign. But I don't think he has it colored completely yet. So he only got certain panels colored fully. Uh, I'm surprised more people didn't jump on getting Manga Chan's artwork. You know that's pretty much the value I see in that campaign. I mean, she, she definitely has talent. You can't. Yeah, she, yeah she's pretty. She's pretty talented. Yeah, and she just does digital. You know, so having something actually <laughs> drawn by her would be uh, worth it. As we were mentioning with the Vestry, I think the black and white actually probably looks better than the color. Although the color looks pretty good in this case, but. The black and white does seem really tempting. And it's Earth cheaper, so. Earthmind said if I had any faith, Liam would actually send me a book. I may have backed it despite his antics, but he lost me as a customer. Yeah, Earthmind uh, still hasn't got his book yet. I didn't mm. get the book that I paid for, so. Yeah, uh, that is a Liam problem. is done. Yeah, Liam's done with my wallet, so. Well, if you back the digital, you probably can be certain you'll get it, just like Ethan. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> what do you think, Dark Gift? You've been quiet. My issue... I have one issue with Liam. He he ripped me off with putting that Castle Grayskull behind him. I, I, put my <laughs> castle, I, I put my Castle Grayskull behind me way before he did, and now he's got his Castle Grayskull. Uh, Mr. Dong says Liam and Micah have parted ways. I saw that, but I didn't realize it was serious. I, I don't know really? what they. I don't know what they argued about, but yeah, no, I don't know who Micah is. Uh, no oh, one God, I know You're better off for, for some reason. You're better <laughs> off. <he says. laughs> you're, you're better off knowing who Liam is than Micah. Liam at least makes things that look pretty good. Liam is entertaining. Yeah, that's true as well. That yeah, definitely. I didn't realize they had a fallen out. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Apparently, I I usually don't doubt Mr. Dong's on things like this. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see when uh, what's what's <laughs> thing of wood two comes out. What? Uh, it's already out. It's no, already out. God. Thank yeah. you, Tinfoil. <laughs> yeah, but he wants fifteen thousand dollars to fund fixed goal. So I don't know if it's ever coming out. That's a very high bar he set for himself. When is yeah, Peregrine coming out? Ah, uh, who knows? Because didn't uh, like I have something to do with that? He did a team up with uh, Inglewood. I, and I think Peregrine. it's just the poster currently, okay. but yeah, I don't think it was anything too in depth. Uh, I know the last I when I last spoke with uh, Xavier, they and this was going back like a month or so ago. They were about getting ready to fulfill. Like I think the book, they were just waiting on the books, but I could be wrong. Maybe something happened since then. Good. Uh, you had uh, Micah on it. I think you actually boosted his sales quite a bit. Dark gift, right? Am I remembering this wrong? M Micah. Yeah. Uh, for for Englewood too. Yes. No. I no, who am I thinking of? I thought he went on somewhere. I guess it wasn't you. What's this Mr. Dong saying? Read that. He well, says, right. uh, Micah belatedly realized that him reading out a speech about why Liam is leaving Comicsgate for being corrupt and evil reflected badly on him. Regrets not leaving Liam to die. 
And uh, Jalapeno Milk says that's an astounding amount of self-realization for Micah. Yeah, I, I e-fapped that thing. That Micah actually Brett. happened? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Liam Liam wrote out a big speech about how he was leaving CG. I, I even forget the reasons why now, to be honest. He was butthurt about something. It was um, it was the it was the NASA thing. It was it was oh, the NASA. right right yeah. it, was, it was the NASA thing and, and it was like like right after EVS like ripped him and Micah a new one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Micah read that speech and then uh, didn't think it reflected on him. Thought he was doing a favor for a friend, but clearly um, there was some association there with Micah actually doing that for him. Uh, who who wouldn't Ooh. think that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And who would think that would be a good idea? And and why would he blame Liam for something he did? At the, what? I, Who I knows what these people think anymore? Well, did right. Liam ask him? Did Liam ask him to do it? I mean, I think Mike yeah. insisted because Liam made his own thing and it was kind of unhinged. So Mike was like, "Here, let me do this for you." <laughs> well, in that case, then Mike has got no one else to blame but himself. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And even if Liam did ask him to do it, like. That's you know a friend asking you to do him a favor is not a bad thing. It could be a bad favor, and but if you accept to do that bad favor, <laughs> like hey. that's still on you, you know. <laughs> like I mean, that's a lot. Like, hey, this is disgusting. Try it. Taste it. Uh, James right. H- Hayes asked a question. I almost certainly Ethan will not refund that. It's just Ethan showing he can spend money. Yeah. I think it's kind of reminding him of remember what I did for Xenotype. It, it, it's more of a high, higher level troll than I'm going to yeah. buy and refund. It's yeah. absolutely yeah. trolling. That kind of money is nothing to EVS. Yeah, he's not going to refund it to him. Yeah, you know. yeah, remember he did ask for refunds for Xenotype, and Liam wouldn't give it to him. Uh, and you have to also realize <laughs> Ethan just gave a hundred dollar super chat. He's not getting that money back. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get oh. another image on the screen? I mean, I like I <laughs> yes, like please. looking at I like looking at Liam's toy collection. I'm very jealous, but I was wondering if this was the inspiration for Boy Island. No, so you have the little boy oh, there. Yeah, there's this little island. island of toys in the back. But, oh my god, yeah. hilarious! Did did he finish building his fort? Yes, he's in it right now. Oh, that's where he's streaming from. He had to carry his desk on his back because his woman crashed their car last night. Pregnant, <laughs> they crashed the car, and he's not worried about her, how she's doing. He's worried about how he's going to get his desk from one place to the next. When his woman was his pregnant wife is in a car accident. Oh, oh my, my god. god! Anyway, the adventures of Liam. <laughs> yeah, the well, adventures of I, Liam. I, I, mean. I got to say one thing. Wait, what is Liam up to right now? What's his? Uh... 17, 1800, 25 100. backers. 1800, I'm, so he's. I'm guessing he'll get five grand off of this campaign, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think he's. I mean, I hope, I wish he'd get 10 because then yeah, it's the full I, book. But yeah. I, I hope he gets, I hope he gets 10 grand too, just so yeah. the full 72 pages are unlocked. Yeah, we'll so he's, that. he's almost at. So Micah actually took more of a brunt on that than he, Liam did because. Yes. Mike. Mike is only at, what, like 2,500? Well, the thing is, I think, like, despite everything, people still kind of like Liam and want to like Liam. Like, I, I have to admit, like, I, I like Liam. I don't really have an issue with him other than... Yeah, like, I, I, well, I got no issue. Liam has either. the advantage that he's he is entertaining. Even if he's doing yeah. something stupid, he's entertaining. Whereas, yeah. whereas Micah, Micah is, like, really abrasive. He's really arrogant. Um, and, like, his Englewood books, like, I was never interested in those from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So at least Liam. At least Liam is interesting. Mike is just boring and abrasive. After I got shipped a floppy book without a bag and board, I was done backing Mike up. I mean, oh, wow! Did you, you didn't know about that, Doc? No, no. For Englewood one, he shipped it just unprotected, Jesus no bag, Christ. no board, in a wow. in a Gemini. That's it. Now, uh, Mister Dongs doesn't think this campaign is going to do very well. Well, that's it, Mr. Dongs. I'm going to be promoting the hell out of Wonder Island. I'm going to be putting that link <laughs> everywhere where I'm a mod. You're going, going to be super chatty in every Ethan stream, the back Wonder I'm, Island. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to drag Liam across that 10K finish line. Just you wait and see. Yeah, but Liam's the only one that's doing 24-page books. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there. 
Yeah, I mean, technically, you could back for ten dollars, and then you wouldn't feel so ripped off, I suppose, if it's only twenty-four he, pages. At least he has a stretch goal to get to a, a seventy-two pages, where some of these other books are just twenty-four. Yeah, and Belknet has a good point. Liam lagged three channels in one week. You know, that's Th that was that was a cell phone on Liam's part. You should have just left it. But. Yeah. Micah is sort of having his come to Jesus moment and declared himself comic skate again. That's interesting. That purity testing was stupid. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Since him and Mayor are the OG comic skaters, I don't know about that. Micah wasn't OG comic skate, was he? He says he was OG. I was like, well, whereby it's no rage, no wando comic. He's been around. Yeah, he's been around since at least 2017, 2018. I'll give him that much. I don't know about like 2016. It was I don't know if he late 18, pretty sure. When the book when he launched Englewood, yes, yes. Yeah, but he was he I didn't was see in much the... of him at all around, and I've I've been around since EBS first started YouTubing. So well, what was that guy that Michael was feuding with that he Engle started? Pink. Yeah, that's that's how he got to start coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. I've so, I've actually heard that all the OGs hated um <clears throat> hated Micah Curtis like Captain Cummings. Yep. Uh, he had trouble with Doug Ernst and Engelteen. I don't know. I don't know if Micah was ever really. Oh, somebody died. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, just, I just I just dropped my big thing of uh. Goldfish crackers. <laughs> yeah, like, it was, you know, like a big ass box of crackers. <laughs> yeah, oh, it is. It's the, it's the big ass. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're oh, just a little quiet, Andy. Are you able to turn up your mic a little? Oh, I'm quiet. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that better? A little Please. louder, if it's possible. I think the chat was saying that they can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Is that better? It's better. Um, not by much. Still not where you were last time. Yeah. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Hold on. Give me okay. one moment. Yeah, we can check out, though. Um, they seem to have lost a bit of their viewership on uh, <coughs> Liam's stream. They were at 50 people. And, uh, Is that now better? They're down to... yes. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's way better. March. Okay. Five by five. Yeah. They're now I down to 25. Him... Uh, they've got Vinny Art there, Manga Chan helping him out, Hex Allen, and Oz apparently resurrected from whatever hole in the ground he's been sleeping in for the past. And Raging weeks. Golden, I think if Liam goes on Raging Golden Eagles channel, he could get a few thousand dollars. Oh yeah, that night, you know. definitely. Well, they did the Xenotype crossover thing, you know. Yeah, so I assume he'll go on Raging Golden Eagles channel, and a few hundred people will see it. So that that'll probably help him out a bit. But yeah, and then who, Liam's who, who, got the war campaign money too. You know, don't forget who, all that. Who's <laughs> below? Who who's below Liam? I can't Hex, tell who that is. Hex Allen. Is that Hex? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm not used to seeing him with a baseball hat on. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hex. He's racing pretty it, hard. When is his book coming out, or his trading cards, or whatever the hell it is that I backed? I don't even remember what it is anymore. Um, huh. I, I think it just. Closed, didn't it? I don't know. Or it's getting ready to close because he's getting ready to launch the mailing. I think he already launched the mailing list for the next book. Um, so I think he's getting ready to close it. I would, yeah, pause the video. Well, right, if you're gonna look at the chat, there you go. Okay. What did you guys think of the resurrection of Oz for this episode? Boring. Oh yeah, you you weren't happy with the new uh, attitude. They were just Oz. talking about weed. He was yelling at people on the phone. There was some guy who didn't deliver his stuff that he ordered. Apparently, there was some buy our gay ops going on. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about that, Liam, accusing us, the customers, of gay oping him? Oh, that was James, Oz. James Hayes is saying, no new backers as of yet for Wonder Island. Uh, as, as of how long? Oh, it's been, what, five hours, six hours? Since this the last backer noise is brought to you by Dark Gift. That's not me. I think it's AA. He's got his yeah. mic good now. And <laughs> <it's> 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure rocks. it's you the one eating dark. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah, that's oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Ed on a bag of oats. Oh, yeah. I, I'm guessing he's probably yeah, going to have to print like 20 to 30 of these books. That's going to be my guess. You think it's just going to be 30? Well, he's going to have to print, like, God, because he's doing the printing of the manga. He's doing the printing of the regular book. So I'm guessing 20 to 30 of these books he's going to have to <laughs> physically print. The rest are going to be digital. Because the shipping from Australia, if he's not going through Critical Blast, then the shipping is going to cost outrageous to is America. Critical Blast contacted Liam to talk about that? I don't know, because all the other Australians are. I think at this point, he's I basically got so many people like going to him, like you know, like using him, that like I think people should go to him if they want to. I don't think he needs to go knocking yeah. on doors right now at this moment, you know. Exactly. Because well, I mean, that, the company it's... men, uh, and there's like three or four other ones that are going through Critical Blast through their shipping. Yeah, uh, Area Black, I think, is yep. going through Critical Blast uh, for yep. Talus. He was just on my show earlier today. Yeah. I thought, I thought that Liam was going to jump on his private jet and deliver them to the States while he was stopping off to kill Ethan. <laughs> Possibility. <laughs> well, so here's the campaign, Hero of Brightwater. Um, yeah, I mean, he's well on his way. 25 backers, 1,700. Yeah, but I'd... half of them are digital. He's got, what, nine? Yep. Yeah. Um, one manga. Is he going to print yeah. one manga? <laughs> Did one you of, see the comment? One of 100 claimed. There's only one comment. The guy's asking. He's like, is this going to be printed the correct way this time? <laughs> well, Liam <laughs> says yes. So there you go. Can I download this? No. <laughs> what do you log in? No, no, you can't do it. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. All digital. People are not paying the exorbitant shipping amounts. Well, there's eight for the graphic novel, but those may all be Australians. Yeah. See, that's what I'm going to say. He's probably going to have to print like 20 to 30 of each, possibly. Well, on the opening night, on the launch night, don't some of the more expensive tiers usually get claimed? He's got zero on the collector pack. What is the collector pack? Well, he's got six of the completionists, though. Okay, yeah, so there you go. So what's the collector missing? I guess. Uh, I don't know. You could. I guess. It, Click on it. It looks like the picture is the same. I think you get so. more books or something. Then click on the other one. See what the differences are. I can't tell. Power pendant. All is pinned. Was that the coin thing he was showing? Yeah. Off? Power okay. pendant. Pin. There you go. <laughs> Which I think he said was actually gold plated. So. Uh -oh. That big uh -oh. honking pin that he showed. Oh, are we going to have another one of those? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, gold plated is actually on. very inexpensive. Yeah. It's very, very yeah, little it's gold. Yeah, it's really cheap. Power um, Fantasy Fun Pack. No idea what this is. It's sketch probably work. a sketch from... Portrait. Manga-chan. I guess her name is Yuka Cross, or that's her... Artistic name, perhaps, and some original art. Yeah, the book's one of those. Hentai. One of those is that. <laughs> oh dear lord! Wait, Yuka Cross is Manga Chan? I I'd assume so. She's the artist, so. So that image, somebody bought for two hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Yes. Hey, I'll drop up my dad. my wrist with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I pay that much for that art. But... Yeah. Stupendous is in the back. Uh, Stu, could you draw that for uh, 300 bucks or less? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I could do that for 50 bucks. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's not even that good. <laughs> I assume yeah. I assume she knows how to do digital stuff, so drawing by hand, she's not yeah. as good. That's the yeah, I was, 
click on the campaign and I hit the wrong button. Sorry for dipping out. <laughs> yes. That was colored with crayons. Yeah, those oh. are flats. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, and click on your. I don't know what well, it there's says. No depth I think in it. There's no... You don't even get to pick your character. Oh, that sucks. You're not logged in, right? Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Wait, so, yeah. so I so do that all the time, dude. Punk. I do it all the time. Yeah, click on it. You don't even get to pick. Nah, it's a page. random. Yeah, it's a random art. So she could draw anything and ship it to you. I think Odie art sold for this exact same price, but I mean, that's Odie art, so it was kind of worth it. Does she get to sing to you? Is, is that a is that something? <laughs> Maybe she can send you a, a song and an MP3. Maybe you could ask. <laughs> yes. I mean, I guess if you get a chromium cyber frog, it might be worth it because those sell for actually quite a bit of money. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If if he throws in wrecked planet, I might back one. <laughs> Well, blood honey is where the money is, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you're going to be waiting a while for that one. Well, Liam yeah. does have to ship it to you. That is true. Wait, yeah. Yeah, blood yeah Niobe, I agree with you 100%. I thought blood honey was selling at a discount on eBay. Did they? No, that's the the paper stock, uh, oh. the third cover variant. The original, the salamandroid is like 100 but the cyber frog, I think, is still pretty valuable as well. Hmm. Yeah, the sound Android one's the hot one. The background behind his image looks like shit. It's like a six-year-old <laughs> put this together. Well, I, 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 I will I say again, I think she she draws digitally, so this is just the best she can do but using well, physical I, medium. No, I think he's talking about like that blue background behind the image, whatever that's supposed to be. Oh, I yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Did you I, see her I, cartoon? Probably Liam made. The cartoon was interesting horrible can you, can you blow up that image no i mean as an amateur that it wasn't horrible the cartoon yeah it, no it looks like a 10 minute drawing. it was like a flash animation cartoon basically. yeah it looks like it was drawn with crayon i swear to god this one uh, yeah. yeah no i think it's markers. i think that that's markers yeah i think it's digital Twitless yeah, because you can see the strokes. Yeah, that, that's marker. Are you sure it's not a digital, like a, a paint pen that's making it look like that? Uh, no, I mean, it could be, but well, I assume you Well, this might be a wanna... mock-up. It might, might not yeah. be actually... It, this could might be, actually yeah. be a mock-up, so it might not be an actual traditional drawing, so... Because yeah. it does have a digital feel. Little Maybe. bit. There but yeah, could be I don't know what she does as much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're the you're the artist, Doc. Oh, tinfoil <laughs> L. Uh, he's very he's very disgruntled right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, that would be that would be unique. Then it might be worth it. Yeah, yeah that would be fair. interesting. For sure. It's wonderful. Oh yeah, make an NFT out of it. <laughs> I mean, uh, James she's, Hay she's... asks, "Why is the eyebrow in front of her hair?" And that's that's just the manga way they do things. It's that's kind that's of a weird. Japanese style. Yeah, I think it's actually supposed to be behind the hair. Right? It's like you're, you're supposed to be able to see through. It's like, like yeah, because the hair isn't like fully thick. That's it's just the way they represent that. I never yeah. liked it either, but they all do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's done constantly in manga and anime. Yeah. Well, I will say, you know. Mega Chan's got a decent voice. She sang, it came on open mic night a couple of times. Mm. Now, what she's saying yeah, it was okay. is horrible. I, I don't know what she was singing, but I'm pretty sure the original is as bad as she sang it. It's just, yeah. I sing <laughs> that. No, actually, I'm, not, I'm not much, saying her. The original's much better. Oh, okay, if you say so. I'm not saying her choices the original's are, you know, much songs are that good, <laughs> but she's got a good voice. Oh, come on. Paper Gangster, who doesn't want to hear that for the 10th time in a row? I know Berserk Guts would get all wet here. And I... I'm just saying, like, like she yeah. she literally sounds like the chicks that sing Berserk in, like, anime, you know? Yes. Berserk was disappointed. Berserk was very disappointed that um, 
Liam told Manga Chen that he's gay, so he couldn't hit on her. That was that. Oh, was is that fantastic. is that why Berserk is not on the stream because Oz is there? I, I have no Berserk idea. Berserk was somewhere he couldn't be on or something because okay. I think Liam was saying he sent him the link and that. But Ahmed, are you going to ask for a review copy of this? No, I I don't re review trash. No, Ahmed, go with the fire. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't call it trash yeah. until you review it. <laughs> that cool. Well, Liam offered me a free, a free copy of Z-Type, and, and I said I don't want it, so there you go. <laughs> well, you could have given it the Earth Mind. He apparently never got his book. Yeah. Or Matthew Fowler. I don't think Matthew Damn. Fowler. Oh, there were many. Uh, Matthew Fowler, Earth Mind. Uh, tr there are a lot of people who didn't get it. You know, yeah. I have a list. And I didn't get the one I paid for, yep. Are you keeping a list on it? Is that what's going on? Definitely, I'm keeping a list. So are they never it. getting their book? Didn't I mean, it's not going to send them Don't worry, Dark Griff. I'll keep a, uh, Dark Griff, I'll keep a list of people you, you screw over also. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you, you, you do that. <laughs> now, this totally looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. Can you zoom in on this? I want to get Doc Daddy's take on this. I mean, that's what they're going for, isn't it? It yeah. looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. It looks See, like a box that, cover art for an old video game. Yeah, that that's a wonderful composition in the manga style. There's not a thing wrong with it. Uh, can you go down to where there's the underground layer? What I is the dock? Oh, who's got a phone. vibrator? I know. <laughs> Somebody's got a, you got to go back to the story. Well, Red, stop looking at discussion. There you go. Somebody's go got down. a pager. <laughs> So doing a pager. <laughs> well, it stops. So you guys don't need to keep talking about it. That, <laughs> Wait, was that was that creature always that color? I swear, I saw a promotional image for that creature, and it wasn't that color. Yeah, the little monster next does, to does it. I don't, I don't find it. I think it was a. I think it was, a, I think it was a lighter blue, lighter yeah. blue, a little bit. Yeah, I think he's a month late for Pride Month. Anybody? This isn't that interesting. Scroll down. He's Matthew a Fowler, late. did you, did you ever get your Zenotype? No, he did it. Well, you know what? Simple Jack is such a stand-up guy. He actually sent him his copy. Oh, that was nice. Simple. Oh, yeah. see now, if you could have done that for Earthmind, Ahmed, if you had taken your copy. Exactly. Yeah, but, well, I guess but selfish. I don't. I, selfish, I don't Ahmed. pay for shipping. I, oh. I don't pay for shipping. Everything comes included. Okay, go <laughs> go down. There's a monster, I guess. That's part of the story. It looks like a witch, actually, I think. Yeah, it looks like a hag or something. Yeah. Go to the left. Why are you looking at the... There you go. <laughs> now, this, this kind oh, of... This, this this kind it's of a very agitated me. moonshine. <laughs> well, right, well, he was looking at the stupid <laughs> comments when there was only one. He was scrolling down. He's like, why are you Hold doing on. that? Hold on a second, because this actually bothers me. Can anyone actually read what those stretch goals are? No! No. Yeah, someone in chat told him. Oh, so I think come on! Are, 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 are you are you going to use are you going to use Brother Gaius's thing? Brother Gaius in the chat typed to Liam and said, "Nobody can read your stretch goals if you click it." That's yeah. why you got to back it, folks, so you can read them, so they can get unlocked. Oh, well, I can. So read well, them. according to Liam, <laughs> so Liam's I, I solution can, was, I can read. Click it here. in a new tab. Yeah, click it in so a new tab, and you'll see it. At five thousand, you get a pin up. At 6,000, page count is added, and okay. add an, another chapter. So that's 48 uh, pages if we can get the $6,000. Yeah. Then you get a card at 7. At 8, you get another pinup. At 9, you get a magnet. At 10, you get a page count up to 72. So that's the full book. 11 is a card. 12 collector coasters. Coasters. That's Sweet what we need. Jesus. Yeah. Okay, well, we don't care about the rest, so... You're just mad he beat you to it, I don't need any sticky yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you, you nailed them. <laughs> he, got, he got the coasters before I could. What the fuck? <laughs> coasters would be great to go with the koozie, you know? Yeah, but I mean? he's like... got to raise that money first, though. You know what? I could have used everybody's avatar and put them on coasters, have a dark gift coaster. I could have had a jazz crab coaster. It would, I could have I cornered the market. 
Well, at 20K, 20K you get stickers. At yeah, 75K, not a comic book project. Jesus at 75K, Christ. you get a making of book, apparently. Oh. Well, a making oh. of. Yeah. So that's what you want to get to. Anyway, scroll down, because that's boring. <laughs> I love how Wizard is so pissed. <laughs> did, 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 he, did he ever, did he ever like, figure something else out? Cause remember he said, like, if you back this book, he'll send you a copy of... <laughs> the copy, the book that you fucking paid for in the first place? Right. Yeah, did he ever uh, walk yeah. that back? Or is he still hey, doing no, that? No, he, no, he's still doing that. Earthmind, Earthmind, back this book so you can get your Xenotype back, you know. <laughs> That. Yeah, so this is apparently, <laughs> since he didn't get everything colored, this is a panel of a page, so this is not even a full page. So, I mean, there's, it's pretty high detailed in the line work, I'd say. It looks nice. It does, yeah, that, look, it does look nice. There's not a thing wrong with that, uh, if that's your style, if that's what you like. That's a that's yeah. a, that's yeah, a well I mean, executed it's, piece of art. It's yeah, very it's, flat. Yeah, it's very it's, cartoony. Yeah, it's, right. now, it's, it's solid okay. manga. Now, now, is this book is this book going to be colored, or is it going to be black and white, or is the uh, comic both. book colored? This the comic is colored, and the manga yes, is black and yes, white. Yes, okay. the ma the graphic novel is colored. The manga is black and white. Just like I think Xenotype. this one, I think this one uh, would look better Mark, in color than say, Xenotype did. You, yeah. you say multicolor. You don't say color. So... Color is a racial slur. <laughs> okay, if you scroll down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for so my you're, clips you're paying up the, the, the same price for okay. both black and white or color. So this is what I want Big Daddy's opinion on. Can you re-change that aspect ratio? There you go. I like, I like, I like, I like this. I think this, this panel is, is really good, I think, in terms of composition and perspective. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's very strong. Very strong composition. And the, the lighting, the, 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 the lighting effect coming off the crystals is nice. Mm -hmm. I think someone asked about the color. I think this will be the final colors. He just has very little. That's why he did panels. He has very little in the final colors. That's why it's not full pages. So who who is the actual artist? Is it Liam or is it? It's Manga uh, Chan or Luca, whatever. Right. That's really confusing for branding. She should really just like sync up all her names. Well, you got to have a stage name, Get you know. Well, I, whoever the artist is, I think they might have been better off uh, doing the project on their own without all the baggage Liam brings with him. Good point. Well, it's there's, there's nothing wrong right? with this art. Everything I've seen, other than the crayon-looking thing, is this really probably, well executed. Yeah, this probably would get a lot of sales on Kickstarter. You know, there's a lot of those people that go for right. this shit on there. Right, 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 I right. If she did I think it on it her own, she probably, she probably wouldn't get harassed by Liam. That's also something to take into consideration. <laughs> yeah, I caught a stream with them where he was telling her how she needs to like procreate and spread her, you know, gene line legs. and all this other stuff. Sweet. Spread her legs. Oh God, <laughs> Stu. Oh, yeah, yeah. Romance. Really good. Hashtag like, she, romance. She was like, "I don't want to. All my family is our assholes. I just want my my gene line to die." And he's like, "No, no, you gotta have kids. You gotta procreate. It's your duty and all this she, other stuff." She it's wants her. She it's wants her line to die. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> oh, that's bleak. I know, right? <laughs> how do you look in the mirror and come to that well, conclusion? One, well, totally like it touches you. That's how you feel. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that's totally. That's like she's so like bubbly and like you know like anime e you know and, yeah. like, <laughs> and there was that that's one like stream. a very dark way to think about things well there's, we there's already know stream. little got we already know little got kicked out this this thing so you know uh, she's highlight like, velnet's comment <laughs> well Ned. you know i have my stage name and my regular name you know, Stu Rage it. and Soy Pindus, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's different. One's a character. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I have different well, avatars. She's got a pen name and she's got a stage name, apparently. And then she's got her performance her name, name when she <clears throat> sings. Yeah. And I assume she has a real name as well. Oh, my God. The one Wait, that's what's, going on, what's going on with Liam and Lidl? I, they had no a falling out, too. Uh, yeah, apparently he asked her to spread and she said no. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> the chat did, did, is killing me with their comments. Did you happen to see the butt-ass naked <laughs> boy that's in this campaign? 
No. Uh, uh, oh, what? it's scroll down further. It's in the trading <laughs> card section. Uh, there's a bare ass naked boy getting slapped by a, a fairy. Leave it to Studa. Notice that. Exactly. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. I don't think I to that. Oh, what's this? This is, is interesting. This the, is this the team? <laughs> Look at them. All right, let's I like those goals. animals. Yeah, I like those animals. And there's, there's a, a mushroom. magic mushroom. You know. That is literally uh, like a scene out of Link. That's, yeah, or, from Mario Brothers. Or a Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. card. Right. Yeah, it's like it's like Mario versus uh, Zelda right there. This is a Pokemon, yeah. I think. Isn't yeah, it, it looks, looks like, like a the Pokemon. head of a Pokemon. <laughs> yes, well, that's my whole thing with manga. To me, all of it looks that has that. I do look. like this that, that page. You know, I do like that. Right, yeah, that's cool. that's well done. Now the shading is perfect. You know, the effects are good on it. I like that. Mm -hmm. And whoever colored it really helped it. Now that it, see, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting concept to have the scene in her in his eyes. A boy will be tested. <laughs> okay. For what? Be behave yourself, well read. Behave yourself. Oh Jesus. <laughs> So was, that, was that before no. the priest did it? Or after I, I think priest? it's time to play the disclaimer. Well, Red, do you have the disclaimer on hand? You, you keep forgetting to play it. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So the, Yeah, um, but the disclaimer doesn't... Uh, it, it's supposed to include uh, not, my name in it. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As the opinions and views expressed by Amit, Reina, Spirit Scar, and Rising Lee do not represent the opinions of Well Red Reviews, its guests, hosts, or subsidiaries. And for this show, well read. Exactly. <laughs> and well read. Uh, I'll, I'll Vic has uh, a spicy comment. I'll look at his disclaimer on that one. Mark Monster, not final. Monster Hunter mixed with Link, Call of the Wild. It's all pretty impressive. A billion times better than that piece of crap you had on earlier Vestry. Oh, wow, Vic. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Ouch. Ouch. I will say the coloring is definitely... I good. wouldn't go... I wouldn't yeah. go that far. Only the coloring. Uh, Vestry always struck like struck me as uh, interesting, but like like you guys mentioned, like their campaigns were so quick. Like I never, I yeah. never caught, I never caught one ever. Yeah, like, I, I hear about it by the time. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I was just gonna say I'd hear about it by the time I go to look at it, it was closed. You know? Yeah, I would think yeah. interesting is the best way to describe the books in whole. They're they're definitely interesting. There's the coasters. Yep. Jeez. Okay, now here's the butt naked boy getting whipped by a a, a a fairy. Oh, he's getting tested, all right. Oh yes, and the old ah. hag is just watching. Oh, yeah, but from a God. distance, it looks like two wings are coming out of his butt. <laughs> how did you even oh, notice I got this, this too? I got this. <laughs> how could this you not? I don't, I, don't know know be, I don't know if you should be showing this in high detail on the stream well read. Right. I'm on a trading wow. card. That's I, what I, I look for, a trading card. I was going to say, why are we looking at Preston's childhood? No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd, right. I'd take this off screen well read. <laughs> yeah. okay. it's, clearly, it's clearly a minor. And, yeah. Butt naked <laughs> boy getting whipped. So this is Liam's revenge scene on Nasser. Yeah, that oh, kind of... Throws a dark tone over all of that, doesn't it? Well, I just I I think it's just because of all like the bullshit surrounding Lamb, but because because if you really think about it, that's that's very cherub looking. You know what I mean? Uh, it, other than like not having the wings, or it's like that what the dog biting the baby's pants and they're falling off. That classic mm -hmm. image. Matthew Fowler right. says it looks like several fairies saving a baby from the witch, and maybe so. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and Earthline I mean, it, says it's the only nudity that's allowed on YouTube. <laughs> Jeez. Good point. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, back it just for that trading card. Oh, we have Rizy. Wow. Rizy. Rizy. And Rizy's spot on. 
That's not it. Just a, parents, buy right. this for your kids. <laughs> Two minutes after the disclaimer plays, Risey pops up. Perfect. All right, get in here. <laughs> I was gonna say this too. Um, that this is this is where you know Boy Island got its name from. That panel. Yeah, yes, Jack Stafford uh, <laughs> uh, told us what I was thinking of. Yes, the Copper Tone commercial. Boy Island. Yeah, I remember those. God. So, do you just do landscape stock, or do you do like people and stuff when you paint? I uh, I started off as a portrait artist with charcoal and ebony pencils, and I did photorealism. Then I fell into comic it's books for a while. Of the book. I didn't what? hear you. A... I was gonna say, is Epstein credited in making the book since <laughs> called Boy Island? <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you've played the disclaimer already. Before, right? That's right. But I mean, I we're ha- talking about Doc, not not Wonder Island. We've we've moved on. Yes, <laughs> we moved on from the butt babies. Now we're talking about fine art. Big, I, big Doc Daddy. Did you I, ever draw any like uh, <laughs> uh, portraits of butt babies? No, never. Not <laughs> what? What about adult nudes? Do you draw that? All artists have to do that. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I have a. Uh, I also teach art, have a little art school here, and uh, I have a very fantastic model that comes in for my advanced students. Uh, so that's pretty regular. But I have been, you know, this has lit a fire under me. I, I, I'm going to do a 15 page, not to sell it or anything. I just want to see if I can still do a do a panel to panel work. If you're just going to practice when you're finished, just put it online so people can see if they like it then. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to do one for Well Read, uh, his stream. Uh, well Read, did you get that last image I sent you of one of my original characters from way back in the '90s? Oh yeah, I can uh, I can actually pull that up and show it. Yeah, That's pull it. pull that up. It's a it's a painting uh, in acrylic of one of my original characters. Speaking while he's pulling that up, speaking of figure uh, models, when I was in art school, uh, I couldn't do it for my school because I was in the class, you know, and uh, I had to see these people. But I, I actually did some figure modeling at one of the other art schools. <laughs> yeah, I tried to, but women kept passing out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a piece of money, you know, when you're like 18 years old and like. Oh well, heck know, yeah. Yeah. Dark we, we, gift clocks in. He's like, you're gonna be, need a bigger canvas. We uh, <laughs> <laughs> we pay our model fifty dollars an hour. So yeah, she does pretty good. Yeah, so, back then I think it was twenty an hour, but yeah, but this is ni- nineteen ninety four, so the inflation that that that, that, yeah. that, jives, that jives about right. Don't yeah. mention inflation with getting nude. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> new models make more prostitutes. <laughs> I'll actually show a couple because uh, you sent a few that I really liked. Okay, so that's your character. Yeah, that's that? Sun Rider. Uh, I actually named him after my son that I painted that for. Uh, so his name is Christian Daniel, and uh, he's Sun Rider. Basically, fire-based powers, but I never liked the way the Human Torch was drawn. So he always just has a glowing yellow aura around him. Which I didn't paint. <laughs> I like your composition. It's it's like dynamic. He's like coming right at you. You know the the perspective. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tinfoil L in the chat likes it too. Earth mind thumbs up. I will take it away from my son and sell it if you want it. <laughs> you got another one, well read. Uh, Vic uh, says, I like the concept, Sunrider. Pretty freaking awesome and a hint of white supremacy. Vic, what <laughs> are you talking about tonight? I what think, is going on with think, Vic lately? I think yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I was going for. I, I believe Vic just wants to be added to the disclaimer, if that's what he's trying to do. <laughs> he's Thank you, Twitless. I appreciate it. He's already on Mike S. Miller's Thank disclaimer. You. And uh, yeah, wow. there were a couple a couple of others that I really liked as well. I'll bring those. Now up. these these that he's going to show are ones I did recently, with big fat paintbrushes in my hand and just slapped them out for some friends of mine. That's a dirty oh, that's neat. 
Yeah, and that's a little eight by ten. Yeah, it's acrylic on eight by ten masonite. I mean, I think Twitless is correct. That's beautiful. It's like stealing candy from a baby. <laughs> it just makes it taste that much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially since he huffed and puffed when I said, and would you mind taking a photo of it that's not, you know, from you looking down at it? Can you, like, square up the photo? God, Dad! Oh. Thanks, Tenfold. I appreciate it. Right, so yeah. your son is, like, well-read? Oh, that must be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> that top hand is perfect. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I loved George Perez. He was a huge influence, but I'm, I'm a very heavy-handed painter, so my paintings and my drawings don't exactly get along well together. I love that one. Thanks, Vic. I appreciate it. And then, it also gave like a Monet style with the background. That was pretty good. Yeah, that's my number one influence in fine art is Monet. In comics, it was always George Perez and John Byrne. The Buscema is senior more than junior. Oh, they just keep getting better. Yeah, great artists. Nice. How much you want for that one? Uh, that one sold. Oh. Uh. <laughs> a, a guy who used to write for the same company that I penciled for got in touch with me and asked me to do that for his kid. And I told him, dude, um, I don't know. It's been like 35 years. So I don't know if you know this, but I'm a little bit more expensive than I used to be. He goes, yeah, I'm a little richer than I used to be. So do it anyway. It's like, All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I wish, wish I could say that. Yeah. <laughs> do that. That is great, dude. This art is very nice, but where are the drunks well read? I don't know. They're uh, sleeping it off today, I guess. I think Listen, it's, uh, I really it's... wanted to uh, get a buzz going here, but when I reached over to my liquor cabinet here in my studio, all there is is an empty bottle. So, oh. I'm a little hurt. You know, you were really buzzed last time when you put the empty bottle back in the cabinet. Well, that's just it. I could have sworn it wasn't empty, so somebody's been in here having happy time. That Thank you, Jack. Is... I appreciate it. Yeah, that Batman is freaking epic. That is great. Yeah. Dude, post. Are you? Do you have a Twitter doc? No, no. Um, well, get on Twitter and start posting this stuff, and the, the Kowski people will follow you. I'm a, a Batman is so hard to draw. Because he doesn't he doesn't actually have a human head. He has a square with some points on it. Mm -hmm. awesome. Somebody just blazed up. Yeah. <laughs> of course that's Anthony. <laughs> I don't know. I think he, he's Thanks, Tim Paul. He's not I don't think he's that difficult to draw. I have a hard time with him. I I I end up drawing a traditional superhero, but the neck always comes out wrong because I'm not doing that straight slab-sided uh, head of his. No, I understand. I could I'm, see you doing a kick-ass Green Lantern with, like, the space, like how you did with the Daredevil, but make it green and have his, like, uh, const constructs, like, all just, oh, I could just imagine a kick-ass Green Lantern you can do. Right, right, right. I did a Green Lantern drawing. Um, I'll try to find it and send it to you well. Um, that was a reimagining of his golden age costume. Mm. The one with the, like uh, the vampire thing in the back. Nah, the cape. You should do Speedball. Speedball. I don't, even, I don't know who that is. He was like a C-list character from Marvel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he was a good character. Yeah, Dick, Dicko did create him. Yeah. Um, he's the one that started the no, Civil War he, he, story. He, he destroyed he's a town. A pretty, he's a pretty uh, B lister, so yeah. But yeah, I was gonna say he moved. Him. Yeah, he moved up to like B list when he like joined the New Warriors back in the nineties, and then yeah, uh, yeah he, he's yeah, very they, they, colorful. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think like I remember him from New Warriors. Yeah, he's that yeah. guy with the blue costume, blonde hair. The pale blue costume. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. It was blue yeah, and, and was orange. Like, and there was like ball, yeah, balls. Like, uh, were they made of light or something? I can't remember. But like, uh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. 
Yeah, but uh, yeah, he's the one that started the Civil War because uh, he destroyed a town on accident, and that's what the whole thing they wanted the superheroes to be uh, government mandated. Yeah, he busted a bu- he busted some balls everywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I thought making balls was a uh, Jubilee's thing. No, boom, boom. Boom. he I dropped his nut. He dropped his nuts everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Nitro destroyed it. Yeah, but he he let it uh, happen. Something I, I can't remember. It's been so long since I read that book. They wrote yeah. that if he gets Kono, that they might they just blow up. Yeah. I'll be right back, guys. I got it. I love that back when they were doing the reality show. So that's why everyone was able to see it. Yep. yep. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Good God, yeah. it's been a long time. Yeah, because he wanted the views. Yeah. Hey, so well, Red Show. They would have, they would have gone on them. You can show the cover. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Dragon. I'm sorry. My big mouth got ahead of me. No yeah, you got Survivor's Guilt Twitless and saying it. Yeah, Survivor's Guilt from that because of the boy in that. <laughs> yep. Man, back in the day, the comics were so great stories. Right. Now we got hey, trans. Warren, can Hollywood you show the stuff. cover of the uh, Assassinet book that I sent you? Uh, yep. Let me uh, let me grab that. <coughs> this is the only published work of mine that I can still find. <clears throat> but interestingly, there's a new... Uh, uh, instead of pocket change comic, somebody else put their label on it and they airbrushed out mine and the inker's name off the cover. So I must have pissed somebody off. You said you were canceled out of the fine art uh, community. Out yeah. of the fine art community, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that That's a long story for a yeah, longer day. Yeah, but that day. usually carries over everywhere you go, so... Well, no, there's there's thirty years between. <laughs> mm. So this is the comic you were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Looks familiar. Well, this was published, right? Yeah, I did three issues for this company of that title, and two issues of another one. <clears throat> and uh, on the lower left corner, in the red above the heap of skulls. Is where I signed it. It ain't there anymore. And that high quality comics across the top of the black smudge was not on the original either. So they actually canceled you out. I, I, like I mean, the PC. sorry, what were you saying, uh, Christopher? No, I didn't say anything else. Oh. Just. I was yeah. blown away that my signature was gone off. I was like, what the hell did I do to these new publishers or whoever? Took over because familiar. Art Williamson inked issue nine of this on my pencils. The owner of the imprint of Pocket Change Comics was a Dixon. I don't remember his first name. Robert or Bob, I think. And he stiffed me on my pay. I never got paid for the last issue. And he gave the pages, which were mine, to Art Williamson. I think I have some of these issues. You got some of mine? I probably do. I have, I have like 15,000 comics. And that, <laughs> looks, and that looks damn familiar. <laughs> um, and I never got it. I never even got a copy of the last one. I did for him. I think I was a jerk. He lived in Florida and just up and moved and sold the company. Hey, uh, Andy, I don't know if you want your camera on um, at, uh, or it's just on by accident. Didn't I see a butt? <laughs> <laughs> that was a face, first of all. Uh, there's some imagery in there. Wow, that was rude. So, oh, wait. My is, that, is that Ray? I thought that was Dark Gift. I didn't even notice there was two of them. Yeah. No, I'm I'm Dark Sniff Comics. Dark Sniff? No, I was just what, a scratch and out. Sniff? Yeah, I'm Dark Sniff Comics today. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ah, that sounds, like my, that sounds like my buddy. Yeah, he's a Dark Sniff. <laughs> <laughs> What's, What's up, Ray? I enjoyed, your, I enjoyed your rant earlier, Ray. 
Oh, well, thank you. I, pre I appreciate seeing you there. I hope uh, I got you some subscribers because uh, I, I, I do really feel like this platform is uh, really, really lacking on, on actual talent. Like, they have actual talent, but they don't get the recognition they deserve. So I'm always like, yeah, I see talented people on this platform. They need to be at, like, the million sub counts, not people like me just bitching and moaning in, in, in a microphone. <laughs> well, you... are... Oh, excuse me. What are you no, doing no. fighting with Pat? Ray, what? <laughs> Veal Ned said it in the chat. He knows. I don't got. What explain. are you doing fighting with Pat and Ian? Veal Ned just told you. That's I why. watched those guys for past what well, I six seven years now. Ten, I'm going on ten years. I was like, what is she doing yelling at my flea market madness guy? Well, they 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 got they got to stop uh, uh talking talking shit about something, and when they're offered to 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 test the product, they they refuse. They can shut the hell up. They're that's that's what I didn't understand. How do you review a product without reviewing the product? That's what the internet's for now. That's what it. Well, that's what we do. We we well, this is a review show, so they they review comics, but they actually read the books. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. That's what Pat I'm saying. Review shit. He just buys stuff. He he's, doesn't, he's though. He's a collector. He don't review he's, anything. Stu, here's the thing. The reason why I said something is because when this whole thing started, uh, they were they were very critical, and the CEO offered them to, to play the product, and, and they refused. They, they said no, but they yeah. still are going to crap on the product, even though they had a chance to test it before it was even available to the public. Yeah. Well, well I'm sure we'd all love to hear about Ray and her stupid drama with the stupid Amico with all the other stupid <laughs> YouTubers. Spud, Spud, you sound a little salty. Do you want some salt? You want some water well, for the salt? Get that out your mouth? Get that little, this little smugness out your throat? No, because it's time for another lightning round news segment! Oh, Yay! Yes. Lightning round news yes. segment! Uh, well, Zach it's, has a new video up, if you wanted to touch on that. Oh, I thought well, Red Red was gonna play a clip or something when he said didn't that. Didn't watch got... it. It's Quite lightning round, clip. bitches. Yeah, where's the clip? Well, Red, where's the lightning round clip? I can't I'm wait. Sharing, I'm sharing my screen. All right. Okay, what are we All doing? All right, so it's uh, thanks to Kiwi Farms, I actually know about half of this crap. I haven't really been following everything. So uh, apparently, Richard C. Meyer put out an update to the Expendables. It caused a bit of uh, ass hurt, and then he deleted it, but not before yes. Renfamous screenshotted it. Uh, let me just bring up the update. Um, who wants to read it? Who wants to read it? I'll Who's read. Got a good... I like to All read. All right, Ray, you read it. Do it in the Charlie voice just to piss oh. everyone off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we want to do the Charlie voice? Clip? Yeah, do it, in the, do it in the Charlie voice because Richard's acting like a big fucking baby girl in this, so do, do it. Hello. Some backwards <laughs> have expressed increased frustrations mm -hmm. at the ways in fulfilling the expendables go to hell. It occurred to me that since this book has attracted many non-traditional comic buyers and many people who have not bought crowdfunding comics before, that I should probably give some extra information. Shipping dates are estimated due to the fact that the majority of crowdfunding campaigns end up being wait. The goal is always to get the book to the backers as soon as possible. But books being late is norm, not the exception. Print file assembly should begin next week. There should be a lot more movement in the campaign in the coming weeks. Unlike ordering books on Amazon.com or eBay, Part of the experience of crowdfunding is watching the entire process, fundraising, productions, and fulfillment, which includes all the obstacles and missteps along the way. Thanks, Richard. Dick. And I think yeah. there was also another section under that said that uh, refunds are always available uh, throughout the campaign. Yeah. So, uh, yes, Renfamous screenshot that and tweeted it out before uh, Zach was able to delete it. Any thoughts from the panel? He made it the norm. Mm -hmm. It's not the norm. They, they made it that way. Yeah, I mean, look at Tim Lim and Mark Pellegrini. They always get this stuff out on time. Look at the book that we just <coughs> reviewed, Vestry. That wasn't late. Yeah, Yeah. well, I, I actually recall, um, I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, the Dubs. Maybe, maybe it was out on time. 
maybe it was Captain Cummings, but the guy who did that Hawaiian dick when he was two years late, I'm pretty sure they all went in on him, B. Claymore. And uh, that was two years late when they started calling that out. And I think Zach's like nearly 18 months late on uh, The Expendables Go to Hell. So he's ticking up to that two-year mark. Yeah, that's that's like a Red Rooster territory almost. But uh, he also put out an update claiming that uh, you don't have to read this one, Charlie. So don't worry about it. Uh, the final cover designs are in, and he's claim to sent off the interior pages print file which is weird because i swear he already told us that the print file had been done like months ago like back in january or something like that smug fuck did you happen to see the update on uh the jawbreakers grand bazaar well it's funny you mentioned that stupendous Whoa! because that's our next lightning round topic oh, yeah, yeah, next uh, i'm gonna topic. I i'm gonna dip out real quick i'll be back all right. Oh, my God. Now, this one is something else. All right, Stu. Well, uh, do you want to read this one? Okay. Jawbreaker's <laughs> Grand Bazaar sets up Jawbreaker's forever. Hi, everyone. Aaron Alfecci is already <coughs> only 19 pages into the next book. Already 19 pages. Here's a peek of the main villain, Jawbreaker's Forever God King, is back and he calls himself Vinatra. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> as, as you may know, God King parts one through three contained in Jawbreaker's Lost Souls and Jawbreaker's God King ended up killing most of the team. Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar is a prequel that shows the entire team how they met. Jawbreaker's Forever is set in the current day and explains explains how some of them have come back to life but in order for that not to sound not to, uh, well in order for that not to seem cheap i am rewriting dialogue and captions <laughs> in grand bazaar in order to expand the lore of the jawbreakers franchise a lot of major updates and changes to the Jawbreakers lore are being set up in Grand Bazaar, and this kind of thing is the stuff that stories for the next 10 years will arise from. I'm finishing up the print file for Expendables Go to Hell this week, and next week I should finish the rewritten dialogue <laughs> for Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Lettering usually goes pretty quickly, and will immediately proceed to creating the print file for Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, folks. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. And then, uh, so, nice, so uh, nice, art, nice art, though. I will say, it's nice looking. Yeah, art. I gotta say, so, whoever that Rat King guy is, he looks dope. So he's uh, not even done writing it. That's Lord Finatra. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. He's not yeah, even Finatra done writing looks this. Cool now. That's, That's what I great got. Great work. He's not even done writing. What the fuck? How many? How has this been a year? Well, he's changing the story of Grand Bazaar now to fit in with. Uh, Jawbreakers Forever, which is the, the fourth book, and I don't know. It, it's yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit iffy. It's a bit iffy. I swear he's already said Grand Bazaar was finished too. So, just more, just another delay. Oh my god! Uh, thoughts from the panel on Expendables or Jawbreakers? Um, didn't he kill the rest half his team of I'm Jawbreakers? I'm not gonna comment. <laughs> No, they're coming back now, Risey. That's what he's doing. Oh, they're, he's writing them. Oh, all right. They're coming back. Well, I, I, mean, I, I, I don't have a horse in this race, so I'll tell you, the artwork looks great. It does, but it's been how many, how long? Give Doc a setup. How long have we been waiting for this book? Uh, I think I think this one's like six months late, maybe. I'm not I'm not too sure if it's later than The Expendables, but it, it's it's pretty late, though. Yeah, maybe I, I guess the... Enough. the uh, the the little statement that he put out that I guess he went back and deleted um, actually was worded way better than like wh how he put it in that video where he mentions the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I get what he was saying. Uh, you're right. It's not the norm, but it's also not as it's not as. Uh, Uncommon. I mean, it's just that's just been going on forever. Fucking Richard Pace is still what eight years late now on his book. <laughs> oh, they claim more. No, Richard Pace. Who's he? Oh, I, did, I didn't know he did a book either. Yeah, he did a, a book uh, on Kickstarter, and 
I think in 2018 he was six or ni- 2018 or 2019 he was like six years late at that point. Um, and he gave he he, he six gave some years bo- late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six years Jesus. late. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, I I think why this would you why... already have the book finished before you raise money to print it? You know, I got I, I got something to say. I think this is the reason why these comic book creators they didn't get drummed out of the big two. They are just can't get their shit done, so they all got fired. That's basically what I'm seeing here, is they're taking too long to produce a book that other artists are taking only a month to get a book out every month to people's hands at the damn comic book store. Yes. It's it I think they're just so fucking slow and they're so fucking prima donnas that they 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 didn't say, Oh, I, because of my politics I got drummed out. No, because you're too goddamn slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Jay- James James Hayes makes a good point here too. He says, you know, Rob Lee, but the Lee Field, uh, that's like a weird situation, right? Because he did the Kickstarter, he was late on that, then he released the book on Indiegogo, and then I think he was late on that. But then, like, he fulfilled some of the books, but not all of the books. And I'm not sure which camp, like, it was whether that was the Kickstarter or the uh, Indiegogo. I don't remember which backers got what. Um, so, yeah, that, that, but, but Rob Leefield, he's yeah, late on his, his. Yeah, he did oh, a yeah, book called Brigade, I think. Yeah. Brigade, yep. Yeah, it yeah. was Brigade. He started to, but then ended up stopping, and yeah, it was just a big hoopla. Yeah, I was really close to backing that myself, so I'm so glad I never followed through. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, well, speaking of uh, big hooplas, here's the uh, last lightning round topic for tonight. Here we have uh, Preston Poulter. Yeah, fuck uh, it, not interested. And, <laughs> and he's thanking uh, Cap White, who's Kanan White, for a cover on, uh, Gwyn- I think this is Guinevere and the Divinity Factory number five. So it looks like uh, Kanan White was poached from Antonio Bryson Comics Gate and is now working with Preston. Not Any Kanan's thoughts? best work. Not Kanan's best work. Let's have a look at it. Let's let's enlarge it here. So this must I be the mind cover. it. I it's don't good. Mind. Like, but it's best. Yeah, like I said, I've read Preston's writing, and it yeah leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, I know Kanan's That's work, a cover. I, yeah, that's a cover. That's a cover. You know, Kanan's known for dynamic uh, poses and stuff. This is just close-ups of people's faces. Uh, it's not what Kanan's known for. Well, uh, I, I have no problem with I have no problem with Kanan taking business from whoever he likes. But I, I just thought this was uh, when I saw this on um, I think it was Kiwi Farms. I saw it posted. It was just a little. It was a little sad because you know Kanan White's a fantastic artist. And he left CG, and I'm not sure if he's left Antonio, although I think he probably should because Antonio's an idiot. But uh, yeah, it was just, it was just uh, like, it was just a bit like, wow, okay, took me no, by surprise. Well, somebody's paying, you know, you got to put food on the table. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I mean, if someone's willing to pay, you know, I'm sure Ken is not cheap. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I took it that gentleman. way too. <laughs> yeah, well, look at fucking Rob Willis. I mean, right there, you know, he's taking all these jobs instead of doing Shinobi Sasquatch because he's got to fucking feed his family. He's got five kids. I got five (laughs) mouths to feed. (laughs) Yeah, man. I get get it, you know. I mean, I get it. What else is Kanan doing, though? What else is Kanan doing? Yeah, I understand, but... He's taking more uh, mainstream indie work. You know, uh, I, I think that was that was one of the reasons why he had to like drop the CG moniker. Well, that's, well, that's what he said, but I don't think he's gotten anything. That's why he's working for Preston right now. No, he has. I saw him post some, a couple of things a while back, a couple of months ago. Well, I don't know if he's getting you know. a lot of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I know he got a couple of things. Well, this, well, this is actually. Funny. Go this ahead. actually makes me feel. This actually makes me feel a little, a little happy in a small way. It's that if uh, Kane and White will uh, take work from Preston, it means maybe I can save up my cash and get Kane to draw my book. I mean, the guy is fantastic. So, yeah, but and look, you don't take money from anybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this Money's is for Guinevere Five, right? Guinevere Five. This is uh, 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Gwenevere 5, it says on the description. That the just show. ended on Kickstarter. So this shit is done. I mean, Kane no, uh, can do the best. Uh, I've, I've backed some of uh, the Guinevere's before. How, uh, how Preston does his campaigns is he'll do like a uh, a Make 100 mm-hmm. variant cover campaign, mm-hmm. then he'll do the main campaign. So it says sign up and this tweet's from two days ago. So I'm, I'm guessing this will be the uh, the main campaign. So well, this won't be... The- yeah, that's for the cheap old one because the Make 100 one was the most expensive one. That's the one I backed of Guinevere 5. Yeah, and that's the one that's over. I muted myself, so... It was like yeah. five people, so... Well, five other people. Yeah, Who, I've, I've uh, got a few. I've got a few of the Make One Hundred. Well, I, I, I grabbed the uh, the sashi covers. Um, yeah. Who is printing for these comics? Gate. It, 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 it was all open to anyone watching it. What's the the on Wait, what? Well, I'm not the one live streaming. I'm just on one of the. Um... I, I think he's talking to somebody else. Okay, yeah, he's talking I, to someone in Discord. I, and I muted yeah. him. <laughs> you're on a live stream dragon you're still so, on a live stream so doc uh every creator picks their own printing company that they work with you know there's like mixum there's uh what other ones are there what's nasser does i forget i forget Pug, which one do you remember yeah, I mean, who if... are you going with anthony <clears throat> i'm going with mixum for this time around uh, but i did get a couple of names of some other uh, companies that seem to be pretty on point uh like the guys that uh don chin uses seems pretty uh Pretty, so like pretty if, reliable. If I wanted Print Ninja, to, that's another one. If I wanted Print to Ninja, uh, yeah. order some old school four color or black and white on old school newsprint with a glossy cover. Alterna. Yeah, Alterna. Pizza. How Alterna. much, Alterna. How much Alterna, would that Pizza how Yeah, much, talk to how, them. How much would that run you for a hundred copies? He's pretty reasonable. You'd have to uh, go to his website and there's a uh, a link that leads you to a page because he does a, 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 a I can't Print, think of printer the name partner of program. Yeah, yeah. Printer, and it's actually pretty program. reasonable for like two fifty to five hundred uh, copies. Is actually pretty cheap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, but the the one thing with that is you're you're basically on his schedule. So, like, if you put like uh, the order in in June, but he's not placing like a print order till like August, you gotta wait till August for it. Oh well, yeah. Matthew Fowler in the chat says uh, Alterner doesn't do that anymore. They don't. They got they well, got they rid don't. of the print program. I'm not we sure. Have, um, we have some Iobi other says that the... they use Comics Wellspring. That's, That's another one. That's probably yeah. in Canada, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, a good I think one. Yeah, in Canada. But um, they're, they're still pretty good. I mean, Larry gets his books back, no problem. But we you actually have uh, some print. other comments in the chat as well. Uh, James Hayes follows up with uh, our Kanan story saying, according to EVS posts on Kiwi Farms, he and Kanan are no longer on good terms and the books he planned to do with them are not going to happen. And then uh, Vic <laughs> very cheekily says... I just hope he isn't so desperate for money he'll take payment from Preston and do something to him. We know what he wants to do <laughs> with black guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. A, bit of spice, a bit of spice in the chat. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. And Larry says, no, uh, Wellspring is in Detroit as well. Okay. So, Anthony, you're a, you're a comic artist. Correct. Yes. It, 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 so... I almost I, I forgot my damn question. It went, <laughs> it went right out of my head. Oh, are you doing traditional uh, Bristol board and ink? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay, all right. And and so, what is what is your normal turnaround on getting the book out? This is my first I, I, one. I don't mean the so. Print. I mean, yeah. The no, yeah. This is my first one. So I, I'm. Uh, I was on point for doing like a page every like two days. Then I ran into some medical issues, um, so now okay. I'm down. Th- and then uh, I just got like back into drawing the book again a couple of weeks ago. All right. Um, and uh, but now I'm also working full time, so now I'm doing like a page a week. So I'm gonna bump that up now that it's starting to work is starting to tame down. But I was working like six days a week, so it was kind of <laughs> hard. Uh, oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. I would just so, read your own pace. I mean, I can yeah. do a page a day. Uh, <laughs> I, I do art full time, 
so my time is my own. That's faster yeah, than half the people. Working. If you could do a page a day, yes. dude. Yeah, yeah. You, you are you are like the game. Yes. Dude, yeah. We had we had twenty two days from the time the script I signed for the script at, at my front door. There was no email. Sign for the script, open it up, open a pack of Bristol board, get to work. You've got twenty two days to ship it to the inker, then the inker to the letterer, the letterer to the or to the script writer, then to the letter, then back to the publisher. And you had to, and as soon as that one went out the door, here comes the next one. The The schedule was a freaking nightmare. The good old days. People I miss them. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Mm. People today don't do that anymore. They just, just willy nilly, whenever they can do it, they do it. You know, that's yeah, old they're like, school when, when I can about. be bothered, you will see the art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, All right. you could do a crank out a page a day, you you'll go far in this, this But don't community. feel like we're giving you an excuse to get lazy, man, because people will <laughs> you know here. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. You've got a good ethic and you'll make a lot of fans if you actually do work that fast. I'll uh <coughs> I, I'm pretty much convinced I will at least I've got some eleven by fourteen or eleven by seventeen Bristol board. I don't know how to ink. I guess I can learn. Uh so I'm gonna well, Red, I'm going to do about 10 pages, and wow. then I'll, I'll debut them here. Awesome. Nice. That'd be great. Can you the stream on link? James Hayes. <laughs> well, Chief can't figure out how to join. Uh, yeah, we're probably looking for the page a month. <laughs> oh, my God. We might see shit for the next century. I'll give you what, what about Rob, right? His art is worth a wait, right? But this is starting to get ridiculous. Like, it is start like... So just finish the book, man. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, no, don't no. finish the book? No, no. Remember, remember, read Earth Mind's saying, comment here. You're saying just because... <laughs> You're saying just because his art is good, we should be willing to wait. If you have a schedule, no, that's not what I'm. No, that's not what I'm saying. That, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he's he's very he's very highly he's very highly detailed. He obviously takes his time, so you know it's yeah. like worth the wait. But I like I did say it's getting a little friggin' ridiculous. Like I get we were just saying he's got five kids. He's got to put food on the table. But finish the book, man. It's been what two years? Well, it's kind of like the Real? Dale really? and his, uh, Hulk. Those are bi-monthly, and yet he still, with the way he works, was putting it out with quality. So and there got, is a way to do it. Remember mm -hmm. that Ramita Jr. was doing two or three titles a month. Jack Kirby, look, five to six. But look yeah. at Ramita Jr., though. I couldn't stand how sloppily he got to the he, point remember, he when did. he was... He got very sloppy because he had I to crank actually like his out. artwork now. He did, but but you know he was getting them out there, and whether yeah. the art was tight or not, he was still a good storyteller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, it also I mean, depends that's the thing, on like, who uh, inks Ramita Junior too, because I've yeah, seen he inks himself. Yeah, yeah, I've seen two books a month, like he put out in one month. One looked like garbage, and the other one looked great. But I saw all yeah. the pencils for everything, and they were all the same. So yes, it, it yeah. really depends on who's inking the artist. Oh, that's the thing that. with yeah. Steve Epting. Yeah. His, it, when Tom Palmer was inking uh, Steve Epting, he was the best in the business and got no praise. And then when he left the Avengers, somebody else started inking him, and he just, you know, wasn't the same. I just, uh, Twillis, I just talked to her at the, the other day on Facebook. Yeah, how's that coming along? <clears throat> it's like John Basima. It, he's changed his, his whole art style. Great, but it all depended <laughs> on the anchor. Yeah, um, he, he changed his whole art style. It's like way more anime looking. At, was it this stream that I showed the picture of it on? Probably well, not. No, I don't remember that. Whose stream was I on that I showed that? Oh, you Can know, you it might have been, to been topicless. Yeah, I could probably pull it up. Hold on a sec. Yeah, because yeah, he, 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 he sent he sent me uh, like he because I, I asked him. I was like, yes, how's the you know we were talking. I was at first I said how's you know things going blah blah blah. And we were just shooting the shit, and then I said how's Sovereign going. And he said, uh, it's going good, you know, he, he knows that he's late, you know, he's not like, you know, but he, he is changing some of the, some of his art style, which, um, he had to go back and change some things because it was like a drastic 
change to his style. I'd rather see the change in the book and get it out relatively on time than you spending a year to get out a book and changing everything. You trash I, I, your own yeah. name when you do that. Okay. I, I, th- I, I, I think he figures. I'm more I think he figures. But I think he figures everybody's kind of given up on it anyway, so he might as well just do what he wants to do and then get it out. You know, I mean, I, I, I that's the he didn't say that. That's yeah, the vibe no, I, I got. That. Yeah. So who are the writers in, yeah. in the? But in it's the it's kind of like or in here? I I just. Uh, um, what well, writers we have is it, it's um, kind of like Liam. I just picked up the Barry Wind. <laughs> Nasser. <laughs> Nasser. Um. There's uh Mark Poultier. No, I mean Mark, here Mark now. Oh no. uh, Me, I'm I'm doing something for Andy. I'm supposed to get back with him this weekend about it. Okay. But yeah, I I just give Nasser some no pointers. Worries. Well, yeah, if you sorry. ask me, bet- between like Liam Gray and uh, Nasser and uh, Mark Poulton, I would say right now, out of the three of them, um, Liam is the standout writer among all three. <laughs> In my opinion, oh, you can laugh, but it's true. Moonshine and I have talked about it. Oh before, no, that uh, was a, that was a smug laugh. That wasn't an actual laugh. <laughs> okay, so this is Huerta's new style. Uh, this is uh this is he just he was, uh, he was being coy. He was like, here's a sneak peek of the new style. So this is what he sent me. Uh, but yeah, that's this that's sovereign, you know. Uh, and see, that looks like Romita. Well, his his stuff. I don't know if you saw uh, Andrew Huerta's stuff, but it was very like graffiti art, like a lot of spikiness yeah. to his artwork and stuff. Like it was very, yeah. it's a cool style. But, this- but it, some, some stuff it got, got it did get convoluted. Yeah, Doc, yeah. he did stuff for magic cards. That was oh, his fame to fame. Was gotcha. drawing yeah. dragons and shit. Yeah. Well, it's like Trent Canuga's work. I love his stuff, but I didn't. I, yeah. I'm a Creed fan, but you know, it's one of those things where he's got a unique style. Stick to it and just keep going, you know, because it's beautiful. Right. Don't, right, don't right. constantly keep changing your style because <clears> then <throat> people aren't going to like what you're doing now. This just looks you like know. a cop out, basically. Like he's got to get yeah, something it, done it quick. It looks like it's a. Matthew yeah. Fowler says that's not what I'm. It's I've almost like a speed drawing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, see that. That's, uh, it, that's a good you know. point from Matthew. Is is that it, you promise people a certain art style before you when you launch, and then you change the art style. You kind of like you're giving them half what they wanted. You know, you're still well, giving he said, them the book, he, but not the art that they backed. Mm-hmm. I, I, he did. He did say it's not that. Well, if it changes uh, during the course of the book. Yeah, well, like he said, he said it's still going to have the his signature style to it. So I'm assuming that some of the spikiness is still there. I think it's just a lot. Cl- I think he's just trying to clean it up so it's more uh, show, visually. Show us an image of his of his old style. Yeah, that's going to say, uh, well, Red, can you pull up uh, yeah, Sovereign? It's one thing if in sure. the beginning it's one style and then it gradually you, changes. You got it, well, Red? That's acceptable uh, yeah, because I got it. you yeah. grow as an artist. But yeah. when you just abruptly change styles because you want to get quicker and do more work, that's another thing. Well, if and he'd finished Sovereign in the style he promised and then launched book two in this style, I don't think there'd be any problem. But it seems like mm-hmm. this book's late and he's changing the style midway through, which means it's going to be even later. Yeah. That's kind of a prima donna thing to do, too, man. Get your product out. You know, to be fair... Right, and, and th- 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 to be fair, then this still might not be a good reason, but I, I have a feeling th- 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 he's... He's trying to get it into like uh, uh, get it animated, and I think that's why he changed the style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, Doc, this is what he what he advertised that he was doing. Got you, got you. Yeah, but again, that's just speculation. Got it. I'm, I'm has just speculating. An style it's, it's very unique, you know. But doing the the single line, quick draw stuff that you see everyone doing now, where there's no line weight. Yeah, look at the detail. Out for speed, and, I mean, and it's, keep it's scrolling just down. A, Crappy yeah. looking artwork. Yeah, I mean, it's, look, it's a great, it's a great you know, looking this, book. I, I never backed it, but it looks great. It did look great. You know, I mean, I that, mean look at all the contrast. Like, you know, it's readable. Yeah, man, that's a that. great panel. That's, that's an cool. amazing panel. Yeah. yeah, he's good. He's just slow Color as shit. Color holds and everything. Mm. Yeah. Now look, go up to that guy's no, face he's not again. Slow. He's just lazy. Okay. Now look at the eyes. Look at this guy's face, and then go back to what Dart Gift showed. I mean, that's totally two different people. I I think. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I, I, I stopped sharing. 
Uh, yeah, but yeah, it, it's it's like the difference between in manga adaptation and then when they put it onto anime. It's like it looks slightly similar, but it's like different that enough that you can notice. Totally different. There's, well, also, so yeah, yeah I kind of like detail. this style better, but the only thing I've got an issue with it is, is why does this guy have like pointy neck shoulder things? You know, that's that's kind of. That's still his style, though. If yeah, you, that's like, his, he's, still his style. Yeah. But I'm like, if you're going to switch it up to make it look a little bit more smooth, take the points <clears> out. <throat> Otherwise, what's the point of changing your style at all? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Now, I'm, not shit, and also, I'm not shitting on the guy here because I don't next to yeah. nothing about this dude. So, well, yeah, don't think well, that I'm being I, callous. Before, before Mr. No, Dongs runs with good. what I said... Before Mr. Dongish runs with what I said, I, I first of all I said I'm speculating that his interest is to get it animated, and I would assume that he wouldn't be doing the animation. I would assume he's trying to get like, you know, license it to get animated. That's my speculation. Just ba he never said that. I'm just basing it on just like the change in the art style, some yeah. of the things he said. He you know he's been up to and stuff like that. I kind Both of put of like two, two and two good. together. Yeah. Both of those are good, but pick one and run with it, and then change. Yeah, this looks like an animation cell that you could get, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. That's what I, that's, when he showed me this and some of the things that he had said he had been up to, in my mind, I was like, oh, he's trying to get this animated. Yep. That, yeah. That's that's my speculation. I, I, I don't want to, you know, I, like I said, I talked to the guy, but he didn't say that. Yeah. Everybody could draw like Ben Edlund, but just get a good story out. It'd be wonderful. The Tick Rock. Yeah. Yeah, because you see this, and then you go back to that Sovereign page with the guy's eyes. They look like two totally different people drew these. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, pro possibly. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, listen. If that's what he's trying to do, that's what he's trying to do, I guess. But he said, he said, he said he's not changing much of what he had already see, drawn. He's he just trying went to from make that to the other. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't do okay. that much detail in an anime. You know, right. as you can in a comic. That's like, like downgrading. That's that's like downgrading on a hot girlfriend to uh, uh, mediocre. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you willing to do that? <laughs> really? No, but he, he, no, but he, he said yeah, he's yeah, not no, going to downgrade. I get what you're saying. <laughs> he did say he did say that the stuff that's already been drawn. He's Same just thing. changing su changing. Um, yeah. Uh, some of the stuff, uh, but not, he's not going too crazy with it. Um, but I guess, I guess from wherever he's starting this new style from in the book, that'll be where the drastic hit is, you know. But I guess he's trying to um, reduce some things just to make it not as jarring, I guess. Yeah, Matthew Fowler says that's a bait and switch tactic. I, I could, some people could say that. There's a lot of truth in that statement. No, well, but, yeah, but you know, if, but then he didn't state. He didn't state this was final artwork either. That's true. If your so if your style was good enough though <laughs> to get people to back you, complete what they paid for in that style, then do something different. I hear you saying, yeah. I hear you saying. Uh, I, we have I mean, different I, projects. I mean, I'm I mean, that, and I haven't produced anything in 30 years. So what am I talking about? Yeah. Do, do we have another well, guest backstage? Well, oh, there we go. Work, work, hello, chief hello. reviews. Hello, or Hello, hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? How it goes, everybody? Good, yeah, good. Good, good. Thanks. Welcome. On that Welcome. note, though, I um I will be taking my leave. It's getting to the three-hour point, and I can't stream for any more than three hours. So uh, it's <laughs> been fun with all you guys, and I'll be uh, jumping out. But well read. Before I leave, did you want to talk about what are we reviewing this Sunday for the good folks watching at home? Uh, we'll, be, we'll be reviewing uh, Beast Wars. With uh, hopefully a special guest reviewer, so we'll see if that works out. Awesome! That's right, guys. Or... It's Beast Wars again. See you Yay. there. Comic or TV show? Wait a oh, smug. Yeah, Rock on smug. Live. Yeah, it's the comic book, the IDW ah. series. Yeah. So is, is is that like a like is the smug just pull a Cinderella at the three hour mark? Or can he really not stream for more than three hours? Uh, I he think just... he just doesn't want to. Yeah, he normally dips out at the three hour mark. Yeah, can't blame him. Well, no, because yeah, it's I become like such a such a it. thing. I it, it's becomes like such a thing. What you know with the with the streams now, like it, like it's like a known thing. Like I'm like I'm like, does he have like? Do they throttle his internet at three hours? Like I don't. Well, it is <laughs> Australia. Well, that's say, a, that yeah, could yeah. Be a possibility, yeah. You uh, 
you comic skaters keep some bizarre hours because an hour from now is my wake up time. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm I'm usually in my studio at six painting after I've had a shower and had some coffee. Holy buckets, man. It is almost three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go in bed too, guys. So take I care of your hours, but I will right, have a good night, Stu. Stu, nice meeting you, buddy. Yeah, right, take care, Stu. Hey, Stu. Stu. I'm gonna bail. Also, guys, it was I had a great time, and uh, you give me a lot to chew on. Great, talk to you soon, Thank you, buddy, Chris, Big Daddy. You guys take care. All right, take care. Oh, oh, you I'm know. no longer in the middle. <laughs> no, but oh. eight, eight, well, that is. there was six. Oh, who do we lose? And then there was War five. Chief. I, we lost. Okay. Yay! I'm in the middle. God. <laughs> I have no idea who Orc Warchief is, other than that um, Smeag wanted him to come on. So, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, sorry if we uh, overspoke to you, War Chief. No offense. Just sometimes it's hard to get a word in when it's big panels. Is he in the um, Discord, sp- Ethereal Dragon? No, oh, he's no, he's on a different one. Oh, the, oh there he's we go. Jesus Chief. hell! Yeah, my internet decided to be a butt. Mm, no, there yeah, you go. That'll happen, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah. So you're the war chief of reviewers? Oh, yes, I am. We actually, I'm doing Barbarian Month for the last little bit. We're, we're doing old 80 fantasy movies. Oh, oh cool. So I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been using Beastmaster to go to sleep to at night lately. Hello? Oh, what was that? Have you done Conan yet or not? No, no, Conan. I, did, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to. Don't want to get. I don't want Sean and Gun to know that's the last movie we're gonna do. Uh, I, I work with a guy, my editor, Sean and Gun. Me and him uh, review movies, and so we just did Crawl. We did the source, the sword and the sorcerer with that cool rocket sword, and we're now gonna do uh, either Dragon Slayer or Beastmaster. Oh, yeah, do Dragon Slayer just... then Beastmaster. That's yeah, what I I'm love thinking. Beastmaster. I, I use that to fall asleep yeah, too because I've Master watched that last. movie. So so oh. many times since I was a kid, like I I know it by heart, so I never feel like I I'm gonna miss out. So I just put it on. And I let myself doze off to it. Yeah, yeah Are you gonna do one Dra- and two or just one? I I because because I'm gonna run out of movies to review for a month, so it's probably just gonna be the first one. The second one Good, was eh. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I barely <laughs> I barely <laughs> remember the second. I, I don't want to sound too fucking ignorant, but what the fuck is Base Monster? <laughs> Oh, you never Beast saw Man? Beastmaster Rising? No, I've never oh, seen you it. Look at the then. images. You're, you're I young. I probably wasn't. I was born in 88, so I don't know when this came Yeah, yeah. you missed it. Yeah. This is like 83 yeah, or 84 or something, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I think... Do you have Amazon Prime? Uh, I it, did no, at it's... one stage, but I've got one thing better. It's called... Um, being on the fucking seven seas. Well, yeah, so, you could um, probably do that. But if you had Prime, I, I, I think it, that that's where I've been watching it. So I uh, believe to kind of help you out there. One, three, three, seven. <laughs> if you know what that is. No, <laughs> no, I don't. But um, no, I. So like just I think because I, I, thing with a lot of dated movies like that, I know they're dope when you watch them when you're younger. But like, because I'm like 33 now, so I'm gonna criticize the fuck out of this. Is it worth right. to watch sober or oh, yeah. when you've smoked something? It, either way, oh, either way, it's worth either it. Either way, yeah. You know what? It's I think it's, it's, I think it's on YouTube too. By the way. Yeah, it's free it's on not YouTube 100%. actually. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then I don't even have to download it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, but it has it cuts off in bits. No. Oh, yeah, this is a class. That's okay. It was conceived through sorcery. Yeah. Blue G's on her neck. By all that is evil. But the courage of one mortal saved it. That looks pretty good. And so, into an age of darkness, in a time of mysticism, oh sacrifice, oh, wow. and plunder, there came the only light. The Beast Master. So, so the question is, is this barbarian or not? See, we, we've kind of been doing the joke. Like, we did Crawl. Was Crawl barbarian? And what do you guys think? Is this barbarian? How barbarian is this movie? That's, like, well, the weird thing, right? Because he's, like, the only one that's, like, 
a barbarian in this movie, like that that you can consider would maybe even be close to it. Well, it does take I would place in it, the Babylonian time. That's I would true. Say low it barbarian, does. low barbarian. Yeah. Whereas Conan is high. This would be like oh, a two, maybe yeah. a three. Well, also, Conan's movie's called Conan the Barbarian, so right. he's definitely a barbarian. Well, what I'm saying, well, what I'm saying is, is, on a barbarian level, it's down at the bottom where Conan's really up top. Kroll is, I would say, a little above Beastmaster. Oh, no. Kroll, Kroll is Spelljammer, actually, if you actually want to get into it. It's it's legit. If you've ever played the Spelljammer... Yeah, it's that. yeah, it's magic, yeah. Oh, it's wait. Did, it, did Beastmaster it. ever have a video game? Yes. Mm, no. I th- no. No? I, I think I, kind of I think vaguely it was on remember Atari. playing something called v- Beastmaster. Like my uncle I think it was Atari. It's maybe... If it's it might have just it might have just had a similar name. It could have been Wolf Master for all I know. It just it was something Animal Master. Well, I'll look. I'll look at. I'll look at my main ROMs right now, and I'll tell you if there was. Yeah, I thought there was. <sighs> okay. Yeah, there there is a Beastmaster game. It's an open world RPG. Oh, there was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that based don't... on the movie, or does it just have the same name? No, probably not. Just the I'll same alter... name, probably. The closest thing to Beastmaster that I have is Altered Beast, and there's something called the Alterer where you turn into like different animals and stuff. Yeah, that's, uh... <clears throat> no, sorry, that's that's what I was thinking of. Altered Beast, I'm pretty sure that's exactly it because yeah. you could change it to Lies. different animal monsters. Yeah, it was Mom, like your grave. Yeah, no, that's I I'm pretty sure that's it. there was something younger or older than that. I um, thought there was a game that was older than that. Maybe not. I can't think of one. There's so many games like got like if you, yeah. if you count arcades into consideration, like I'm still finding random games I never knew existed. Like I'm still hunting out emulators and ROMs and stuff of all the old games because I I still have a a, fa- a a fanatic desire to own to own every video game that ever existed. <laughs> oh, fucking <laughs> Jesus, dude! It's gonna be yeah, an expensive I never, hobby. I never got into no. video games, but. I grew it's up not in that. that. Era. Yeah, it's not that. Uh, you can find quite a lot of games. You just gotta look. Oh yeah, you just gotta know look how to look in the right place. Yeah, I get what you said. Yeah, yeah all the dark little places that you shouldn't go. Yep. <laughs> but we well, I'm playing an Arabian places. Nights game right now. I'm playing Arabian Magic. It's a uh, beat 'em up. Yeah. Also, Spooker and I are doing a comic book together with Shinobi. Was well, the Shinobi one or Shinobi Raccoon or whatever he's calling himself? On yeah, Twitter. the Shinobi. That Shinobi was a great one, game. That was a great. Yeah, Dragon's Lair rocks. Yeah. James Hayes gave an update on Liam. Yeah, that's a uh, it's been a funny thing in the chat. We're getting <laughs> Liam live updates, which is like okay. hey, good for him. Good for so, so I got the Bless ultimate question. What did you guys think of the new Fabio She Hulk? I didn't even see it. Yeah, I you didn't haven't know. seen the new Fabio. She- okay, that's I'm the gonna... one. That's the one in a red outfit with a red. Ha- uh, no, white outfit with red hair. Red skin. Uh, I can. I guess we'll now. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that. I yeah, yeah. That one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's what. Google, it... Google that She Hulk, and I'm telling you right now, that's Fabio She Hulk. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not oh. into it. No, I'll pass. I think I. I think I saw what you're talking about. That yeah, I didn't realize what you were saying there. Thank you, yeah, Greg. Why is your skin red now? Well, they've had red hulks before. Um, yeah, because um, that would be Betsy and um, Ross. Uh, and Ross Thunderbolt yeah. Ross, and there was even a third one, even though he looked exactly like Thunderbolt Ross version, but I can't remember his name. For the life of me, but yeah, really? he. What was the, yeah, there was oh, a third John one. John Burns. Oh. John so that's Burns, uh, that's my She-Hulk. I stand up and stuff yeah, for that fuck She-Hulk. Is that? Scroll down. Yeah, that. There that it one. is, John Burns. John Burns yeah. Hulk. I don't know what this yeah, is. Yeah, he. <laughs> oh, that's the only She-Hulk. That's the only She-Hulk I recognize. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I, 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 I recognize Siesta She-Hulk. There's a a guy who's been doing work lately, and he's uh. Does quite a few She Hulks because he's been doing a lot of good for that. He's pissed off because She Hulk was one of his favorite characters and 
Oh, a lot of people are pissed off. I didn't realize how many fans She-Hulk had until they fucking turned her into an overgrown fucking. Well, she was she was the ace she was the ace woman, man. She was in every. By the way, she yeah. was in every Marvel swimsuit cal. Uh, uh, she was. She never missed oh, yeah. the swimsuit catalog. Anyone oh, yeah. remember those that were was back the in gra- the eighties? That was. I still have cool. the. Fr- I still have the first two. Yeah. Oh, that you're picture lucky from the uh, graphic novel. She-Hulk Check eBay, mate. Said. They're expensive, but you'll be able to find them. I might, I might one day in the future. Just not right now. It's it's where I got my, my one like a couple years ago. I had an insane couple oh, months. She-Hulk. So it's like, mm. gonna wait out. Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, I have the first two swim sh- swimsuit issues uh, still, and I have the first two when they like they copied the Time Life magazine style. Yeah, uh, you know, that, but, uh, like Spy- McFarlane Spider Man was on one, Captain America was on the other. Um, they just wrote I more that in, was... the, in the Time Time Life font, you know, the Time Magazine font. Yeah, I still think that's the bet. That was one of the best Shadow Cats I remember seeing back in the days. Like, God damn, I love that Shadow. Yeah, Cat. yeah, yeah. Well, Red, I'm sharing the picture. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. the Winter Hulk. Yeah, I've I've shown yeah. this before on the stream. Yeah, yeah, it. that's it. <clears throat> it's awful pretty. looking. <laughs> it's, it's so ridiculously ugly. stupid. Like, <laughs> like she has, so she literally has man boobs. Mm-hmm. It, no, it's Fabio. Put put a picture of Fabio next to that. That is Fabio. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it, it's literally a man's body with a female's head. Mm, yeah, yeah. It it's it's Fabio. <laughs> I'm now She Hulk. I, know, I don't know. I've a seen woman. a lot of feminine-looking men, so that could still be. Him. <laughs> and that guy, yeah, how I'm long sure. is her hair? Look, her hair comes down. Seriously, like, took. If you can do a side by side, side by side with Fabio, I swear <laughs> to God, you'll be thinking, "Oh my God, that's Fabio." <laughs> is he, uh, is he even this... that buff anymore? Uh no. When he in his prime. In, in his, his prime? prime, yeah, yeah. That is Fabio. Even even the upturned lips, man. That's just goddamn Fabio. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, it's, it's all just about like making people spurg on Twitter. I don't get why Marvel and DC are so obsessed with just upsetting people at this point. You know, and this is why I don't. I'm not up to date with Marvel and DC anymore. I mean, after they did what they did to Wolverine and Cyclops and Jean. I was like, all right, all right. I tried to defend you, but I'm <laughs> fucking done. Fuck well, you. you don't like the uh, you don't like the Jean Grey, uh, Jean Grey Wolverine Cyclops. Dude, uh, I've threesome. been saying for fucking for as long as I can remember, just give Jean to Wolverine and let me have Cyclops and Emma because I like those two characters and I kind of like Jean and Wolverine, but at the same time, don't particularly give a shit. So if they want to go do that stuff and let my boy be happy with the chick that actually matters, I'm totally the down with that. The chick that actually gives a shit with, that actually gives a shit about him and has no second story and has freaking kids with him. Yeah. has multiple children with him. Yeah. It's, it's, well, no, it's no, 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 no. Jean Grey has multiple kids. Yeah. You're, you're right. Has multiple no, I thought kids Emma Cross, him. I thought Emma Cross. Oh, in Emma Cross alternate realities, there. alternate. Well, oh, okay. I suppose all the kids are from all, except for Cable. He was in the main continuity. No, Rachel Cable is the clo- is her clones child. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I always seem to forget the, that. They only yeah. have one kid technically because yeah, Rachel. Rachel is actually the child of the Phoenix Pulse. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, only, only Nate Gray, who is a created from the DNA of Cyclops. Yeah, and- yeah. He, he's a test oh. tube baby. He doesn't yeah. even have a soul. He doesn't count. Yeah, that was the, the child of. He doesn't Adam have a soul. Cyclops. Yeah, well, he's the only one that is actually their child. While being a duplicate of Gene, some way, somehow. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm at this point when it comes to this. I gave up on Marvel when they turned Scott Summers into a terrorist. I I, I can't a- abide to that at all. This was this was everyone's Boy Scout. 
this is someone who had so much faith in what he was doing and to see him go that go down that road when he got the phoenix force i'm just like yeah come on no i'm done well the phoenix force storyline was bullshit but why they did do a really good story and a lot of people hate me for this but i i still really enjoy, enjoy deadly genesis and that's mm. when scott gave up faith on charles xavier because he found out charles had mind wiped him that he had a third brother and the reason he mind wiped him was is because yeah he got the whole team killed and he knew scott wouldn't um go along with that and so when vulcan actually scott's youngest brother came back because they thought he was dead he showed scott what um xavier had done and then scott's like you know what well, that, that, i'm the even fucking that's... leader of the x-men you're out yeah, but that that that's also wrong. Could you see Xavier actually doing that? Like, I know Xavier. I don't know. I've, I, honestly, even when I was a kid, I never trusted Charles Xavier. You know, I grew up on the animated series. I was like, and they're like, they'd always say that the most powerful, powerful psychic on the earth was Charles Xavier. At least back then. I don't know if he still is to this day. But no, the not. thing is, is that I'm like, how do we know that we're actually here willingly? If you're the most powerful psychic, like you could have altered my mind for all I know. You know, but I you would were, never work with a psychic. You were always meant to trust his morality. And, and then when they yeah, started I didn't, playing see, with the that. See, the thing is, is, I didn't trust his morality. I'm like, the fact is, is that the only reason you and Magneto broke up was, is that you both wanted to do things differently. You wanted well, to like see, infiltrate see, where Magneto, Magneto wanted people to bend the knee. Well, no, that, that's that, the thing. That, yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just, it, it, uh, it, uh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> that was the dynamic, right? Like, Magneto <laughs> Magneto was the one that wanted to do things. Uh, he wanted to forcefully push his agenda, where Xavier wanted to implement it like an SJW. But, but why would Xavier... <sighs> Here's yeah, the question I got to ask. Uh, why would Xavier? Why would Xavier waste his time and just not mind meld Magneto? Like Magneto only has temporary. Because he couldn't. Temporary. That's why Mac Magneto knew no, he was doing that. That's he why he made the helmet. Fuck with him. Yeah, but no, that's no, why know, he made the he helmet. He's like, dude, I was hanging out with you for the past six years, and then I just realized one day when someone told me, like, no, Xavier's not actually your friend. He's just mind fucking you and he's like well is there any way i can stop this and then yeah he found that helmet and then put it on yeah no but that was the whole point you're supposed like you know you're supposed to you know you trusted professor xavier's morality for like 30 years and then all of a sudden they started playing with it and it just kind of broke the character yeah it, it, uh, it makes it the character broken, broken. Yeah. yeah, but even yeah, saying really that, there is still I don't know what if it was issue four or six of the original run created by Stanley and Jack Kirby, and there's this panel about Charles talking about his underage, well, not talking about thinking about his underage little fucking student Jean Grey and how he has a thing for her. Yeah, you know, I'm like, and... he, even Stan Lee put that in there, you know, and people get, have told me like, oh, that's just a throwaway line. I'm like, it's still there, still there. Again, but, that's they, like, how old was Gene? Yeah, but you're also implementing like, yeah, today's morality standards as opposed to the '60s, where like, uh, you know, t saying a 17 year old girl was cute wasn't a big as big a deal as it is. Was now. she 17? I thought she was 15, but. No, yeah, no I, think, I, I think Bobby was like 15, right? Because yeah, Kitty Oh, Price, yeah, because he was the baby of the family, yeah. Yeah. Well, Kitty didn't come yeah, to like, what, 30 But I'm just saying, later? she she was, yeah, but when she joined, she was 13, and she was supposedly the youngest X-Men to ever join, right? So they were, all had to be older than her. Yeah. So. I thought Bobby was the youngest. Bobby had well, in comparison to the original five, yeah. The original yeah, in the original five, Bobby was the youngest. Yeah, and I but think Gene was the oldest. And who? Hank. I think, yeah. I think Gene was yeah. the oldest at like seventeen. Uh, Cyclops was like almost seventeen, and then everybody was in between. I think Hank was older. No. No. No, H Hank. Well, they they've changed his age so many freaking times yeah. now. He he's a he's a grown adult now. It's really weird how they've ke kept doing that with, with him. He's he's kind of shifted every time. Yeah, he, um, they're all older, but yeah. 
So, but but I think like yeah, like as far as like the history of the X Men to actually join the X Men without going through quote unquote the New Mutants, Kitty was the youngest one. Well, she, yeah, she was, they were never actually X Men until they basically became pretty much of age, if you want to consider it that. Um, but because they were just students, yeah. you know, they that's why they'll call the New Mutants. They were a different class, and then <laughs> Cable right, fucking right. shows up yeah. and turns them into fucking a weaponized <laughs> movement. <laughs> I like Cable. Well, that's Cable for you. Was was Ju- is Niobe saying that Jubilee was younger than Kitty? I don't know. Wait, was she? I no, thought she was like fifteen. Was yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, too. but also, like, it, it's the timelines, you know, because Jubilee came after Shadow Cat, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, right, right. So she was probably yeah, the youngest at the Larry time. I'm just talking about, I'm talking, X-Men yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm just talking about, like, in the existence of the X-Men, I, like, at any given time, Kitty was the youngest X-Men to ever join the X-Men. <laughs> I love Villanette's comment here. <laughs> <laughs> Xavier's always been worse than Magneto. He was doxing people with Cerebo from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh shit, that is gold, Bill. <laughs> and he was sending people after him, too. I gotta remember, I'm gonna steal that joke, Bill. I'll always give you credit, though. For that. that is fucking funny. <laughs> I was always partial to Alpha Flight. Oh yeah, I kind of like Elf Flight, but they they they've even gotten wow, Jesus hell, they ever gotten stupid. Well, I, I don't even know. Well, if they're this... not even Alpha Flight anymore. I think anymore. Alpha Flight um became like a space station control yeah. group because they lost the rights to our uh, sword to the yeah. uh the the Fox uh cinematic universe. See, I only recognize the John Byrne run. Everything after that was eh. <laughs> I liked the Great Lake Avengers for a while because Mr. Immortal was kind of an interesting oh my idea for a God. character. I've never read one of those issues. I, 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 I kind of like looked at them once and I was like flipping through the pages. I'm like, this looks ridiculous. I don't care about any of these assholes. I, I love Mr. Immortal. I think Mr. Immortal is just hysterical as a character. It's it's a amusing little character to have in a in a universe. It's like, yeah, just yeah, he just ke- keeps dying, keeps coming back. I thought West Coast was pretty good too. Yeah, they had some fun ones. They've had some fun yeah. characters over the years. It's it's sad to see what's going on now, but I don't know. After oh, after yeah, seeing because the, even the stupid characters, you know, that I used to hate back in the day, I've still got Bubble nostalgia Boy. for. It, and I look at uh, like who Bubble Boy, or whatever his name was, or the uh, the guy who could blimp himself up into a giant ball. And oh, the around. guy from um, Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, well, he's also in the. Uh, he was in the new Teen Titans. I thought it was like Bouncing Boy. Yeah, I thought it was Bouncing Bubble Boy. boy. Yeah, I, I no, no, Bubble no, I, no, no. He's Bouncing Boy. You're right. You're right. Yeah, wasn't he um, the, didn't he become the leader in the cartoon? I, think I, I don't he know. Was in one of the cartoons. Yeah, there was this terrible Legion of Superheroes cartoon a few years back. Oh, well, probably quite a few years back now. But yeah, yeah no, I know was, now. I know yeah, exactly. Come on, Super Boy. Or Superman or whatever. Yeah, he had like this. He had one of the most stupidest superhero costume designs of all goddamn time, too. Where it was just the top was blue and the bottom of his pants were black. And it's like, we're not handing out superhero costumes. Were you dead last? Or what the fuck happened, dude? Like, I feel bad for you. You got a shit power. But also, you should have at least got a cool outfit. It's not fair. He's got a great power. Really? God damn yeah. If that was my power, I'd be like, what the fuck did I do to you, God? What did I do? <laughs> now I'm like, give me no powers. Like, like, there's also the, like, uh, guy who can eat everything. Like, I can't remember his name. Oh, uh, wow. uh, Metal Eater or something. Yeah, eat, all the yeah. eater. Yeah, I, yeah, I seen that guy. <laughs> that was so <laughs> stupid. That was such stupid characters. I think yeah. I liked, uh, I don't know if his name was... Lightning Lad, I think that's what his name was, but I could be wrong. And uh, Timberwolf, but then I found no, out he was... That was a Lightning character. Yeah, no, Lightning Lad was a Lightning character, and then Timberwolf was another one I kind of liked. Yeah. 
No, some of the, well, cool. the one that got his paws because his dad F messed up on his DNA. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell you, man. Like, I know, like, I, I know more about I Marvel than I do cool. DC, and the only things I kind of know about the Legion of Superheroes are from when they've guest appeared in comics, or from a couple of those um, bad animated um, TV show that I watched a couple episodes of. Yeah, DC was always harder to get into because they were so uh, cosmic in scope versus Marvel that was more urban. It was more on Earth. Yeah, it was more urban. It was more down to Earth versus fighting in space. And, you know, you, you really couldn't identify with the characters, you mm. know. It all depends what you're into. I was super into Silver Surfer for a long time. Yeah, I liked him. I liked I liked the earlier surfer, and then the Mobius take was great. Oh. He's kind of a fun fuck you character sometimes. He's yeah. just like, uh, the one where he's going after the gold was kind of, well, it wasn't really going after the gold. He, uh, I think the creature thought he was after the gold. It's been a while since I've read it, but I remember him just like, yeah, why would I need your gold? I could, like, literally make anything I want. I have power cosmic. Yeah. It's like, I like that response. <laughs> Fuck you, Jabba! <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. The moment we start talking about comic book nerdum and what gets into this shit, we were like, Fuck this shit! Someone say fuck you, cunt, to the other person already. <laughs> what what happened with you and Spirit Scar, like Rising? I don't know. Spirit Scar pissed me off with the comments I read on your thing, and um, honestly, I will talk to Spirit Scar and see if we can work things out. But um, outside of that, particularly, yeah, hmm. it is what it is. It was the stuff he said about drunks, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was wondering, because I was thinking, like, I don't know what else could have happened between the two of you. No, I don't, I don't like those passive-aggressive little statements. And, you know, you, you can say it was all Distant Warrior's fault, but when you say drunks instead of drunk, that, that implies more than one drunk. Right. Yeah. Fair point. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, when you use plural. You know, and, and what I've always said to people is if you've got a fucking issue with me, just fucking tell me, you know, and maybe we can work around it. But don't be a little fucking bitch and leave passive aggressive statements on fucking Twitter and fucking YouTube comment sections. I don't like that shit. You know, I still like Spirit Scar. I still like the dude. You know, so if anyone wants to tell him that, but the fact is, is that I'm not going to fucking bend over backwards for anyone. I don't care who you are. If you don't like that I'm a drunk, guess what? Don't fucking try to be my friend on fucking Twitter instead then, you know? Be honest about it. Stop fishing for the shit. Tell us how you really feel. I just did. <laughs> and honestly, that was the nicest way I could say it. Yes. I think yeah, I think you said, you said it fine. Yeah, you guys were on uh, the Oz show together, weren't you? Or no? Me and Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where I met him. Okay. That's where I met basically the majority of you. It was either Spirits or I mean, not Spirits Stream. I mean Oz's or uh, Liam's Stream. Or yeah, testifies. I'm I met you on Oz's. Although we, I like, kind bumped around on Twitter, but like, as yeah, far like, as like, we, yeah, we we'd yeah. known each other back and forth. For, like, sometimes we take shots at each other, but like, it was never personal. You remember right. the duet that uh, you and I sang, Risey, and Dark Gift was playing the guitar. He was playing. Oh uh, fuck no! Hurt. <laughs> he was doing. Uh, he was doing Johnny Cash's Hurt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I vaguely remember that. Holy yeah, shit. That it, was it, like last that, summer. Um, <laughs> Can I ask a question about that song, The Hurt? That is that the one that uh, Nine Inch, the, the, yeah, the singer Nine right Inch Nail made? Yeah. And then Johnny Cash yeah. did such a good job yeah. that it's yeah, like it, everyone thinks it's his song. His song! And Nine Inch Nails did a cover. Yeah, it blew mm -hmm. my mind when I found that out years ago. I'm like, wait, this actually isn't his song? <laughs> <laughs> At Chappas, as I meant, rising well, I in a dark alleyway. <laughs> Georgina wants you to bend over backwards for her. Oh, I'm sorry, Georgina. <laughs> 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 
Don't be an ass when Spirit does the. Did Spirit do three streams apologizing to Risey? Oh, well, no, honestly, I didn't realize he did that. Honestly, like, look, <laughs> Vernon, I'm not being a fucking ass. I'm saying, look, I want to say, I'm going to apologize to him. It ain't going to be fucking publicly. It'll be off air, and I will talk to him about the things that, what I feel like we have issues over. And that'll be that. We'll either be friends after that or we won't. Like, look, I'm open to forgiving people. I've even still trying to be forgiving of Larry like, of, like, of, eh, as of late, you know. And Larry. Yeah, I, I Larry. Niobe. <laughs> God damn it. Every time <laughs> I say Larry, it was like, it's Larry. <laughs> oh, Larry. But, um... <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I, I prefer to have friends than enemies, but I don't care if you're my enemy after. Oh, you did, know, you, that, did you did you did you say something publicly about the comments? Is that why there's like, I I, I'm I just trying. I'm, I, I, I'm I don't I'm know, just dude. To catch I do up. not know. I do not actually know because I don't watch my live streams. It was on your live and, stream. All right, well, there we go. See, that's why I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> and I don't, nine times out of ten, I don't even remember my fucking live streams. Yeah, I re just remember Spirit Scar from Oz's show always fighting with uh, Berserk. And then also messing with that weird guy who was on there towards towards the end, um, Catching Man Drago. Do you remember him? Oh, Sketching Man Drago. Sketching Man Drago, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he's cool. Drago's cool. I like that guy. You know, he, he's not been... He's been staying off the internet lately just because of all this drama shit. It's kind of sad to see him go because he was actually planning on launching a book. He still might be. He says he's still working on his art, but... Yeah, it's kind of sad to see when that thing's happened to people. Did you see Oz on Liam's stream tonight? Rise oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I watched about probably the first half an hour just before well not the very first half an hour they'd been streaming for about an, an hour wasn't so that I caught the, like half an hour before i went out today wasn't that the most attitude you've ever seen him have on stream yeah i think he was trying to be like he's like yeah no i'm not a stone today so i'm gonna be a man you know sort of thing he's like i'm gonna ring up and complain about my red fucking yeah. chippy yeah what the <laughs> fuck he was complaining about and I'm just like, he's like, yeah, what, did your dad lose his mind or something? I'm yeah, like, yeah. stop, stop acting like you're a man, Oz. We, <coughs> we, we all heard you cry for an hour about well-read testifying fucking wiggle wiggle. <laughs> I'm like, you are the furthest thing from a I man I'll ever find. Stream. No, I got that more respect for Justin stream. fucking Bieber. Well, you think he was like that because he hasn't been streaming for so long? And so he feels like he has to come back tough. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, we all know he's not tough. So the <laughs> fuck are you doing that for, buddy? You just look stupid. Yeah. You know, you're coming off as a 14-year-old boy saying, Yeah, I fucked your mother because I'm fucking talking to you on the GTA voice chat. You know? It's like, fuck you, dude. I know you didn't fuck my mother. She lives in Darwin and you definitely have an American accent. Yeah, he sounded like he was mad at some dude over buyer gay ops. So... Not fulfilling his stuff, even though he paid for it. So uh, channeling a bit of his problem with yeah. Google there. Anyway. So I have a question. If about a campaign, if you, what would you like to see on campaigns? Like, what's what's the biggest thing you want to see? Um, them get actually delivered. Well, I mean, side that. <laughs> Like, like the add-ons and all the, the literally stole what I was about to say. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a uh, um I'm a big fan of trading cards. Me too. You know? Me too. Yeah, and I also yeah. think they're the some of the most affordable stretch goals creators can get. I don't know how much they cost, but I feel like they'd be and and it's going to add no weight to your package. Yeah, I love trading cards. Fuck bookmarks. Um, bookmarks are okay. I, I am, o Book, I am bookmarks so are okay. fucking over bookmarks. No, I've got like fucking ninety fucking bookmarks. No, well, here's the thing. They, they're they're kind of they're they're kind of pointless. But if the artwork on them is good, then it's like getting another piece of it's like getting like a mini print. You know what I mean or something. Like, cards, you can actually store it. 
You know Actually, what? but that... you know what? That's a fair point because if you've got enough bookmarks, you could like throw them in like a small little frame, like next to each other, and then yeah, you've got a bunch of just half bits of art. Yeah, that that that's a good point, yeah, Anthony. I think yeah. instead of doing a bookmark, a trading card's better. No, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I, think, I like trading yeah. cards. Me too. And yeah. You can do a lot. More, you can do a lot with a trading card. It, it, and what would be cool is if maybe. If you were going to do bookmarks, and like Risey's idea is not that bad either. If you put them, like if I did a bookmark on this campaign, and then I, I did another one on the next campaign, I did another one on the third campaign, and you put them all together, it forms like a picture. Yeah, a you panel know? art. Yeah, I, I was thinking about doing that. that that'd be pretty cool. With trading cards and shit, but it's one of those things. It's a lot easier to store something that's already been made, like a trading card, because they don't have bookmark holders. Yeah, but you, you can get creative. Like, like Rise said, you, you know, can put them that, in a that'd frame. That's a pretty or... cool thing that you could actually, like, as a random little thing, create, like, a card holder folder for bookmarks. You know, like, I'm not saying to, like, have that as a stretch goal. I'm just thinking, you know, when you see all, like, these random Indiegogos and Kickstarters of random things, you're like, hey, someone invented that. That's a brilliant fucking idea. That would be a pretty cool idea. You know, only people that buy bookmarks would back it, but... Right, you know, but a lot it, of the bookmarks aren't the same size as each other, because I've gotten bookmarks, and oh my god, are they, they so widely different sizes that it's one of those things where trading cards are standard. Well, yeah, that's a fair point, but the only bookmarks I've received that are different sizes are the ones that are made from paper in comparison to the metal print ones. Right. Yeah. Like, have you right. ever seen a metal print bookmark? Yeah, yeah they tend to be a little smaller. Like yeah, a little bit thinner, but they're a lot better quality. You know, those are the ones I actually do use for bookmarks. Those paper ones I just put into, like, a, like I've got a box full of, like, perk like stretch goal things I just throw everything into. Yeah. So I got to ask a question about your trading card things because I was taught uh, we me and Dragon have actually been talking about when we start our stuff. What what would you guys like to see if we act, if if say someone was to do a trading card? Do you want it to be like something like the old school Marvel where we had power levels and all that type of stuff or do you want it to be more just like an actual That like, would like be a pretty style? cool cool thing but uh honestly just artwork on a card is good enough for me yeah i think, yeah, I think, I think... both sides is, is great i don't like all that power level stuff because i've been playing uh, all the cards since uh, the, yeah the i think it just also depends sure on the characters on the right yeah, yeah, I think it depends. Like, I didn't do power levels for mine because mine aren't mine aren't super powered characters, right? They're just normal human beings. So uh, it'd be stupid to put yeah. power levels on the back. So I I did like a uh, remark, uh, like opaque remark of the actual front art with like just like their name, you know, the uh, a little a little brief thing about them, you know, stuff stuff like that. But yeah, uh, see, that's that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, see, actually, I, I would prefer, like, little factual details about a character on the back, probably more so, or even just, like, their origin, you know? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to look around for that, because that's something that, that's that's in our future when we do our rabbit punch, oh, me, yeah, me dragon. Yeah, yeah so, so this, is the, the, this, is, this is the back. This is the back of the card. See, that's so, it's, you know, okay. it has your name, you know... It's, okay. It says the name. It says like you know, uh, email sign up exclusive or whatever it says there. Then it has her real name, her occupation, a little bit, a little bit about her, <laughs> and who did the artwork. And and then the the, uh, the remark is just a, a remark of the actual actual card. You know. But I so. Damn. With my voice in my head. You know, I I think. Hold on one second. I just want to say this. I think Jabba should do like an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter or something like with like just three hundred and one ways to insult people on the YouTube. You well, know, I think, <laughs> just <laughs> I have, have a book like that. Every that CG campaign. Every CG campaign that does cards should have a Jabba card as as one of their stretch goals. 
No, oh, Larry said. Yeah, actually, yeah. If I ever was to do a campaign, that'll be my first stretch goal. The job of the coach, yeah. fucking stretch card. I might have to draw a job, of course. And uh, but Larry says uh, you can make cards for less than one dollar each. So yeah, that's some good information. Cheers, Lazar. Um, I'm thinking of yeah, because we've well, we've been thinking about that. If we. And also, I, I don't trade my cards yeah, with my friends, Jabba. <laughs> the candy's got a delay. Yeah. yeah. I also like uh, ash cans. No. Like, if, oh, if... Uh, yeah, I've been doing a... Go ahead, Andy. Go ahead. Oh. Um... Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on, like, paper and printing companies and trading card companies. And there's a lot of good ones out there that do a lot of stuff with the trading cards. And they're really quality, so it's just a matter of finding the one that works best for you. Okay. Well, it's something, like I said, it's in the future. It's like right now, it's just getting the comic out is going to be the yeah. biggest but hit. Send and then... you, they'll send you tons of free samples, too, so it's always fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've got yeah like, I, I, I use Primo Print, and, like, you could, like, like they have, like, a... Uh, free like you know free sample things that you can you know package already built and like i was like listen i don't want any of your other shit except for the trading cards so can you send me like all the different you know uh styles of trading card that you have rather than like just two and then all their other crap and they were like yeah yeah no problem so they sent me literally a a, a sample of every single like card that they make you know as far as like stock you oh. know uh, matte gloss uv spot all that stuff you know foil really? So, okay, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have all to. Shit, yeah. I've no, got I'm a question. To Sorry, Orc. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I, I was just gonna ask. Um, <clears throat> speaking of trading cards, does anyone fucking know? Like, do you have to have a campaign, or can you just like buy a bunch of trading cards? You know, like if you gave them a design and you you just wanted them for yourself, could yeah, you do yeah. that with one of these fulfillment companies? Like, yeah, like, Probably. Like, yeah, like, they're just print companies. So, like, if you wanted to get yourself a set of 25 cards of the same card and just give them away to friends or sell them or whatever, yeah, you could do that. Well, most of those trading card companies, they want a certain number, and I think it's usually between two and 250, but they're actually really reasonable, so... Yeah, well, it depends on the style. Like, at least with, like, I, you know, uh, at least with, like, Primo Print, it depends on the type of card that you get. Like, the, is what they're not like. Yeah. Some, like some of them, the, the they you only have, you, 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 yeah you only have to order twenty five. But if you're gonna do like foil, yeah, they want you to order like three hundred. You know what I mean? Because it's expensive. So you can so. do like ones for twenty five. In so that, I'm guessing that would be about like probably if I was to <laughs> order from an American company, that would be around probably like fifty sixty bucks for twenty five. Maybe closer cuts. to a hundred. Yeah, I'll well, tell you that, right that, now. That's, that's not counting shipping. I'm just talking about printing well, price. I will, I will tell you right now. Go, but most likely, I think Mike 60 is. To 100 bucks. Mike is saying that you might be a little quiet still, Andy. He's saying talking to your mic. Oh, sorry. It sounds like it. I don't know why no one can hear Andy. I can hear him perfectly fine. It might be, yeah, it might be a different in StreamYards versus what's people, No, what no, no. See, the YouTube. thing is is that before I jumped on the stream today, I did read that as well in the comments section, and I, I could hear him when you were telling him to change the audio. You know, could you raise it? I was like, I could hear it. You know, I don't know. Maybe people are watching from their mobile, and the volume on the mobile device is lower than the computer. Yeah, maybe. His audio was lower earlier, though. I yeah, I turned it up, but I'm charging my my uh, iPad right now, so I'm just connected. Okay. No, I think you're okay now, though. Okay. Mike was Mike was just saying he couldn't hear you. All Sorry, right, so Mike. This I'll is, do better. This is Primo <laughs> Print. So, like, um. I think this is their one of their cheapest ones. Well, actually, this is their the fourteen point uncoded is All their right. cheapest one. But like this, I think this is the this, not this isn't the one I got. I think this is the one. It's a little cheaper. So like two and a half by three and a half. Print both sides. Do the if you go with like say like fourteen point. Um, coding. What is glossy. coding? 
Like, if you want it glossy, right? Like, if you want it to be, like, shiny. Is Rossi and... wearing his mom's bionic ear? Fuck you, Mike. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Maybe. <laughs> hey, 25 not for 16 bucks. I say bucks. that with love. I say that that's with love. That's not bad for 16 bucks. That, that's... You 25 for 16 I'm, bucks, and you can, you can get, you can get, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you can get another, like sometimes they do deals, so get another 25 for an additional two, so if you, you can get 50 for 18 bucks. Oh. Well, I'm thinking yeah, of yeah. actually doing all the, I'm thinking of doing a set of the characters, but actually doing a card and actually doing something like a, uh, like even having a little, little game with it as well, like take it to that little next level. But right. this this, yeah, is, something, probably have this to... is something we've been discussing. Well, I was looking yeah. at doing a, a card campaign where uh, each stretch goal you get, like, another card. But then, you know, it, you get, like, a nine-panel card set that mm -hmm. has, like, one giant image on the back. I thought that was cool, too. You know? Doing, mm -hmm. like, a really cool uh, artwork. Yeah. Well, say, like, for something, like, if you're going to do a set, like, if you're going to do, like, say, like, five five characters so you're gonna need five cards in the set right you're gonna to have to do five different uh, you know ones you know Very, you yeah do this five now. different times yeah yeah so and that's that's where the money will add up yeah right yeah so you figure times this by five that's ninety dollars um that's if, that's if that's even if only you only need 50 you know if you go up to 100 it's 25 bucks so let's say you need 125 bucks times five is 125 dollars 125 dollars well, plus the, shipping the, the mostly the, the main reason i was thinking because like i don't need this many but that's the reason i right. was asking for is, you is like, yeah if you I, get 25 if, I, if, for if 16. I ever hit a 500 subscriber like um part of my channel you know i want to do giveaways for certain people and i think trading cards would be really somewhat the cheapest way for me to send out to like because i'm only going to do it for like five people you know we'll we'll mm -hmm. do some sort of competition or some shit i haven't figured the details out yet right. but i'm like i want to give people something back for you know just watching my fucking shit show of a channel you know <laughs> yeah. oh i'm just yeah, so I, 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 <laughs> I'm just doing the bad the bad reviews. Like you guys get to pick what what I'm gonna review, and it's like Cuck, Karen, Wonder Woman, uh, that really crappy Batman movie, and there was one other one. Which so one? if I ever get if I Which ever one? get there, no, no, there's been a couple. <laughs> Um, I, movie, oh, oh uh, by by the time I get to a million, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the one with the sparkling Batman. The sparkling, the sparkling Batman. Batman? Yeah, oh, the pa Robert, Robert Patterson. Yeah, the one that's coming oh, out. Oh, my God. <laughs> what oh, the fuck? <laughs> you <it>. bastard. <laughs> that's a good it. troll, though. Yes. It's 2.40 yes. in the yeah. morning, I can't be, and I'm stoned. I can't be thinking that hard for about a joke, man. <laughs> it went over my head, and it's like 2.40 p.m. in the afternoon. Oh yeah. Are we even going to get that movie? Because I'm hearing so much bad crap that he's like not working out for it. And oh yeah. I'm oh so no, I reckon I reckon we'll get it. I just yeah, it's a matter of when and if. You know, I, think, I mean, sorry, well read. Well, I was just going to say, I think the uh, director is just going to phone it in at this point, just to get a space and get out. I yeah, heard, they're, I've they're, heard that repeatedly. Yeah, they already sunk too much money into cancel it at this point. They're gonna have to put something out and try to like get something back for it. So yeah, it's I it's gonna be a, sh a shit gonna movie. Do you think they're just gonna replace them? No, they're not gonna replace him. They've been they've been threatening to replace him repeatedly, but he's already like he's already pretty much bought and paid from what I've heard. Yeah, they so say like, he's already cashed the check. You know, they can't yeah. take the money out of his bank account at this point. He he's living a homeless crack life from what I've been hearing. Well, so it's like, oh my god, <laughs> of course he does. Yeah. I bet you he identifies as like one of these um, poor ostracized little fucking Antifa bosses. Where it's like, well, I didn't get my way in life, so now everyone else has to suffer. Well, didn't you he know, get caught banging uh, the chick playing Catwoman on the Batmobile? He got her pregnant. He did. Yeah, he knocked her up, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one? Uh, it's the What's her name? Chick. Yeah, uh, Zoe Hathaway? some. 
Zoe. Zoe, Zoe, who? Wait, who? Yeah, she plays the Zoe uh, Kravitz, alien. right? Yeah. Isn't she the alien in like the Star Trek movies? That one? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. They all look alike to me. I didn't even oh, know what shit. Catwoman <laughs> wears. <laughs> all I got is. Add like, Andy to the disclaimer. Add Andy to the disclaimer. <laughs> You're going to have to just, like, add a new disclaimer. All the guests do not <laughs> represent the views of Smug Pug, Moonshine, and Will Red User. Apparently, Moonshine and Smug Pug want me added to the disclaimer, too. So. <laughs> I know, I heard that part today. <laughs> well, at least tonight. Yeah, Jesus. What did I say? I don't even remember now. Uh, you, you were you were about to say something. You kind of implemented it. You didn't say it. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I knew the meaning behind it. And I'm like, damn, well read. Uh, so here's the here's the biggest question about it all, though. Like, if you guys got the opportunity to be Batman, are you are you hitting the gym or what? Like, yeah. is it is that an instant like? Yeah, you have to. Uh, well, I'd be well, like, yeah, give me my fucking roids and yeah, and a personal trainer. I'll go hit the gym. I don't really want to, but you're also going to have to weed me off my fucking cigarettes, uh, <laughs> weed, alcohol, and every other oh, yeah. thing called YouTube addiction as well. I got four addictions, and they all fuck up everything. I, 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 <laughs> but I, I'm a I would have, I would have been, I would have said, I'm like, can't you just get me the role as the Riddler? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm like, he's a calendar, scrawny man, little prick. I, I, you know, I'd rather be Calendar Man at this point. I, 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 calendar I, I, Man? I <laughs> yeah, I'm bald. I fit the cal. I'm overweight. There's your Calendar Man. And then in uh, in the uh, Telltale Batman v- uh, video games, the the oh no, he wasn't. Never mind. It was the Penguin that was Australian. No, oh, but, really? Uh, yeah. Did they make the penguin Australian? Really? <laughs> oh, fuck, oh, they, how does wow. that work? Well, they gave him an Australian accent, but apparently he was born. He was still born in, in Gotham. I guess he got his accent from his parents. Maybe I don't know. What I think they got. How the fuck does that work? That's not how genetics works. You're not born with an accent, dude. <laughs> Jeez, I know you're not saying that, Anthony, but I'm like, he still would have interacted with Americans around him for the majority of his life. He would have thought his parents sound fucking weird. What movie was that? Uh-huh. It was, no, it was the Telltale video games, the, oh. uh, it's, it's the Batman video games. Like in, in New York, though, you do have uh, neighborhoods where like, you grow up around people that only speak with a certain accent. But th- they don't have those neighborhoods for Australians anywhere. So Yeah, that, yeah it's not like the, there's little Sydney or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no, but that mind you, the people, the people that do live in like Sydney and New South Wales, they tend to have a certain different accent to people here in Perth. Yeah, and that's yeah, how I that... can always usually tell if someone lives in Perth or if okay, they live we gotta... on the other side of the country. Well, I can okay, tell when, like... A I, serious question out of this, but go ahead. I, 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 I can tell, like, being from New York, I could tell, like... I could tell a... Bro- like, everybody thinks a, a New York accent, right? But, like, if you go into New York, each borough has its own version of that accent. Like, I know when someone's from Brooklyn or Staten Island or Bronx or Manhattan... You know, like, so, yeah, it, it's it's kind of this, you know, I guess that would be, like, everywhere, you know? There's different southern accents, like, different drawls, like, someone's from Tennessee or someone's from Texas, someone from Georgia, you know? Um, but... Okay, so, yeah. I gotta ask, what would little, little, little Australia be like, boys? There, there There's a what-if scenario for you. What's little what Australia like? Is, what is little Australia? Let's what say there saying? was a place, hypothetically... In New York, where you could legit, oh, it'd be like, oh, you mean like Chinatown or something like yeah. that? Yeah, right, yeah, we have, yeah, we have yeah, literally we have Chinatown. Like, dude, it'd be like just a bunch of. Uh, it depends what part of Australia too. Barbecue you know, koala what, what, what hanging co- in the what windows. Culture, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't eat koalas. We know they're filled with nothing but dirty STDs. They're Underground just- kangaroo <laughs> boxing. I was gonna say it'd be nothing but it'd be nothing but grills on the sidewalk with shrimp on them. Yeah, and, no, uh, <laughs> we don't even eat that much goddamn shrimp. Foster's beer in every fridge. I'll throw another shrimp on the barbie yeah. for you. No, no, what it'd be more like is, is what the fuck are you looking at, asshole? You looking at me funny way? I'm gonna fucking glass ya. 
<laughs> well, no, I just wanted to see if I could buy your. Pro oh, okay. So you're a good cunt. All right. Uh, 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 let's oh, so just settle this. So, this. so it would depends. basically just be Washington Heights with white people. That's basically all. Dude, it'd be like dealing with a bunch of fucking Rises. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Boomerang switchblades. They would whip them out, <laughs> like in the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants a switchblade coming back at you, though. So only people like uh, Mr. Gray would come up with those sort of stupid things. <laughs> so, okay, I gotta ask another question on that one. Who does not want to see a Warriors comic? Like, wouldn't that oh, the be Warriors? Epic? Yeah, if like, we ever got a comic based The movie off that. from the 80s? I'll pass. Yeah. Why really? don't I remember this movie? I don't know. I kind of want to say I would like to read it, but I know how the movie ends, and my favorite character fucking ends up fucking handcuffed to a park bench getting fucked over by a bunch of fucking pigs. So I don't really care. Oh. Do you remember I don't the know. I didn't Ajax yeah, oh, I was really my video. boy. Warriors? Yeah, movie. they had yeah, a game. The Warriors. You don't remember it, Anthony? You I don't. Like, Warriors came out to play. Yay! With the I bottle don't have a bunch of bottles thing to, yeah, to do it. But yeah. Like, cling, cling, cling. I don't like. Isn't it the like, Simpsons reference that? that? Yeah, they I think did. everyone's oh, reference that. Oh, I remember this movie. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. It. And it's like one of my favorite scenes is is that when they got off the train back into their hometown, they're like, "We fought all night, fought all night just to get back here." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a shithole here too, dude. It says it was seventy nine. It looks like an eighties yeah. movie though. It oh, feels like an eighties movie, movie, but yeah, it's. Yeah, it's definitely old because I remember watching it with my mum when I was like a very young teenager. She's like, here's a movie you like. Yeah, because the bell bottoms like, are just disappearing by then. Yeah, this was yeah. a great movie. Oh, yeah. Awesome movie. This is from the game, though, right? Like this art? That's yeah, from the game, yeah. That's, that's definitely. From and then the they game. then they did an game. HD. Yep. Yeah, they did a remake. Yeah, I never of it. played the game. I heard it was pretty fun. Yeah, it is fun, but it's a little repetitive. Uh, Actually, dude, it's sorry. a lot of repetitive. <laughs> that that game was super repetitive. Dude, every single movie that's based every no no every single game that's based off a movie is pretty much repetitive. No, like, this thing, yeah, these this guys, thing these guys level. were fucking, these guys were ninjas, man. I love these motherfuckers. I was this, like, yeah, they're cool. This guy's got some muscle. Yeah, that was, I think that's Ajax. That was my favorite one. But I and, told, like, the thing is, is that he shouldn't have tried to fucking hit on that goddamn under other cover cop. I'm like. Don't do it, man! Oh. It's a trap! Let's just go to the fucking train station! What are you doing, bro? Get the uh. fuck out of here! You know, but I, I honestly, as much as I love Ajax, I'd have left him there too. Because I'm like, fuck yep. you, I told you this was a bad idea, and look how it turned out for you. Fucking dipshit. <laughs> this looks dumb as hell. What is this? Is that from that the game? one? That image I've never seen. That oh, is. That, be, that looks like that the. That looks like the DVD up. movie. I think yeah, it's an it album. Is. Album cover. Yeah, double that's LP. Oh, that's the album cover. Oh, okay. Yeah. There, there's like. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I didn't. I wasn't. It's was just a record. That's all. Yeah. Oh. No, there's some. Uh, I originally had the VHS of that one, and uh, they did for the. Uh, Blu-ray or DVD remake. They actually added some some new stuff to it, and I do believe there were two, there was a deleted scene to that as well. There was like two endings, and one of the endings was actually epic. And I don't know if it's still out there. I vaguely remember an ending where the uh, the the guys who are the I can't remember what they're called now. The uh, the big the the big gang. Uh, Jesus. The, the opposite the, the kung, rival. Yeah, the kung fu guys. I can't remember what they're called now, but they uh, yeah, they, had a, they showed up and fucked up all the guys that made the warriors <laughs> look like the yeah. uh, enemies. 
Yeah, that actually also. Uh, do you know Oprah Winfrey's in that movie? If I remember correctly, she's really the uh, yeah. She's the voice. She's the actual. Uh, she's the fucking woman. voice, bitch. No wonder I yeah. always knew. I, I always said I was like, I know that fucking bitch's voice. Damn, yeah, that's her. That's her, man. Holy that's her from shit! Back in the day. <laughs> that is oh, yeah. so cool. Is it shit, scary? Man, props to silky. fucking Oprah. Yeah, is it scary how silky her voice sounded back in the day? Because that, that dude, like, I'm like, she sounds so fuckable. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm like, she, is, she had such a goddamn silky voice when she was younger. Jabba says he watched it when he was ten. So how old does that make Jabba? Damn, Jabba is old. Well, it depends. Yeah. It doesn't it, like look. I watched it when I was a teenager, but I wasn't a teenager when it came out. Obviously. Ah. Uh, so you never know when someone actually watched it. It depends if, like, if someone says, "I watched this in the cinemas when I was 10. Right. Then you could figure out how old they are. But that's yeah. a good point. Yeah, I stole. Um, I uh, stole my copy from my uh, from my uh, uncle. He wants he to know the ending. Well, um, basically, the edit is is they get back home. These cocksuckers, the guy with the bottles. He shows up, tries to fucking take him down. I still can't remember his obsession with the Warriors, what they, what that was for. But rival, he rival shows gang. up. Yeah, right. But they were all rival gangs. No, he no, no. They're, they're from Coney Island. No, they're from Coney Island. That's what that was. Oh, they were actually a yes. uh, rival. They got kicked. It, it actually shows in the video game they're a rival gang that got kicked out of Coney Island. Oh, okay. I didn't know that part. Yeah. When you say the voice, what do you mean the voice? There's a uh, a woman who does the uh, voice. Okay, play if you can play the audio recordings when they when that when might every get time you struck. Game, that might get you struck. Yeah, that might get you struck. Shit. And um, uh, a, the thing is, is though there there's a part like every now and then through the film you'll hear a chick over the radio, that's not, that's and she'll be Oprah. like putting updates that's not on Oprah? the radio. No, no, I swear no, it's not. That was no, Oprah. It, no, you it's might Lynn, recognize her. Was, no. It's Lynn Digpen. Yeah, I was told that was Oprah. San Diego. Well, oh, somebody fucking lied really? to you, and I believed you. <laughs> God damn, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Oh, is that the? Oh, no wonder, no wonder that voice sounded silky and smooth, man. The woman from Carmen, the uh, live action Carmen San Diego voice. God damn, that woman had a voice. Well, she did run up. How many Tony steps she won? I've oh yeah, I heard her voice somewhere else before. That though, was because... Carmen. Did you ever? Did you ever watch Carmen San Diego, like the uh, live action show? Maybe. Like if you're a kid, no. you watch. It sounds that, familiar. It, I just it was don't the know. Show. Oh, it was a game show. All right, good chance I didn't watch it then. Yeah, I hate game watch shows. Um, she also was Luna, the moon in. Playhouse Disney's Children's Series, Fear in the Big House. Mm. She actually has six daytime of Enemy of Wolves. God, Tony Wait, there Marsh. was a Warriors 2? Yeah, I don't know about what? that. What? I had no idea I've about that. I've never even heard about that. No. <laughs> None of this is related to the other warriors we just saw. Yeah. This is something else. Yeah, that actually yeah. Is better. It's nine warriors. Oh, he's right. Look at that. What? There is oh, no way. <laughs> no fucking way. Yeah. I is that, that all that chicks? Shit. That's all chicks. Yeah, that's what he said. Is that like a is that like a porn thing or something? Switchblade sisters. That's Switchblade Hey, well, actually, they were in the movie. They were the ones when the guys went to this uh, house, and I thought I that was I the remember harlots. one of the guys. No, I'm pretty sure they were called the Switchblade Sisters. I don't know it's been a long mm. time since I've watched it too. Oh, I'm gonna watch. But, I gotta watch it again. Yeah, I know who he's talking about because they, they, yeah, they started pulling out like the Switchblades and shit. I'm like, these bitches are dangerous. That guy was right. I just thought he was being a little bitch. I've never even heard of the movie. I never saw it. I didn't even know it existed up to this point. I'm going to have to uh, hunt that dude, one down. That is, <laughs> that's a pretty... Well, I don't know about the, the second sequel, but the there first is. war is fucking very, very watchable. 
Oh, that's all I do is eighties movies. So like that, I, I try to do all the. I do reviews of uh, like old movies. Eh? I don't want to do anything new. Screw that! I'm staying in the eighties. All the new stuff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm reviewing all the old shit. Yeah, I don't know. There's been there's been talks of a remake since 2005, apparently. Oh yeah, yeah, no, and I hope they uh, actually never do remake this movie because you you know what they will do to it. You can't remake that movie. It's just the no, way, you, the way and also the not is, not in yeah. modern day, not in modern day no, either. Yeah. So you know, this... the only reason these guys were able to like get away from so much stuff was because the fact is, is that people couldn't track your f- mobile find device. They couldn't track where you were. They couldn't see like a thousand fucking CCT footage. You know, in the eighties yeah. is the only reason that it was plausible for well, them to get away. Well, it's almost like being in a fantasy world. If you watch that movie, it's almost like you're almost like you're transported to like I know I know that sounds odd to say about, about a movie from the eighties, but you're almost like you're transported to another reality. Well, it's a different like time, this. you know. Unless you grew well, up in these times, you wouldn't well, even understand. I did understand. grow up in those times. Yeah, but, no, like, but see. I barely did, but I do remember that not everyone had mobiles. No. Mm-hmm. Well, not no, but back in the day, like that, they didn't that, even exist. But yeah, you know that didn't what? Exist. When they when they when they did exist, not everyone had them. You know, even in the early nineties, not everyone had a mobile. Yeah, I also think that movie's ahead of its time. I think I can't I can't think of another movie that was done that well back in the day like it's it's a beautiful really well done action movie amazing music probably up there with with the uh another 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 underrated movie although i do do not suggest watching it unless you can handle some real hardcore shit uh death wish 2 had some amazing music in it i've watched death wish one so i don't think i've ever seen number two Two is rough. I don't. I usually don't suggest someone watch it because there's some really aggressive scenes in the beginning. Death Wish three is pretty much when he turns into a superhero, and then Death Wish four is the uh, is is when it's like you know he's basically Calahad from. Uh, they basically turned him into uh, what's his face from uh, uh, Dirty Harry. That's what it was. Yeah, that's Charles Bronson, isn't it? Yep, good old Charlie Bronson. Those are great movies. I remember watching those as a kid. Yeah, I like Charles Bronson. Yeah, it's just, you know, one thing I like about, like, <clears throat> not to, like, suck the dick of the 80s and early 90s, but the fucking one thing I always noticed, like, when I rewatch a lot of these things, that these movies felt, like, pure. It was about the story and not a message. Mm-hmm. And and these days, like when they do remake a lot of this stuff, I mean, look at the uh, Ghostbusters remake that they did a couple years ago. Um, it was all about a message and not a story. It's like, yeah, women can do it better, and it's like, well, obviously you can't because your movie fucking it wasn't failed just, horrifically. It, it wasn't bad. even just that. You know what made that movie suck and just suck bad was the fact that they. It just, you know what? It wasn't funny. It was like it was lightning in the bottle. The original Ghostbusters is lightning in the bottle. You had all the mm. all the actors were on their were, were at their prime at that point. You had peak actors. They had they had lines and story where they were actually they they did some really cool, uh, different stuff. It was just it was just perfect. Like, do you know Rick Romanis there? This this one this I can I actually can openly admit to, and this is this is legit. I watched I watched the commentary, so I know this is real. Um, they actually uh, Harold Ramis actually said that Rick Romanus, the scene where he's sitting there about the tax stuff, and he's doing that party thing. That entire scene was him off off script. He basically did that entire scene like ad lib. Like how yeah, and- epic is that shit? Like that's, See, and that's, that's what level. makes for a good comedy movie. And a lot of people have sometimes said to me, like, Ghostbusters wasn't a comedy movie. I'm like, I've always taken it as a comedy supernatural movie, you mm-hmm. know? 
That's how I always felt. I'm like, I never felt like, like shit was serious when I was a kid. Like that, you know, the, that Voldemort looking motherfucker with the long triple H blonde hair, you know, and I don't know if it was the first or second one, but I remember watching that as a kid and I'm like, that guy fucking scared me. I'm pretty sure I had nightmares about that motherfucker when I was a kid and then when I, now when I look at him as an adult, I'm like, you're such a joke. Why the fuck was I scared of you? <laughs> like, yeah, it was a comedy. I don't even know what you are. What are you, Swedish or just fucking Norwegian or just something that I don't give two flying fucks about? <laughs> Not that I hate Stop. those countries. I just say that, you know, you're not I as impressive find... as I thought. I can't find anything on this sequel. Are you sure that wasn't just like a spoof thing? I, look, I have all, no idea. The only thing that's I coming up is a, no a, a 2009 four-part comic book miniseries called Jailbreak, which is the sequel to the movie The Warriors. Jailbreak. That's the only thing I'm getting, yeah. Maybe it's a made-up fake poster, you know. Sometimes those things can get around. I mean, I still... I got, I got trolled a few years back when someone made a really good poster on Facebook and saying that Boondock Saints 3 was filming. And I'm like, yeah, it's happening, it's happening. And then I fucking went and looked, Googled it, and I'm like, you fucking troll cunt. <laughs> I was really looking forward to that. I'm yeah. sorry, I shouldn't have said that word well read. I don't, I don't mind a cunt. Like, uh, it's oh, just, that's okay? Yeah, it's just the N-word, the F-A bombs, the K, and maybe S. Like, just racial stuff K. and, like, gender stuff, you know? I don't think I've ever used the K-word. Somebody once did, I think, in one of the streams. That's why I throw it in there. Maybe I did. Maybe I did and don't remember it. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't here we you. go. I found it. What? Uh, Is it real? What do you got? Uh, it says, what do you guys make of this poster of the Warriors 2? Before you get too excited, this is an altern alternative poster for the 1975 movie, The Switchblade Sisters. Yes, this was made before the Warriors. I've never seen the movie, but it's now on my list of things to watch. Maybe this movie is the backstory to how the Lizzie's started out. The Lizzie's, that's what they were called. I, I thought they were the harlots there. That that, that <coughs> makes sense to me now, See, the Lizzie's. I thought they were the Switchblade sisters, but maybe it's just because they There's had so many. Blades. There were so many characters, right? Like that That's the one thing we can say. That thing had so many freaking different groups. I didn't Dude, know remember, half the names remember the, of them. Remember the baseball group that they had where they were yeah. dressed up as clowns? <laughs> like, yeah. I like these motherfuckers, but also, fuck you motherfuckers. <laughs> God, I haven't seen that. In, oh, I, I gotta watch it again. I usually watch I it I kind of want to watch it right now. <laughs> I'm not sure. Same here. I never got into it. Really? Never? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because... You know, I watched it with my mom, and she loved it when she was younger, and she was, like, saying, like, half the re like, she was explaining some reasons what certain things meant back in that time, and so I was like, I know I had an enjoyable experience watching the movie. Oh, it was like it was like watching an anime or a video game like come to life. Like I actually think that's the closest thing to us getting a real life anime. Was that was that movie? Oh yeah, and honestly, I never want a real life adaptation of animes. Like I've I've seen the Dragon Ball attempt. Oh, you gotta see Rick. Please Hill. never no, no. ever do no. that again, Hollywood. You and if you, you do, gotta see Ricky O. Or Did Last Airbender. Yeah. Uh, yeah, see, oh. I never cared about Airbender, but I <laughs> did see parts of that, and I was oh, like, okay. even that's bad. You no, you got to see Ricky O. Uh, no, not yet. Oh, hold it on. i got to be right okay. back. Full Metal Alchemist? I have seen Full Metal Alchemist. It was awful. But I will say this. If you guys want to watch a bloody, messed up, effed up, Probably something you're probably going to be like, what the fuck am I watching? Pardon my language. Um, watch, watch Riccio. I don't know the actual spelling for that, but if you can see that movie, watch that movie. 
It is insane. I think it's even on. I think it's actually on YouTube of all places. What's it about? It's, uh, it's about a guy who, uh, he basically goes to. Oh, someone actually. Sorry. Oh. What's up? Oh, someone said he keeps drifting away from the mic. No, no, it's uh, it's oh. Java. Yeah, he's talking oh, okay. about somebody else. Okay, so. Rikio is about a story about a, uh, a man who learns this martial arts ability. And so he goes, he ends up, uh, his, his girlfriend gets murdered. And so he rips the guts out of, a, uh, of the guy and rips out the eye of one of the, guy, the guys who uh, had his, uh, his girlfriend get attacked. So he ended up going to jail for murder. But he went into a jail that's like where they put all the characters from Fist of the North Star in. And it's a bloodbath. Yeah, it's called something else, though. I've seen it. It's, the Tale of Riccio. Oh, yeah. yeah it's it's also worth... Named, they also go... It goes under another name, I think. Because I, I, it sounds very familiar, but it wasn't Riccio is what it was called. I don't remember. Oh, I think... It, but... Maybe it was the Tale of Riccio. I, I, I want to read the manga after watching that. I saw that I saw that a, a couple of years back, and it was like one of the few ones I didn't see. I also didn't see Dead or Alive was the other one. I, I just watched... Uh, which has one of the most craziest endings I've ever seen in a, in a movie. <laughs> what about the one, when the, the the school one, something rumble or something? That one was crazy. Uh, I never saw that one. Uh, um, I can't think of the name. Yeah, they, kind they, of they realized that you have the name Google. Uh, yeah, I'm Canadian. You're a Canuck. Oh yeah, I'm a Canuck from Canuckistan. You're Canadian, huh? Yep. Are uh, both of you Canadian? Ethereal Dragon too? All right. I'm not Canadian. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in the west of New York right now. Okay. Cool. I'm you guys in are in the land of. My mom's parents are from Canada originally. Yeah, I'm from the country of extremes. It's Winters are freezing. Summers are summers are extremely hot. I mean, might have picked up some Canadian mannerisms from my maternal grandmother. I haven't heard of the Revenge trilogy, Java. No, you have to clarify. <coughs> uh, well, guys, it's uh, three a.m. here. Uh, I'm probably gonna pack it in and uh, save it for another night. Got a st another stream coming Sunday, and then. Uh, stream every thursday so please come back all right uh, happy to have you guys on yeah cool well thank you for having me absolutely so thanks for being here thanks for stopping in and uh appreciate it appreciate the conversation i have yourselves a very good night everybody yeah all you right. too night 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 guys uh i guess it's going to take risey a little time to get back to say good night to him dark gifts mm -hmm. i don't know where you're at um, I usually don't move people into the back, so um, uh, if you guys want me to disconnect you, that's that's cool. Um, but no. usually I, I say goodbye to the chat, and uh, I play out a song at the very end. I'll talk to you later. I'm going to head out. All right, Andy. I'll be in touch. See you. Yep. Later, yep. bud. Bye. Later. I just got back. We ending? <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, trying, I'm trying to wrap it up. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I just made sure I knew what was going on. It's 3 a.m. here. No. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna jump off anyway. Uh, I just went and let the dogs out real quick. Um, all right, I'll mm. jump off right now then, because I was gonna when I got back, I was just gonna say goodnight anyway. Um, thanks for having me on, Will Red. Sure, anytime. I, I always appreciate having you here. I saw you had like a creator stream. Uh, are you doing like a John Malin type thing? No, well, you know, I um I do usually the one on ones, the comic book, uh, comic scene comic book showcase. Like they're usually just like a one on one, but because I took that that time off, I had a bunch of guys reach out to me, like the guys from um, Six Five Six and uh, Jacobus and stuff, and I kept saying, "Yeah, I'll, I'll get you on, I'll get you on." And then it was like, kind of like getting close to the end of their campaigns and stuff. So I was like. I'll have both of these on. And then I, I, then I was talking with Aria, and he was like, I want to come back on, because he was on when he had his mailing list. So I had done this one of these house parties, like what I call like the house party, where I had more than one on uh, before, like a couple, like a few months ago. 
but I had like way too many. I had like 15 people. It was like three or four hours of like just talking about people's projects, which can get monotonous, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I kept it to just the, the five of us. And then Don Chin jumped on uh, at one point. Um, so it was good. It was, we did two hours and, uh, I'll probably do one of those like once in a blue moon, but I'll keep, I'll keep them to basically just like the one-on-one, -on -one, um, for the most part, but I'll, I'll do like the house party thing, you know, every couple of months, every few months or whatever. So yeah, it was fun time. Yeah. So. I keep, uh, I keep trying to mix it up too with, uh, the streams. Like, um, I, I tried the Superman stream and then I tried the, um, it came from the newsstand stream. Um, so I, I want, I want to have like, uh, some diversified content on the channel. I don't like just doing the same things over and over again, but right. I, I get a lot of shit whenever I stray from, you know, what's the, uh, uh, what's the kind of the expected norm. So I never yeah, know well, how, those, how those are being of received. Course, of course you do. You know, I mean, I, I got the same thing from, uh, when I did the very first comics gate news, you know, everybody's like, what are you doing? Like they they thought I was trolling. Like some people thought I was trolling uh, Preston. Some people thought I was uh, trolling somebody else. Some people thought I was like, I don't know. Like it was weird. Like but like thankfully, it ca it caught on and and people like liked it and and and. Uh, but that very first one, everybody was like, "What are you doing? What's going on? I don't get it." And I'm like, "It's just me having fun. I was just goofing on doing like a news report, you know, <laughs> like." Like I wasn't even planning on have, doing more than the one, but then everybody was like, "Are you gonna do another one? I want to be. I, I want my you know my campaign featured on it." And I was like, "All right, I'll do another one." And that's kind of how that grew. Um, so yeah, that's gonna come back too. I'm gonna bring that back. Um, be a little more steady with that, uh, like once a week or something. You know, I, I, in the beginning I tried doing it like every day, and that was insane. Trying to find like enough things to talk about like every day. But yeah, yeah. So well, let you know, gets close to finishing up all comic book. Can we speak about well, Wall Chief and I get get on yours? Absolutely. Yeah, just reach out to me. Let me know. Okay. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. We like I said. I usually um, you can go back. I keep everything in playlists, so you can go back and look at them. Uh, they're usually one on ones. Um, and like I, like today was the second time I had like a group a group thing going. So, um, yeah, and you can come on either one. You can come on a one on one. You can come on one of the group ones when I do those, or you could do both. Whatever. Like I invited those guys to come on and do a one on one. You know, sometime in, like next week. You know, or whatever. So absolutely, just just hit me up. Remind you know, let me know when when you're ready to to start uh, going out there and and hitting the circuit. Mm -hmm. I'm also making a tabletop RPG with someone. Oh, nice! Yeah, a yeah, friend of mine. Using the punch system. That's apparently now in the open has the open gaming license. Oh, cool! Yeah, a buddy of mine's doing something like that. I've I've I I gotta look into it. I might do some artwork for him. Yeah. But, uh, but all right, yeah. Let me jump off. I hear my dog scratching at the door now. Um, <laughs> Well read again. Thanks for having me on. Had a good time. Risey, always a pleasure, man. And uh, Ethereal Dragon, nice to meet you. Definitely hit me up when uh, when you're ready to, to come on. Well, I think we're Twitter neutrals. Just no help. Right, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't think we... Uh, we actually have a spoke and we yeah, want, you know. Exactly, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what I meant. Um, but definitely, like I said, hit me up when you're ready and I'll, uh, I'll get you on there. And uh, hail to chat. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Later, Dark Gift. Have a good night. Night. I think I met Risley on Shabby's streams. Uh, who's stream? Oh, Shabby? Uh, yeah. Jakob? I don't know. Um, I think that's where I met that crazy Aust Australian. Australian. Ugh, I'm so lost. Sorry. Sorry, Well Red. I was talking no to my brother. Yeah. yeah I, was, uh, I was just trying to wrap up things. But, um, oh, all right. Yeah, no, no, no. I thought you would have been wrapping it up by now. Yeah, that's why I was saying sorry. Sorry about that, mate. No worries. <clears throat> yeah. No, thanks for having me on, mate. Um, thank you, Smug Pug. You know, everyone else, Ethereal Dragon. Always a pleasure talking to you. I think I've spoken to you once or twice before.
He said you guys met on like uh, Jacob's streams before. Yeah, I think we did. Jacob. I think that's where we met. Yeah, yeah, Jacob. Um, yeah. yeah, I used to call him Jacob. Yeah, the Slavic J is a J, yeah. so it's like the Latin J. Okay. Yeah, he, he's always said he doesn't really take offense to how you say his name. He understands it. But yeah, no, thank you for having me on, Well Red, and I will jump out and. Um, Thank you, my friends. Um, yeah, have the good day or night, whatever the fuck it might be. <laughs> Depending on oh, the side yeah. of the planet. Uh, no. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, well, All right. rock on, guys. Thank you again, Well Red. Take Thanks, care, amazing. my friend. Thank you. Ethereal Dragon, well, it was great to meet you. Thanks for mm-hmm. jumping on the show today. Thank you. All right. And uh, yeah, I'll look forward to hearing more about your comic when uh, whenever you guys are ready to start promoing it. Okay. All right. Well, have a good night, and uh, thanks for being here. Good night. See you later. Bye. All right, everybody. So that's the show for today. Um, Sunday, we're doing Beast Wars, and uh, I've got music streams finally in the pipeline. Uh, there's been people talking to me and hopefully I can get those out to you pretty soon. And, uh, next week should be some interesting ones. Um, we're going to have earthworm Jim coming up. I think everybody's got their books for that. So you can look forward to the first and the second book being reviewed together. Um, I know warts and all is shipping, so people might end up with those in their hands sooner rather than later. And if that happens, then we're going to jump on that review. Um, but, uh, you're going to want to keep an eye on some of the other more interesting reviews we have planned. We have a few versus streams, uh, and, uh, they'll, they'll definitely be some stunners. So, uh, you're going to want to look forward to that. But, uh, before we go, let's, um, jump into the chat real quick. Say a quick good night. Velnet says, Liam just said that his marketing strategy for his Indiegogo tomorrow is that after he wakes up, he's going to print off flyers and go pass them out. I'm not joking. Yeah, um, I guess Liam is hoping that his neighbors are going to be backing his new book because people on the internet certainly won't be. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's slow going, but... Um, We'll see. We'll see if it reaches its goal. I know that Smug Pug is rooting for it, so I guess I'm not supposed to trash it too much. Um, he wants uh, he wants Wonder Island to hit that 10k goal, so he gets like the full story. But whatever. Uh, I heard a lot of negative experiences from people backing Liam's stuff tonight. Uh, at least a couple of people talked about problems with Xenotype, so I have no idea how this is going to do. AVS seemed to be waving waving the uh, the billfold around in front of Liam's nose, going, "This could have been yours, if only you didn't burn so many bridges." And um, it seems like that's been ongoing. Uh, I know he's got a ban list longer than his backer list, so uh, we'll see. We'll see what Liam decides to do now that he has to go around begging everybody for backers for his new campaign. Um, but otherwise. Yeah, uh, look forward to the new reviews. <laughs> uh, Blacklist Universe says, gosh, that doesn't sound like UVS at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, he gave him like a $100 super chat, and uh, then he backed like seven copies of his dig- digital tier. <laughs> so I'm like, And then he, he tweeted um, that Liam has a new campaign out. So I was just thinking... Wow, that's that's a pretty epic troll. Uh, that's high level trolling there. The thing is, though, Liam was offering copies of Cyberfrog, um, Lone Star, and uh, Battle Made a Knuckle Bomb with the book. So um, he was kind of trolling, I thought too. He's trolling CG, saying, "Look, these aren't doing anything for me. I'm out of this whole uh, community." Why don't I just shove these books in with uh, my campaign and just give them away to encourage people to to support me? So I don't know. That's uh, that seems to be going both ways. And uh, Mr. Dong says there isn't a spiteful bone in Evias's body. <laughs> what have I unfurled here? Yeah, I know it's uh, 
it, it's funny. It's it's internet stuff. Like you know, who really cares? I mean, hopefully these guys, everybody does well. You know, we don't want anybody failing in life and um, you know not being able to fulfill their dreams. But just kind of would want people to, I don't know, holster it a little bit, keep it <laughs> keep it professional. Uh, Dong says, if that were true, he'd be an invertebrate. Um, yeah. And uh, Jabba's probably got the most uh, poignant comment of the night. He's telling me to piss off already. So I think I'll take Jabba's cues and uh, just get the hell out of here. And hopefully see you all again really soon. Glad you guys are here. I'm glad you guys are supporting the channel. Um, you know, if you're a mod, drop the link in the other channels. If you're a whale, uh, go ahead and super chat the other channels. Let them know about us. And uh, otherwise, I will see you all later, and I hope you have a really good night. Until then, take care. Thank you.